Well, welcome back to day two of the inaugural Hexagon Cup here from the Paddle Arena in the Spanish capital city of Madrid. I'm Ned Bolting and I'll be taking you along with me on this very exciting and unique paddle journey over the course of the next four days of action. And if you didn't join us for the opening day of the Hexagon Cup yesterday, what on earth were you thinking? Four matches and they had a bit of everything. Tension, drama, and huge amounts of talent on display yesterday. Thoroughly enjoyed by the man who's sitting alongside me, the Argentinian ex-paddle player and former coach of the Great Britain team, uh, Mauri Andrini. Mauri, did you enjoy what you saw yesterday, the <laughs> first day ever at the Hexagon Cup? Absolutely, I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, we are watching a very special event here at the Hexagon Cup for the first time ever watching the top players competing against each other, fighting for this amazing title. Uh, glad to be back, no, as I of you, Mr. Net. Thank you. <laughs> glad to be back indeed. Right, if you don't know what the Hexagon Cup is, it's an entirely new format, a brand new global paddle event for private teams which have attracted celebrity owners, the likes of Rafa Nadal, Andy Murray, Robert Lewandowski and Eva Longoria, to name but a few. It's a revolutionary format with the world's best players competing in teams to secure their share of an astonishing one million euro prize purse that's the biggest purse ever offered in a paddle competition six teams then each with six players made up from three categories of pairs male female and male under 21 players so whilst individual prizes are on offer it is essentially a team competition and the winning team will be announced at the very end of five days of competition. The first three days, including today, are part of a round-robin format to choose the top two pairs in each category. Then a unique scoring format determines the group winners as we move on to the semi-finals and finals and eventually crown our Hexagon Cup champions. Let's have a look at these teams then that are going to be uh, duking it out for the first ever title of Hexagon Cup champions. This is, if you like, the home team, the Hexagon team. The principal is the fans, chosen by popular consent. Paquito Navarro and Juan Martin at 48 years of age. They won their opening match yesterday. What and a match. Partnered. What a match it was. What a match. And an all Spanish lineup with Ale Salazar and Tamara Icardo going to be in action straight away today as well. Yes, um, we saw yesterday Paquito and Juan Martin the first time uh, in this event. They've played together before in the main circuit, but you know, yesterday was very special because they played against the current number one in the world, uh, Agustin Tapia and John Sanf, who couldn't do anything against these two amazing players, Paquito Navarro and Juan Martin Diaz, in his last tournament ever as a professional. Now, of course, Paddle bears some similarities and some of its DNA and similarities with the world of tennis. And there are a few bigger names in the world of tennis than Andy Murray, who has put his name uh, and his backing to Team Advantage. They have got a welter of Argentinian talent, including great Martin Dineno and Juan Teo, who won through yesterday in their opener. But Delfina Brea and Sofia Arrujo, the women's players for Advantage, were beaten, weren't they? So they've got, yes. to, uh, they've got to start turning that around. Yes, they've got to do something now. Uh, well, they got the advantage yesterday uh, that uh, Dineno and Teo could manage the match against uh, Lucho Capra and Chingoto. I was just having lunch with uh, Mr. Chingoto uh, like a few minutes ago, and he was saying, we were very close, and that is actually the right. And he was right, but they didn't manage to win, so no points for them, a point for Dineno and Teo. 
um, recovering the points that they lost uh, the female uh, players Sofia Araujo and Delfina Brea who will try to get back tomorrow yep. on court again. Moving on then to Team 11-11, Team USA, whose principal is none other than the Hollywood superstar Eva Longoria. And she's assembled the following group of players. Remember, in the column on the right, these are the next generation players, some of whom we will see in action at the weekend. But before that, concentrating on the men's and the women's, well, Chigotto, your lunch compadre, yes. and Capra uh, <laughs> from today, and Paula Jose Maria and Alan Alejandra Alonso are going to be in the first match this afternoon. Yes, they will. They won yesterday an amazing match, I would say. They just, it was a very mental match, um, match yeah. I would say it was uh, against Bea Gonzalez and Claudia Fernandez. Uh, they managed very well. And today they had a little bit harder match because they're playing against Ari Sanchez um, as well, playing with uh, Claudia Jensen, a very good pair. So the two number ones in the world, Ari Sanchez and Paulo Jose Maria, are meeting up today. And yes, and Chigotto and Lucho Capra, who lost their point yesterday. So Team 11-11 has to go. And that is the fascination of the Hexagon Cup. Players who are normally paired together are playing against one another. As we move on to Team RL9, that's Robin Lewandowski's team. And uh, Agustin Tapia and Juan, uh, John Sanf were beaten yesterday in that last match. Uh, we're also going to see the women's team in action today, Ariana Sanchez and Claudia Jensen. And they'll be in that first encounter of the day against Alonso and Jose Maria that you were just talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just warming up. We could tell now they're warming up uh, to get ready for this amazing match. And I think no one wants to lose here, you know? This is a, a, a very uh, high-level uh, sport at the moment. You know, all the top players are competing for, for this 1 million euros prize money. As we move on to Team Bella Puerto Rico. And again, mixed fortunes for some of these players uh, yesterday. Bea Gonzalez and uh, Claudia Fernandez. And uh, they go for the women. Arturo Coela and uh, Jorge Nieto make their debut at the Hexagon Cup today. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They will play against Tapia, which is the current partner of Arturo Coelho, and John Sam, which is the current partner of Coqui Nieto. So it's going to be a very exciting match to watch. And finally, last but most certainly not least, Rafa Nadal Academy team. Alex Ruiz and Franco Stupachuk, one of the big stars of Paddle, the Argentinian player of Polish descent. Uh, Matita Ortega and Gemma Triay, well, they uh, were in action yesterday. Well, Lots to look forward to, in particular from Stupa. Yes, favorite uh, pair, I would say, for the women's side. And with the Stupa and uh, Alex Ruiz, they used to play together. They know each other very well. We haven't seen them together in this tournament, but we will very soon. Mouthwatering prospects, and uh, throughout the next four days as well, we're going to be hearing contributions from our pitchside reporter, Andrea Ballester. What the amazing show we had yesterday. You remember Paquito Navarro, Juan Martín Díaz, Tejo Dineno, all the players fighting until the end. in this incredible atmosphere with all the players fighting. But today we will we'll have the same show. Now we can see the players uh, starting. Uh, he's, he's prepared to his match. And in the bench, there are his coaches. Uh, Maori, uh, attention, because today will be an incredible show in the second day of the Hexagon Cup. Thank you very much, and amazing, amazing setup for the whole team. Uh, Hexagon Cup has done amazing first step forward uh, into development of this beautiful sport of panel, which is growing worldwide massively. Well, perhaps you're watching Padel for the first time. And if that's the case, you might need a little reminder or refresher about what the rules are. This little film should help.
So the fascinating sport of paddle explained at least in terms of the rules, what is and what isn't allowed. That's only part of the story though. It's all about the tactics to get the match won. So, some of the tactics involved in winning a game of paddle. Let's have a look at how the various groups in all three categories, the two groups in all three categories, stack up at the moment. This is uh, Group A in the men's competition, featuring RL9, Team Bella Puerto Rico, and Hexagon Team. In Group B, therefore, the remaining three teams in the uh, men's category are Advantage, 11-11, and Rafa Nadal. So that's Andy Murray and Rafa Nadal, both effectively in the same group. Moving on to Group A in the women's then, we have Team Advantage and Rafa Nadal in Group A, as well as Team Hexagon. And Group B in the women's competition, which is the other three teams, 11-11, RL9 and Team Bella Puerto Rico. And finally, for the under-21 players, the next generation players, the young men, 11-11, RL9 and Team Bella make up Group A, which leaves the final group being Advantage, Rafa Nadal and Hexagon. Let's have a look at the four matches that we're going to feature today on the main court. And we start with the Group B women, RL9, taking on 11-11. Uh, then after that, on the conclusion of that uh, three-set match or two-set match with the potential for a super tie-break, we'll have the Group A men's encounter between RL9 again and Team Bella. After that, we flip back again to the women. This time it's Group A as Team Hexagon take on Team Advantage. And finally, the last match of the evening will be the Group men B men encounter between Advantage and Rafa Nadal. Plenty at stake now because some of these teams could be losing for the second time in as many days, which would effectively end that pair's participation in the Hexagon Cup. We will explain as we go along because it is starting to get very serious indeed as we move on to the first match of this afternoon. It's Women's Group B and it is Team RL9 playing for the first time in the Hexagon Cup against Team 11-11, who beat Team Bella yesterday, represented by the 17-year-old Ali Alonso and the world number one, Paula Jose Maria. Plenty to look forward to in this encounter. encounter. The partner is the enemy for today, Ari Sanchez. There you have Ari Sanchez leading the pair with uh, Claudia Jensen, the very young Argentinian player, lefty, as well, left-handed player who plays on the right side. And Ari Sanchez, the queen from Catalonia, from Reus, near Barcelona. She's been number one already for a year. And she used to play as well with uh, Ale Salazar in a couple of years ago. And now 
They are competing at this Hexagon Cup. They're gonna be coached by Marcella Ferrari. There you see the coach. Marcella is a very experienced coach as well. Coaching nowadays the Italian national team. Different level to have a Marcella Ferrari here with us as well. And they're gonna play against Paula and Ale Alonso who performed very, very, very well yesterday. But we're gonna go net through this match because this match is gonna be a little bit more interesting. And I think that Ari Sanchez and Claudia Jensen might be the favorites of this match. But as you know, we never know. Yesterday, Tapia and John Sanz were the, the favorites and look what happened. This is Hexagon Cup. This is the new format tournament that we're gonna have. Claudia Jensen. The Argentinian player, the shorter of the two in the light blue vest. She is looking pretty focused, pretty concentrated, perhaps a little nervous. Just a teenage player, a young player, much like uh, Ale Alonso, just 17 years of age, who is about to walk on for the second time with her hugely experienced and talented pairing, Paula Jose Maria, who, we as you have explained, normally plays with Ari Sanchez, who she is playing against today. But this pairing in their opening victory over Team Bella yesterday started off moderately, and the longer the two sets went on, they got better and better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could tell that uh, Paula didn't start very well yesterday, you know, performing, and Ali Alonso was like holding on until Paula got in the rhythm of the game, and then was Ali, Ali Alonso who really managed to put uh, Bea Gonzalez out of the match and just winning 6-1 in the second set. There we have Paula Jose Maria. The queen from Cáceres, Spain, top number one in the world, double-handed backhand. Yeah, and some of, the, some of the rust and the nerves will have been shaken off with that opening victory yesterday. They've already played on this court. They have got used to the conditions, they've got used to the light on the court, the way the ball moves through the air, the way the ball they comes got a off the surface. They have true. an advantage, don't they? Yeah, they do, 100%, 100%. The only thing, uh, that, that's why he said that perhaps Iris Sanchez and, uh, and um, Claudia Jensen might have perhaps a little bit more advantage, just because Claudia Jensen has a little bit more experience in the main circuit, reaching perhaps quarterfinals more times than what Ale Alonso did. Yes, indeed. Claudia Jensen, a three-time beaten semi-finalist on the circuit in 2023, and uh, in fact, one appearance in a final on the circuit uh, in which she was beaten as well. So she's been close uh, to getting over the line and winning at all. So just going through the rules and the regulations with the umpire, and uh, if they can pick the... Uh, there we go, they've got a bit more light on that to see which uh, side the, uh, the, the, the coin has ended up for who serves first in this encounter. Tails or nails, yeah. Cara o cruz, we say in Spanish. Heads or tails? Heads or tails. We've got the main picture, the official picture of Hexagon Cup. Of these two pairs, first time ever competing against each other. Very interesting match. People start getting into the stadium here at Madrid Arena. Beautiful to be here. Yeah, the crowd a little thin for the first match, but as we saw yesterday, as people come away from work and the uh, yeah, afternoon exactly. and the evening goes on, uh, this arena it's quite early. Up and starts to fill up. But it's quite early, but people early. from home, they're watching, listening. This uh, spect spectacular event. Ale Alonso there, the taller of the two players, representing 11-11, yes. Team USA. I thought she, she was an extremely mature competitor yesterday. yesterday she, she, she held her nerve and she got stronger. Um, she's got a very, very strong smash on hers and she's a physically very imposing player. Yeah, exactly. She uses her wrist quite a lot, you know, when she plays that kick bandeja, the rulo shot. So avoiding that the high lobs go behind her, so, which is, you know, pretty much uh, normal on the left side player. We're going to see Ari Sanchez today as well. Um, 100% sure that Ari Sanchez will make her life a little bit harder than what Bea Gonzalez did yesterday, just because the conditions of this court would make perhaps for Ari Sanchez, uh, who is not that aggressive as, for example, uh, Bea Gonzalez is. So Ari Sanchez also, because she's number one in the world, is not going to get lost during the match that quick. Do you know what I mean? So I think uh, Ale Alonso, as yesterday was in Paula Jose Maria's hands this match, the match yesterday, I think this time will be the one uh, who holds the, the match in the hands will be Ale Alonso, 100%.
Maori, she, Paola Rosemedia, is bouncing, isn't she? She looks really motivated for this. Yeah, She's yeah. warming up against her <laughs> usual partner, exactly. Alex Sanchez, on the other side of the court. They know each other so well. But just the way she's come on to court, her walk on and everything, she is absolutely fizzing with yeah, energy. Yeah. She wants to get this started. And she wants effectively, well, with a victory today, to absolutely seal their participation at the weekend. Into the semi-final. 100%. 100%. And giving the points to the, the team that needs as well uh, these pair into the semi-finals. There we have Claudia Jensen. Yep. Um, Looks a little bit more tense, doesn't she? Well, Understandable. She's 18 years of age now. Interestingly, you say she's Argentinian. She is Argentinian. She was born in Madrid. Oh, really? Yes. I didn't know that. There we go. I didn't See? know that. I like to tell she you a few things Madrid. about you know Padel why? every now and again, just to keep you on your toes. <laughs> well done, buddy. <laughs> you know why? His father is a quite well-known coach, yeah. Christian Jensen, and also his brother plays on the next her, gen. Her brother Enzo is in the same team. Jensen. Yeah. yeah. So, can you believe that both of them are professional paddle players? That might be a reason, you know, it might be a reason that all the, all the coach is very good, the father has been uh, into this development of the skills for Padre for the children. Um, well, yeah, she's training very hard in the last couple of years, and now she's getting in um, yeah, the last tournaments, semi-finals, quarter-finals, doing very well. And here we have the queen. Yeah. The right. one who's been... Ranked number, sorry, ranked number one, as you can see, alongside her playing partner on the other side of the uh, net, Paola Rosa Maria. Ali Sanchez, 26 years of age. She's a year younger than her usual playing partner. And they have been the number one pair on the paddle circuit since 2021. That's uh, three years at the top, effectively, now. Her win percentage, 75% of the matches she has played as a pro, she's won. It's extraordinary, isn't it? And she holds a record of, I think, the longest period that these pairing went unbeaten and strung together consecutive victories, 20 matches in a row. So you're looking at one of the best paddle players in the world. Well, yeah, 100%. You could tell that she's the, she's the kind of player who can really adapt very quick to the conditions. It doesn't matter if she plays indoor, outdoors, who she's playing against. And that's why I'm telling you that, you know, perhaps at this time, in this a match, even though she's going to take perhaps a couple of uh, games to get the rhythm of the, you know, the conditions of this paddle court, uh, the balls and everything, and then, you know, it's not going to be that easy to Ale Alonso to get points across court to Ari Sanchez. Well, Mari, we watched four matches live yesterday. What conclusions were you able to draw about this particular paddle court and this environment? Because Every court is slightly different. The ball will behave differently in each of the circumstances. What do you make of it? Is it slow? Is it a little slow? Well, no, I think it's, the, it's not the surface which is making it slower. It's the ball. That's what, they, the, what the players told me, you know, like uh, I was with Chingoto. I was actually with Arturo as well. Arturo Coelho was uh, warming up a little bit today morning uh, together with his partner. They were doing some uh, training in the morning together with the coach, uh, Gustavo Prato, who will be on the bench as well this afternoon. Um, they just told me that the ball is a little bit heavier than the, what they used to and that the perhaps the surface, um, you know, is quite uh, slippery. How do you say it? Slides the ball like, yeah, you slippery, know? slippery. It's slippery, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So when, for example, Paquito's volleys or Tapia's volleys, you know, there are, which doesn't bring the amount of, of power, but backspin, that ball is like, a, you know, is a killer in this kind of uh, surface. So on balance, this is a court, and these are conditions which don't necessarily favour the really powerful players. 100%. The, the more, the more right. technically able, the more the players are able to the put more movement through the ball, the more they can do. The more Chingotos, yep. the more Dinenos, the more Del Fibrea, the more Ari Sanchez. Yep. These kind of players, you know, and that's why I mean that this match is going to be very tough for Ari, uh, for uh, Ale Alonso and Paula Jose Maria because Ari Sanchez and Claudia Jensen are both very conservative players. Well, they say that the uh, Ari Sanchez will start serving. That's the first. Uh, tip from the coach, Ari, you start serving, you start leading this match. Uh, Why court, the coach said, start opening the angle straight away. We want you on fire since the first, since the first point. 
interesting stuff. We have the coaching staff mic'd up, and let's have a little eavesdrop on what's going on with Team 11-11. Al medio, estar atenta siempre la salida de pared. Lo que hablamos, de momento vamos a tapar las más, las más fáciles, la complicada, la podemos dejar un poquito más ahí. Pero bueno, sabiendo que esta seguramente nos van a jugar un poquito a la a la esquina ahí, vale. Y el medio atenta también. Vamos con todo, ¿eh? Well, that was a little bit the other way around. The guy said, duro. just have a look at the middle, Acabaron yeah, no, and be careful no with the middle. And actually, the others were talking about hitting the balls to the corner. So that's the beginning of the... So tactically... Play high lobs, try to put the back and try to keep the net position. Yeah, just play the lobs a little bit higher, Paula says. Que hay algún tiro también incomoda, porque ahí con ese puede dar rebote y podemos entrar. ¿vale? Lo que nos interesa con ellas es tener cuidado con la bola que sea muy picuda, que ahí nos entra. What the only thing that they're looking for is like to play perhaps the lobs in parallel, not the lobs that cross court, but perhaps a little bit more in parallel sometimes, in order to hurt the non-pink shoulder, let's say, at some point, of the opponent, because they they're going to play against a lefty and right-handed player. So the lobs in parallel will be more effective than the cross court ones. The two players from Team RL9 exchanging a little word and a smile there as they make their way ah, to exactly. the court. So Claudia feels a little bit relaxed, yes? Yeah, exactly. It looks Relax that way. <laughs> Ali Sanchez, just a little word with her young playing partner there, just to relax her as they make their way onto court for this uh, first encounter for them and the second match in successive days for 11-11's pairing of uh, Ali Alonso uh, and Paula Jose Maria. Get team ready for this match. So two sets will be played. If it's one apiece, we go to a super tie break instead of a third set. Touch it twice, Claudia Jensen. And just owning up to that as well. Double hit of the racket on the ball. That is a foul. Ari Sanchez with the serve in this opening match, in this opening game of the first set. Beautiful decision. She knows the ball doesn't really, uh, as you said today, you know, there's not, even though Claudia has a very powerful match as well, but it's unnecessary to use it when the players are running forward already because uh, they can reach the ball. So much easier, perhaps, is to play a slow shot, but has to be very... Um, she has to really adapt the amount of power she's going to print into that bandeja. Smash. Wow. <laughs> That's how Ale Alonso started. Aggressive defense, if that's not a contradiction, from Ale Alonso. Some powerful net play as well. Close play, close quarters from Claudia Jensen. Up goes the lob from Sanchez. Changing the dynamics of the rally, but finding the net. Great shot. You know, those shots um, to the left side players, when they have to hit the ball like with the backhand, I always say to the, to the players, don't try to hit that close to the net. First, because it's too risky. And secondly, because... Uh, because the, the player is going to hit the ball comfortably. If you play a little bit higher, as Paula did to Ari Sanchez, hitting the ball high with the backhand is quite hard shot to do. So, you know, you risk less and play more clever. Well, she knows her game, her old, well, her current playing partner, inside out, and she'll know the relative strengths and weaknesses of every single detail of Ari Sanchez's game, this Jose Maria. Nonetheless, we've got 30 all in the opening game. And he's forward. What beautiful kick bandeja. Pushing Ale Alonso back. Second time that Alonso has found the back wall and the ball has gone out. And that gives Team RL9. But you could tell that already that, you know, four of them even though Ari Sanchez and Claudia hadn't played before in this court, but you could tell already that they're much more conservative players. They're much more... No, I'm not talking about uh, more than, more than Paula. No, Paula and Ali Alonso are also conservative and very good players, but... 
Very good shot from, from Paula. But what I mean is that they are just getting the rhythm of the match. Ari Sanchez and Claudio, they're just starting and they play very good already. Takes us to 40-40 and golden points. Remember, there's no advantage in paddle. The next point wins the game. Oh, got a drop shot, cross court. Oh. And there she goes. Por cuatro, por cuatro. Amigo, amigo, <laughs> first one, the first game, and we've got our first por cuatro, which literally translated, I'm sure you understand, means for four. If it sails over the four meter wall at the back of the courts, the whole paddle world stands up and shouts, por cuatro. <laughs> That's, that's exactly what I just said before, what Willy Laos, the coach of the girls, what Willy is telling exactly to Ale Alonso and to Paula is that if you play a short lob to any of them, just stay back, because even though they hit the smash, you're going to reach it off the back wall. That's what I just said when uh, Claudia Jensen faked that smash. Uh, they said, okay, if she's going to fake it, we're going to keep it. We're going to keep at the back in order to reach that shot. If she smashes, we're going to run forward. We're going to reach it anyways. So defend your way out of a smash if your opponent has the opportunity. It's very hard to craft a winning shot from a smash. That sent Claudia Jensen scurrying back to the back of the court. Both, play, both pairings playing pretty deep at the moment. Defensive duel. That's a good shot from Jensen. I think here the difference is been made by Ale Alonso, who is playing very good at the moment. Uh, Paula, I mean, what well, you, you can tell, you know, he's number one in the world. Uh, so we can expect anything from this uh, player, oh. like at this shot, for example. Yeah, that was brilliant. You know, that's something that I would say is normal yeah. for her. It's not normal for the rest of the, of the human beings. But, you know, for, for this match, if Ale Alonso is not on fire, then the other two will take the advantage. But now Ali Alonso is doing an amazing job. Jose Maria serving for 11-11 in this game and uh, crafting a winner, but an unforced error there from Jose Maria. Have a look at Paula is trying to, I mean, she served into the um, sir, um, Ari Sanchez backhand, not backhand of the side wheel, because if the ball rebounds of the side wheel, pushing Ari Sanchez to play cross court, and actually, with Paula wants is that Ari plays the shot exactly, and now she plays. It's a it's a very tactical way of serving, you know. She plays to the sidewall of Jensen, pushing Jensen to play unnatural if she wants to play the lob uh, in parallel. Well, Ari start trying to see how she's doing with the shot of the back wall with winners. Paula is the one who yeah. makes the difference, you know, in the, in the terms of attacking or being a little bit more aggressive or looking for angles, risking a little bit more. Uh, if it works, they're going to be leading this match. If it doesn't, then let's see how Ale Alonso helps Paula to, to keep at the highest level. Paula Jose Maria able to find the exact spot on the court, which will produce a winning shot. Her awareness, her reading of the game. There's reasons why she is the number one in the world, along with Adi Sanchez. He now has a bit of defending to do against Alonso. He keeps her pinned in that corner. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and Adi Sanchez could be playing 77,000 lobs in a row. No problem at all. It's tight, but in. Yes, you see how she won the point? You, you, if, you, if you really watch the match tactically, Adi Sanchez played five lobs in a row, only one Chiquita. One of the lobs was perfect behind uh, the, the opponent's um, back, let's say, trying to go with the backhand, and they made a mistake. That's how the, also the risk was very low, and she's still winning the point. So 30 all on the Jose Maria serve. This next point could be quite big. They both left it in the end. Yes, yeah, a little bit understanding for, for them too. As we said before, you know, better if both go rather than none of them going to the ball, you know, where the ball goes to the middle. Better they hit the rackets, I would say. Yeah. You know, but that means that they're both trying to do something. 
but they ended up with a point nonetheless, and they are within one point of taking their first game of this first set. Both players at the net now. Trying to seek out the opportunity to get the winning set. shot away. As uh, Marcelo Ferrari said to them, open the angles. Don't play every time to the middle, just open a little bit more to the corners. And that's what uh, Jensen and Ari are doing. Oof. Wow, what a shot from Paula Jose Maria. And now it's 2 0 to 11 11 team. It's a good start. It's a good start. Yeah, Longoria might be happy there as well watching <laughs> this match again of her ladies on court, Paula and Ale Alonso. Well, another break of serve in this next game, and it really could be the pretty much curtains in the first set as they it would hand 11-11 a three to love lead in the first set so it's absolutely imperative that RL9 hold their serve it's Claudia Jensen with the serve that was in amazing Ali Alonso there at the net unbeatable I would say at the moment not risking with the volleys Alonso is seeing everything in slow motion now. And Ali missing that Ali. smash. She almost Actually, had too much time there, didn't she? I she think thought were, about the, it too much. I think there were two options there, either to hit it out by the four meters backward or to hit a flat smash. And I think that she was also thinking both of them. Have a look. When she tried to go for that smash, she didn't know either to go. And so she didn't hit with flat, and she did hit down. She tried to hit both, and she didn't even hit the ball, unfortunately. Oh, brilliant from Alonso. Brilliant improvisation, but a great response by Claudia Jensen. Alonso anyway. twisting and turning, and Jensen pinpoint accuracy there. Takes it to 15 all. On serve for RL9. And it is Jensen with the ball. Jensen to serve. Has to hold. They have to hold this game, you think? Well, I, you know, I think that from the tactical point of view, what she's done now that's hitting the smash, even though she knew, uh, Claudia Jensen knew, that her opponent, Ale Alonso, in the parallel side, um, would reach that ball. At least she's pushing the opponents forward, moving them from the comfortable zone, I would say. And that's what she tried to do and actually succeed. Ari Sanchez has produced a couple of uncharacteristic and quite unforced errors that uh, puts her team on the back foot somewhat here at 15.30. It's a delicate moment in this first set, potentially. That was in. Amazing for Mary Sanchez. Wow, what a block from the number one in the world, Ari Sanchez. And what a lob from Ali Alonso. Oh, <gasps> brilliant from Jose Maria. That's put the cat among the pigeons and opened At up some space. Absolutely incredible. A lob from Abahada. Never seen that. Brilliant. Oh, no, 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 no. For an inch that was out, I think she tried to pay with the same. And well, with the same card, you know, and right. it didn't work. Slight correction, brilliant intent. <laughs> a brilliant idea, but just out. And now there's a spot of bother, really, for RL9. 15.40 down, it's three break points for 11-11 to go 3-0 up in this opening set. Great vision from Alonso there. She's doing very little wrong, Ali Alonso, at the moment. Jose Maria calling her away, taking the responsibility. Well, and Claudia Jensen that. stepping forward a little bit, risking a little bit more, I would say. But it's actually what you need when you see that anything you're doing is not working, you got to do something else. Yeah, that's the difference when you're competing at this level. Sometimes you are like very conservative and you win. Okay, you don't have to change anything. But if it doesn't work, you got to start doing something. Two more break points to defend. There's one of them, fairly straightforwardly, a rare mistake from Ali Alonso, and we're into golden points. 
it could be a very good recovering game for them if they win this point. It could be very good for Claudia and uh, Ari Sanchez. Because otherwise, 3 0. I think they chose um, Paula, and then they say, no, I think Ale better just because the cross course serving lefty player. If they serve to Alice, Ale Alonso would be better. And then they say, no, 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 no. You cannot change it now. You say Paula. So it goes to Paula. And so they and got it. Wrong. Yes, it's 2-1 to 11-11 team. Well, they needed that. RL9, just 1-2 down in the opening set. ¿Vale? Para que sea Ari, entonces ordenamos tirando un globo paralelo. Muy bien, Ari, cuando las has hecho el trabajo arriba, well, arriba, uh, arriba. Hay casi, Marcela Ferrari is tiran, asking for some order into y, the y pair. Yeah, yeah, it's like on the decisions, a, on the tactical point of view. Start being a little bit more, playing with a little bit more clever. Don't risk, we don't need to risk that match. We won the long point. She said, and we don't need to. So he asked it to Claudia Jensen to play with a little bit more order as Ari Sanchez is used to play with a much order than what they're doing now at the moment. That was the tactical instruction then from Team RL9. They're in the game, and that was a very important Cuando last a game. Contra, vamos a Holding their choque. serve was absolutely imperative. They faced two golden Entonces, points. They've won one and lost one. And that claro, final victory there, paralelo, just narrowing the disadvantage to 1-2. To ¿vale? Now they need to think about how to break the Exacto. serve of the 11-11 pairing. That will be the next este challenge, as they try and claw their way palo. back se, se está into set one. ¿vale? Pero tenemos, claro, tenemos la pista amplia, pero vamos a jugar por donde habíamos acordado un poco, ¿vale? Well, they are Con calma, sin prisa. Still in this set, tengamos, but they are a bien, breakdown. ¿vale? And 11-11 very okay. nearly skipped into a three love lead. They have three break points, all of which were defended. And that means that in women's group B, ahora, the first match of the day stands at uh, one game to two. ¿vale? It'll be 11-11 to serve ¿vale? next, with the chance of opening bien, up, bien. prizing open another... Uh, two game advantage in the opening set. On they come then. And 11-11's uh, pairing of Paolo Jose Maria and Ale Alonso, who's uh, started very confidently, as she did yesterday as well. It'll be Alonso to serve for the first time in this match. Let's see if uh, Ari Sanchez. And Claudia can manage what the coach was asking for with a little bit more order into the game. The tactical part, as they talked before, that what they said, let's do what we said. Wow, what a shot. And again, she's going to reach this. Oh, that she's was brilliant from Jensen. Brilliant. <laughs> Pirouetting to get a racket Now there is nothing to lose. Now there is nothing to lose. Great lob there, right to the back, Jensen from the back of the court to the front, cross court with great accuracy, Jensen so dynamic in this opening point, that's a great Very ball from Sanchez. From Ari Sanchez just did the perfect amount of power. But it was Jensen who kept them in this point at times, and uh, how about this little pirouette, fantastic awareness of where the ball was, and there again. It's like the ball goes very quick if you smash it, but doesn't really take the highest, the height the players want with the smash. So it could be a very fast ball, but with not much uh, sideward rebound or backward rebound. That's why the players are not kicking the ball out by the three meters much. 
Now, was that an example, Maori, of the ball coming off the fencing rather than the wall there at a slightly unusual angle that just deceived yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah. player just a little bit? As you described, and it's worth noting, isn't it? There is clear perspex at the back and at the sides uh, towards the rear of the court, but along the sides and near the door, we have this uh, fencing which produces an uneven bounce. And um, the reason for that fencing goes right back to the origins of the sport in Mexico, yes. as you were explaining yeah. yesterday. Why, exactly. why is it like that? Because it's uh, very hot in Mexico. And, uh, it is very uh, hot in Mexico. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. and the guy, Enrique Corcuera, who invented the sport, was a, was a court with complete walls all around. And so he thought, man, it's quite hot in here. I need some air. So they put some of the walls, the side walls, down. And they put some fence because the vegetation was getting in to the court. So they needed a fence not letting the vegetation to come in, the trees, but the air to go through. That's why the fence. And now it's become a part of the game. Now we use it for a tactical, yeah? <laughs> no trees, no nothing. Just glasses and spectacular events like the Hexagon Cup. Right, big moment for RL9 here. They've got three break points. To level it up with a break apiece. And there, off well. the fence. 40-30. Two break points remain for Team RL9. So, as I told you before, you know, I think that, uh, that they were losing 2-0 in the beginning. Claudia and uh, Ari didn't mean because they are losing. The other ones were playing a little bit better. But you could tell now that they are just into the game. They got the breakdown, but they can recover it now quickly. Let's see if they can make it happen. Not risking playing lobs at the right time. They know this point is massively important for them. Ari Sanchez and Claudia Jensen. That was brilliant from Sanchez. Great response from Alonso. Look at the, look at the height from the net and the amount of power. Uh, Ari plays that shot and Claudia as well. No mistakes, no unforced errors. Paula, we go. Yes, yeah, she will. Taking Jensen onto the backhand, backhanded lob, dealt with by Alonso. Down the middle there from Sanchez. Another lob. This is the longest rally of the match, I make it. Well, because no one is risking, and everyone is just uh, waiting for the right moment to hit. Sanchez clattering into that side fencing, getting the ball back, and on we go. Yes. <laughs> No one wants to mistake here. Every single shot goes like uh, 40 seconds, uh, 40 centimeters from the net. Wow. Look at that. Jose Maria, I think, thought she had the winning opportunity there. That's a subtle shot, isn't it? Just lofted over the head of Claudia Jensen there. Sanchez equal to everything that's coming her way, and so too is Alonso. Spin on that ball. Oh, oh and wild, wild from Alonso. Wild. This was. The perfect example, oh. yes, and not taking into consideration, yeah, any, any, I'm not saying anything bad about this, but it's a perfect example of why the ranking says where each player is. Just her composure, so her patience. Alonso, exactly. She them. just lost it at the moment that perhaps uh, Ari Sanchez wouldn't. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I'm waiting, I'm waiting that second, but man, uh, Tapia also did it and she, he's number one in the world. You know, so Ali Alonso has done an amazing job there, but missing the last smash. That is what's called a rush of blood to the head. Because it was the very important point. Huge was point. A, yeah, a break point. So now it's 2-2. Two -two. The first set is right back in balance. Yes. Very interesting for the audience, for everyone. And, it, and it's that counting. You know, the, the amount of mistakes and unforced errors come from Jensen and... Ale at the moment, because Paola and Ari are very conservative and they know they have, they cannot make much unforced errors and they have to lead the pair. That's there we go. An unforced error there from Ali Sanchez. And it's hard to play a bandeja, the bandeja shot running forward. Uh, every time you train, every time you play, uh, you are at the net position, your opponents play a lob, then you ram backwards in the sideways, and then you play from high to low the bandeja shot. That is the most normal way, let's say, of playing. But she was at the back, and the opponents play a lob, and she had to play the bandeja running forward. That was a little bit weird. 
That's why perhaps she impacted the ball a little bit early and she missed to the net. Oh, look at that. Stroke of luck there for Ale Alonso, but two great reflexes. And again, she tried it, the first one didn't work. <laughs> but didn't care, went for the second one and it worked. So big, he pays back. Big point that, they were 30 love down. Claws back to 15.30, which is a whole lot more comfortable than love 40 down. Portres, you love it. <laughs> Portres, you can't, she's smiling because it's like, what the hell have done? Well, this is the Portres in parallel from Ari Sanchez. Look at that. From the middle of the court in parallel. Actually, I think she didn't mean that. She, because if you hit the ball by three meters, you allow your opponents to reach it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you hit it and the ball rebounds off the back goal very high, taking the highest point you can, then your opponents will never reach it. And that one went long. And it was so important. that means uh, break points, two break points for 11-11 to break straight back at RL9. Paula knows yeah, it, that's why she takes she a little longer. A and point. she might also know that Adi Sanchez doesn't like <laughs> to wait when it's a break point. <laughs> that's why perhaps she's done it, because they're competing for one million euros in this Hexagon Cup. Wow. Just to turn. A little bit lucky lob, I would say, really but just. perfect blocking volley. Ari Sanchez, the bandeja girl. She has one of the best bandeja shots, and that's why she missed it, you see? Every time I say something nice about the player, that's exactly what happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, that really hurt, didn't it? Ari Sanchez, yeah, it uh, broken. Indeed. And they come straight back, 11-11. Let's have another little listen in, Mauri, um, if we can. As we look at these uh, statistics there, the winners, well, predominantly coming from the team in green, 11-11, with five winners to RL9's two. And in terms of the uh, unforced errors, it's six apiece, so a bit more parity in that particular category. Let's have a little listen in now with uh, team, I think it's team 11-11 who we can hear from. Los tres cuatro tiros que tiran angulados que ya no se han tirado una vuelta allí, se ha tirado una aquí que la ha escapado perfecta y luego ha fallado la siguiente. Cuando le topamos los dos tres tiros ya ahí empiezan a colapsar un poquito porque vienen a hacer un poquito más. Pero funciona también muy bien el globo rápido. El globo rápido cuando nos apoyamos y lo tiramos rápido también. Well, Mario, I heard, I heard the word rápido there. Yeah, rápido. Yeah, he was talking about the lob rápido. The globo rápido, the lob rápido means that the no, no high lobs. The two players, a little bit quicker lobs, you know, there are different kind of lobs. We're gonna, not going to talk about the technical part of the game here, but at some point there are different kind of lobs in the play. Well, in parallel to the middle, cross court, quicker, higher. And so he was, he was asking to the players uh, that the opponents are playing with so much angle, all of the lobs. He's not looking for that, but he's looking for quick lobs. The lob, of course, is such an important part of playing paddle, but there are good lobs and there are clever lobs and there are tactical lobs. And the problem with playing a really high lob, if I've understood this correctly, Mari, is it, it buys you a bit of time, but it buys your opponents the same amount of time, so everybody can regroup. Yeah, as well. It's true what you said, but in the conditions that we're playing now, now that, like where the player said that the ball is a little bit heavy, perhaps because of winter time here in Madrid, or whichever reason, it's also not easy to manage high lobs. But anyways, the coach of 11-11 team, which is uh, Mr. Willy Laos, is asking to Paula, Jose Maria and Ale Alonso to play quicker lobs, like not that high lobs, in order to take time off from your opponents and to reach the net position more comfortably, not giving any chance to the opponents to play um, uh, or bandejas or um, to, to go backwards and reach the net position. Paula Jose Maria and uh, Ali Alonso have just broken back. They lead 3-2 in the opening sets, and they are 
serving with uh, Paola Jose Maria. So if they hold this serve, they'll be 4-2 up and within a couple of games of closing out the first set. It's a very interesting match, i got to say. It's a very interesting match. Um, I think that Paula and Ale Alonso are playing very good and that Ari Sanchez and Claudia are playing as they do, which is also very good, but they can keep for longer this level. Do you know what I mean? And I, know, and I don't know if Paula and Ale Alonso will play for longer at this level. If they do, I think this little gap, this little difference is fair. So Paula and Ale are playing a little bit better. Well, in yesterday's encounter, winning encounter against Team Bella, they got better and better through the second set. So there's no reason why they can't keep this level and indeed increase their performance. They're finding the winners in a way at the moment that Sanchez and Jensen aren't. Or at least not as frequently. Incredible, Ale Alonso, how... Oh, brilliant. Brilliant from Alonso. Oh, look Great at that. Oh. Checking it back anyways. That's Paula Jose Maria. How did she do that? Unfortunately, they lost the point, but she turned. It's very hard when you lose the ball by turning or doing any shot, and then you find the ball back and you just, just move your hand and just hit the ball with a racket. That's only pro players can do it. 15 all on the 11 11 serve. Jose Maria to Jensen. Backhand a quick match there from Jensen. Well, that was a quick lob that the coach was asking for, but the thing is that she played the, the, the quick lob to Jensen, who was already at the net, when she could have played a low shot to Ari Sanchez, who was slightly behind. Actually, Paula Casemaria said to her, hey, listen, I'm telling you, Ari was behind. So why did you play a lob to Jensen? Sometimes this mirroring, let's say, information that we give to the partner when the partner can't see the other side of the court, is very important, it's a must in paddle in order to Amazing become a more tactical player and better pair. Jensen just getting a little bit tied up there and uh, taking the ball straight out. That levels things at 30 each. Oh, cute angle there from Jose Maria. Again to the Jensen backhand, tight against that wall. Found it. Got in there, back wall post. She blocked it. Fabulous resistance and resilience from Alonso. Seeing everything, and Look again. At Look at that. And that one, where Unlucky. it was one too many in the end. That one just coming off her feet, getting all tied up. It was exactly the right thing to do there for Claudio Jensen. Yeah, Alonso was in uh, difficulties, having yes. done so many uh, extraordinary saves. But I think, you know, the good thing about this is when you see Alonso, for example, in this game situation, the only thing you want is her to win the point. But, you know, it's because everyone is, like, with the player who is in more troubles than the one who is leading the game. Right, we've got another break point. Suddenly, these pairings are unable to hold their serve, seemingly. Two break points to defend for Paula Jose Maria and Team 11. It's showing this match that this uh, has been slightly, perhaps, better to defend and winning points with the transition from back to forward than starting attacking as the last few games were a few breaks for both pairs. Jensen reached that ball. Paula's best oh. shot. Paula's best shot. And there we go. The Golden point. That is what we mean when we say that Team 11-11 are carving out the winners. Takes it to golden point. They've got one more break point to defend against RL9 here. Well, that was a brilliant winner from uh, Paula Jose Maria. Right when they needed it as well. <laughs> yes. Hold to serve here. If they but can. now is when they need it as well. But she did something similar or what? Let's see. In the purple 
heart of panel here in Madrid. Well, oh, that was saying, great, great say, improvisation there from Adi Sanchez in the right oh, spot at the right time and yeah, finding yeah, the right yeah, shot yeah, to get the point yeah. one. And that is a break and it levels things at three each. That's, I think, actually, uh, that Ari Sanchez gave the carrot to, you know, when they put the carrot yep. to the player, and she tempted her into that shot. And she did it. You know, Ali Alonso took it, and uh, Ari knew that she would reach that ball, and she knew that Ali would hit the smash, and that's why uh, they got a break. 3 0, first set. Couldn't be more even. And the trap that Alonso fell into there was one you were explaining yesterday, Maori, where. Hard, hitting it hard and fast is not always the smart thing to do. <laughs> yes. And that's the difference between paddle and tennis, isn't it? Well, 100%. That's why the, 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 if, you, if you have a look, uh, Jensen is 1 meter 60, I would say. I don't know in, in English how to measure, like, how I would say, feet. Yeah, feet. fairly short. Yeah, fairly short <laughs> compared to, but the, the, you know, any tennis player, I mean, it's impossible. You know, the fitness of the tennis, because the tennis is much more physical, I would say, because we have no walls, there is no... But the amount of tactics yeah, we have yeah. in the sport of paddle is triple than in tennis, because in tennis you use a little bit more the power than in paddle, even though from the surf, think about it. Just starting with the surf, you start from, from a smash, and in paddle you surf underarm, which makes the game a little bit more um, open, I would say, to anyone that could start playing paddle right today. 15-30. So still a dangerous moment here for RL9 as they look to hold serve, having just broken. Alonso digs that one out, or tries to, finds the net. 30 away. Ah, that hurt. She's a little bit annoyed with herself there. She's having a little, little word with herself. Ari is covering 75% of the court there when she plays cross court to Ale Alonso. Have a look at the defensive and how Ari is doing amazing at the moment as well. But you see, exactly. If you, if anyone is home and uh, you are looking for a player to miss, just let me know. I would just say that the player is amazing and that player is going to miss the ball for sure. <laughs> Anytime I say something to a player, he's doing a good bandeja, miss the bandeja. <laughs> Good smash. Uh, Mrs. Smash. <laughs> Sorry, Ari. If you doubt, just keep your mouth shut, Mary. Yes. Oh, that no. one's gone long. Break point, second serve. Claudia Jensen needs to get this one right. What can Ali Alonso do here to break straight back again? It's been the pattern of the last few games. Neither pairing able to hold their serve at the moment. How could Jensen play with her? such a long hair? Untied, let's say, you know, she's it's a very long hair, quite uncomfortable, but not for her. Oh, nearly. Well, Got out that's the way, another point. Quite reach it. Very important point for both pairs. So, another break point opportunity for 11 11, but it could be their last. And a very important point for Team RL9 to move into the lead potentially for the first time in the first set. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant from Jose Maria. The two youngsters trading blows. Jose Maria that trying Gancho to send Jensen. From Jensen. Jensen playing that little quick smash, I would say, in order not to miss. The net position, but she's defending there very well. Oh. And that's why she wins this point amazingly, keeping and being 4 3. Well, that really was uncharacteristic from Paula Jose Maria there, but there's a score 4 3 to our own line. Well, Claudia Jensen has been putting up some uh, fantastic defensive lobs 
to get herself out of trouble there. Over the head, primarily, of Ale Alonso, who's been playing opposite her. And the highest of them, uh, the lobs that have actually hit the surface of the court, so to speak, six metres and 66 centimetres. It's a good number. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say it's that high. I wouldn't say it's not low. It's the, yeah, it's the perfect lob for, for uh, women's. I would say, when, you know, have a look at the directions, height, but the height is 6.66. Um, yeah, you think about as well, you know, I always say that all the players are used to compete and train in, uh, in places where the roof is around seven, eight meters height. So they have to play this kind of logs for a long period of time. Let's have a listen to what the coaches say and what the players say. Well, she looks so much more relaxed now, doesn't she, Claudio Jensen? She, uh, she's played herself into this game, and so too has Ari Sanchez. And uh, for the first time since we started Team RL9, as Claudia, uh, as he's, Ari Sanchez gets onto the court and wants to get uh, this next game underway, they have control of the first set, just about. Claudia Jensen now, clap of the hands with her coach, and she too heads for the court. So, Paula Jose Maria's mistake, and it was an unforced error on that golden point. Hands, Team RL9, Ari Sanchez and Claudia Jensen, a break, another break, but this one significantly gives them a 4-3 lead. Ali Alonso with the serve in this one. Claudia's defending very well, actually, you know, um, she said, I... I, I want to keep the net position. I don't know why, actually. I mean, I, and actually, the coach said to her, like uh, Marcella Ferrari said to her, listen, why do you want to keep the net position that quick all the time? If you don't, you, you're, you're defending very well. We saw the lobs yeah, right yeah, before. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, well, she said, I'm trying, when I reach the net position, I'm trying, they don't pass over my head, even though I think the ball hits the siphons. His way was out. Yep, love 30, love 40. So rushing into a uh, dominant position in this game to level it at four apiece, which they should do. Alonso into the net. Powerful return there from Sanchez. Paula Jose Maria, every time there's a 50 50 call in the middle of the court, she takes the responsibility. She makes the call, and by and large, she gets it right. Wow. Yeah. Wow for Ari Sanchez. Straight to the feet. Yes. It was a kind she's of a she's a tall shot player as well, isn't she, Alonso? So it's a long way to get down and get yes. that, dig that ball out of the That's court. True. But it's important as well that uh, Ari Sanchez's partner, Claudia, said to, to her that both of them were at the net. <laughs> Foro, fantastic match we're watching today, the first match of the second day. Absolutely no idea who's going to win this set. But fairly soon we're going to find out. It's not going to go on forever. We could be heading almost inexorably for a first set tiebreak. Good winner there from Alonso, unreturnable for Ari Sanchez. 15 love. Or rather, love 15. Of course, a break here, and then the set could be over very quickly. Sanchez with the serve. Bang! Off! That. I'm tired of bandejas and bandejas, she said. <laughs> That's it. Bye bye, bandejas. Bye bye, Vivoras. There we go, smash. Well, I think she got the ball in the way. You know, she was running forwards, and uh, Ali Alonso. Play that quite easy shot, I would say, to her forehand side. Have a look how uh, Ari Bandejas changes when Ali Alonso is behind, playing a little bit softer and deeper. If Ali Alonso comes forward... A brilliant shot from Alonso. Ari will play down to her feet. Terrific angle, and again from like Jose Maria, but look at that from Sanchez. Unbelievable. Like Alejandra Alonso. <laughs> I was just talking to her coach, 
Gustavo Prato just before. I was saying in Spanish, Gustavo Prato. That sounds a little bit more Argentinian. Gustavo is the is her coach, and she is doing an amazing job. That's what I mean, you know. When they're young, they have no, they're afraid of nothing. You know, they don't care. Uh, Adi Sanchez, number one in the world, in front of me. No problem. There we go. Jose Maria back to defend. Jensen deep again to Jose Maria. Chiquita from Paula. Love to the middle. Fantastic. O opening the angles. And Absolute that's fantastic. Huge. Shot. That's a big oh, point. 40. Three break points incoming for Team 11 11. Well, they would take them if they can convert one of the next three points to within a game of the first set. Big moment. Big moment in this match. Should go for a winner? Of course you will. Alonso equal Samantha, to it, but that's which too is the hard. Result, which is a score. 30-40. One of the three defended. Two more remain. The first set in the balance. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm <laughs> what not sure what happened there. Well, I think that the... Ali Alonso played like slow shot down the line, allowing Claudia Jensen impacting the ball in front of her. And that ball naturally goes very cross court to the fence, you know. If she hits the ball, if Ali Alonso played the ball a little bit harder or to Claudia Jensen's forehand side, then uh, Claudia wouldn't be able to do such a shot. Two break points defended. Beautiful lob. Another beautiful lob from Paula. She tries to go for it. Dangerous oh from Alonso. Oh my goodness, Paula. Brilliant reflexes from Jose Maria and oh from Alonso. My goodness, these and that the went break. straight out, and there it is. The golden oh. point goes the way of 11 11. And they have broken at a key moment in the first set. 5 4, though, within a game of victory in the first set. Spicy match. <laughs> Pero a mí me gusta cuando te sube a la red y le tiras el cachetazo a los pies, me encanta. Ese me encanta. Pero cuando estás adelante prefiero que juegues un poquito más atrás y que la bola vaya un poquito más patinando de víbora. There, Willy Laos is uh, asking to Ali Alonso. He said, I like when we smash, even though it didn't work in the beginning, but if you smash down the line to, um, to Claudia Jensen's feet, then I like it. I like it a lot because you're making her move, as we were talking in the beginning. But if you're not, since I use move a little bit backwards, I prefer your Vibora rather than your Bandeja. Very interesting observation. He said, don't forget, we are one game up. But we got a little bit lucky in one or two points, so be awake. So he's asking to the players to rest a little bit between points, but when they serve, they, or the opponent serve, they got to be on fire again, not to relax during the points, even if it's 30 love. Right, it's a pensive looking Ari Exacto. Sanchez and Claudia Jensen. Their margin for error in the first set has disappeared completely. Well, at the last break, they were 4 3 down, and the momentum was all with Team RL9. But now 11 11 with those two games in quick succession, including the break of serve just now to set up a 5-4 score in the opening set. Uh, just one game shy of taking the opening set. Back on track. Back on track. Uh, Four players. Of course, if they do win this match, if they win the first set and go on to take the second set as well, they will be uh, qualified for the semi-finals at the weekend already. First pairing to do so in the Hexagon Cup. Giving out already 15 points of the play. But well, we're going to talk about that later. Yeah, that yes, is a whole We're going to talk about the later points. Exploration. How many points you get. What we do need to know, though, is that they're through. 
and uh, what that will mean if it goes their way overall in this match. So team RL9, minimum requirement, we're going to have to win their next match. Yes. Tomorrow. To give themselves a chance. Cloud is closing the angles all the time, stepping forward, forward, forward. So Sanchez and Jensen are moving towards the net, but Jensen forced back again by Jose Maria into that corner. Great reflexes oh from my goodness, Sanchez. Man. Oh my goodness, this girl. <laughs> The Just youngest went long, player <laughs> on court looks like the oldest one. Such a confidence. Every shot she plays with a perfect amount of power, patience, super good. Well done for Alejandra. Hopefully she doesn't mistake now. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That was brilliant from Jose Maria, and that is an outright yeah. winner. How many times has she done that? 30 love now, and Ali Alonso and Paula Jose Maria are in control of this game and in control of the first set. And things are getting a bit desperate now for RL9. Need and to you turn said, this around now, need to win this next point. And as you said today in the beginning of the match, Ned, that they were going from, from low to high yesterday, I would say, in the performance. So if this is the first set, and they do as they did yesterday. There's more to come. Yes. Uh, Bad news for Jensen and, and Ari Sanchez. Everything's coming Jensen's way at the moment, but Lanonso looking maybe to switch it. Jose Maria. That went a bit short, that lob. Oh. Unbelievable. Perla and Ale Alonso, how they're defending at the moment, moving all over the court. Look at this. Fantastic. Well, yeah. it was a big job to do. <laughs> Claudia Jensen like, moving the racket like, what the hell have I got to do to win this point? Well, she engineered that one beautifully. She set it up and she knew exactly what she was doing. She pushed uh, Alonso into that corner and then there was no reply when she produced a big shot that came back over the net unopposed. And as a result, they have their first points in this game. 15-30. 30-15, I should say. Just on the line no, there. Just on the line, yeah. Just on the line. Paola has been reading all Jensen's shots, angles, speed. She's awaiting there in the middle of the court. Oh, oh that's, that's wonderful. What actually wonderful what shot from Jensen. <laughs> So Actually, well disguised and perfectly executed. Alonso just watched as this whizzed past her and out of play. Look at that, nothing That's, she could do about that. It's very hard to do that shot because naturally that shot which should go down the line. Uh, sorry, uh, should go to the middle or cross court as she's impacting the ball slightly behind. But she hide the shot, I would say, the preparation of the shot. Oh. No, uh, Paula Casamaria didn't hide anything, she just smashed it. Well, just beaten for pace on that one. That was a violent smash from Jose Maria. And that sets up two set points for 11-11. You know, Paula hit one smash like three minutes ago. Worked. Okay, she went again, uh, again for the same shot. Okay, there we That's go. That's it. First set goes to 11-11. They led for most of that set. They relinquished that lead and then grabbed it straight back and closed out set one. They lead by one set to the Let's have a look at some of the raw statistics from set one of this encounter between RL9 and 11-11 in the women's group B. Well, a little fleeting look. There we go. Oh, well, it's gone again. <laughs> the one that really matters. I didn't though. read it. I did. I did. I don't remember, but I did. The one that really matters is that it's 6-4 uh, after one Come set. Back. Let's have another there go at go. that. Total points won, 32 to 26. 55% of those case. points won <laughs> to 45. <laughs> and uh, golden points won, well, three for Team RL9 and two for 
statistics are pretty yeah. pretty level, aren't they? Yeah, Winning smashes, they perhaps that's the big difference there, Mario. I think three of them were in the last two games from Paula. And two of them were also from Alejandro Alonso in the last three games, I would say. Um, golden points they were more won by Claudia Jensen and Ari Sanchez, which, you know, but they could have been also for Paula and, and Alejandra and to make the set perhaps 6-3 or 6-2, if that would have happened. All right, some wonderful shot play, even in this opening set. It's only going to get better. And it was, by and large, Team 11-11, who basically controlled most of set one. In particular, Alonso with some great reflex playing, and Paula Jose Maria with all her experience and her deft, her deftness of touch. There we go, S Team 11-11, six four winners in the opening set of the first match here on day two of the Hexagon Cup. We're in the women's category in Group B and Team 11-11 with Paula Jose Maria and the 17-year-old rising star of paddle, Ale Alonso from Valo Valladolid. Valladolid, Valladolid. Yes. Well done, taken, as she has taken, they have taken collectively a giant step uh, towards qualification for the semi-final at the weekend. And they are putting Team RL9 in a difficult spot here where they know that they have to win this next set. They have been playing already for over one hour. One hour, one hour for the first set of this match. <laughs> yes. And the rallies well, have been long, haven't they? Well, a little bit lucky there. But anyways, even though the ball didn't hit the top of the, of the net from uh, Alejandra's shot, it would have been a point, I guess, again, uh, anyways, because Iris Sanchez was too close to the net. Hey, hey. <laughs> Last 30, huh? Yeah. Sanchez is not comfortable at all. Yeah, there's a frown on the face of Ari Sanchez. Uh, would I, uh, sorry, Nate, what I would try, if I were Jensen, I would try to do just exactly what yeah. Paula does from the other side, because, you know, Ari Sanchez and Paula are the number ones in the world, so she tries at least to copy some of the stuff, like, okay, my position will be here, I will not risk here, I will risk there. Perhaps it works. She's also lefty. Oh, that one went long, just. To give some confidence to Claudia as well. Man, you know what is being cross court to this girl, Paula Jose Maria? It's like playing against the wall. Well, for once, Alonso have a look. opts for a lighter touch, but it doesn't go their way. Yeah, but have a look that she won one point. This is what happens naturally to some of the players. She won one point cross court to Paula. The Paula made an unforced error with the lob. And then it's straight after the next shot that she hit was a drop shot. There's a matter of confidence. And she's still winning the point, you know. Lofted backhand from Jensen to get herself out of that corner and to the net. Reflexes from Sanchez and Alonso, trading shots, and well, that was brilliant from Jensen. The right thing to do, and with that, the opening game is won in no time at all. So, holding the throw of Ari Sanchez, the best start for RL9, who take the lead in the early stages of the second set, which they have to win to keep the match alive and to take it to a super tie-break.
What's she saying, Mary? <laughs> he says, you, you promised me you was going to smile. The coach said, you, you promised me you are going to smile? Why are you not smiling? Just smile. Enjoy. She doesn't want to smile. She doesn't want to smile at the moment. She might be smiling if they can win this set. Well, yeah, but man, listen, she's won the last three points. You've got 1,000 resources in your... Interesting. Yeah, you've got 1,000 of resources that you can use because you are a very complete player that you're not using all of them, so go for it. Do you know what's interesting about that, Mari? It's not so, it's not, not, there was nothing about tactics there, that was all about the psychology of the player, and it's such a part of the game, isn't it? In any sport. But when the pressure's on this in this level. game, in this cauldron, in this uh, paddle court, especially with such a young player who doesn't necessarily yet in her career know how to manage every pressure situation and how to get the best out of herself, just to give her that little settling word that in order didn't help for, for the order first for point. To, yeah, it didn't. But <laughs> Did it for help for the fair point? Just settle those nerves or whatever negativity that's crept into her game. Yeah, that's why the coaches are as well very important in the sport of panel. But not because, I mean, the coaches, you know, many, many people are asking me, Mari, why you're not coaching the World Wide Web? Because we are quite busy with our academy. Um, but the thing is that these players, for example, like Claudia Jensen, are, um, you got to know the players in order to coach them. That, I need, that needs some time. Uh, I mean, uh, but, um, Marcella Ferrari is trying her best, you know, yeah. from outside, from the coach, but she's not the main coach of Claudia Jensen. Yeah. He's not. Yeah. At they, the, they've, in the main been, circuit, at least. they've been thrown together for exactly, the Hexagon Cup. Exactly, for this Hexagon Cup, but, you know, she's trying her best, but we're not sure that that, is, that would work for Claudia. Jose Maria aiming for the feet of Claudia Jensen there. She didn't like that, and uh, she's just placed that smash straight into the net. And Claudia Jensen and Ali Sanchez, that was a bit of a horror show, that game. They have lost that to love in no time at all, and now she has to serve. And three mistakes from, uh, from Claudia in that game. Well, you know, we always say the player who is making yeah, look, more mistakes, but it's also the player who's hitting more the ball. So if you hit 2,000 balls and you make 20 mistakes, yeah, the frustration's really creeping in with Jensen now. She needs to turn this around. She needs to produce a few winners because that's been a sequence of unforced errors from her. Jose Maria knows that as well, and I think she's intent on exploiting this moment of frailty from Jensen. They have to squeeze it as much as they can, you know? That was out. Yep. And They've got to squeeze one. it as much as they can at this moment because... Jensen is going to get targeted. Every time they can at the moment, they're going to target Jensen. It's cruel, isn't it? Yeah, the truth is that, you know, it's the, the moment that they have to take the most advantage they can, Paula and Ale, because you don't forget you're playing against a very good player and they want number one in the world. So they can come back at any time. But we always say the sport of paddle is very tricky. There we have Marcella Ferrari yeah. uh, behind them. Uh, She's Max got a Gravian. problem on our hands here because uh, all of a sudden they find themselves love 40 down on Jensen's throw. They've lost, well, they haven't, they haven't notched up a point now for two games. Well, that was much better, much better from Jensen. And <laughs> error there from Jose Maria, unable to dig that one out. 1540, that's more respectable, but still three break points to defend here. Better. Took a risk an error from smash. Paula, yep. I would say. Because you know why it is an unforced error? Because when Jensen hit the smash, she was behind the line. Paula Jose Maria knows that Jensen is not reaching the net position that quick. So she could have played an easier shot cross court because she got the angle already created by the lob that she had played before. And why would you miss the shot to the net? If you miss it behind uh, the back wall, then, well, it would make a little bit more sense. But And now? Straight out. From 40 left to golden point, where does this match go? Well, somehow, RL9 have turned this around, and we do have golden point. It's either going to be, well, it's going to be 2-1, but which way is it going to go after this point? Will it be RL9 who go into this next changeover in a 2-1 lead, or will it be the other way around? Look at Paolo. Dancing on her toes, ready for the yes. second serve.
great lob. I think if... Uh... Whoa! That one's gone And out. there she yeah. goes. Ari Brilliant. The point. Well, they were love 40 down in that game, and they walk out the winner of the golden points. 2-1, RL9. Somehow lead Team 11 in the second set. ¿Sabemos? Dime. Ella nos tira mucho más globos que nosotras a ella. Vale. Vale. Entonces, ¿qué crees? ¿Por qué crees que se está pasando eso? Well, as ever. It's the modern way of things, but do connect with us if you're enjoying watching the Hexagon Cup. There's the hashtag, hashtag Hexagon Cup. And uh, log on to the website, hexagoncup.com, or in uh, on X, formerly known as Twitter, or indeed Instagram, with that uh, following tag, at hexagoncup underscore. That's what Bella said yesterday, you know. When they made the interview to Bella, Bella said, I can't believe what you have just done. Within a month, you have put the world of the world of paddle everywhere in the world um yeah we have viewers from all over the world i receive messages every day for hundreds of people unbelievable hello there having a good time looks like well this televised event is reaching a bigger audience than has ever been accessed by pedal in its uh, relatively young history, this growing young sport, <laughs> predominantly based in the, the Spanish-speaking <laughs> world, but as our English language commentary is exhibiting, a lot of English-speaking countries and international countries across the world are taking these live pictures here from Madrid. Ah, there we are, they say. Hi, that's me. No way. <laughs> They're not bothered. They don't care. Are they logging on to the hashtag? Look. Hey, buddy, you there. Picture. There we go. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> Fun and games in the stands, fun and games down on the courts. The action just about to resume. Into the second set now. RL9, 2-1 ahead against Team 11-11. Put under real pressure on uh, Claudia Jensen's serve in the match, in the game that we have just seen, where somehow RL9 dug out a victory in that game, having been love 40 down and facing uh, four, no less, no fewer than four break points. The golden point. And they lead. Are, yeah, we, heading, are we heading for a, uh, for a super tie break at the end of this second set? I think there's going to be lots of plot twists and turns before we get that far into set two. This camera angle. We've seen a fair bit of this from our uh, television coverage over the last yeah. couple of days, and it really does give you a sense of how the game stretches and the elastic ebbs and flows and stretches across the court. And basically, the speed with which the ball oh my goodness. crosses the net. That's what we call an absolute different level back and shot. When she's good, she's wow. very, very good, isn't she? The world number one. No, man, that shot of the of the cipher is just impossible to read it, to reach it. Impossible. Sanchez just uh, calling for the ball, taking the responsibility. Alonso to the net, great reactions. Up goes the lob for Jose Maria. A little short, and uh, putting Alonso into difficulties. Well, that lock down the middle, I think it doesn't really help much to Alice, Ale, um, Alonso and uh, Paolo Jose Maria down to Ari Sanchez. I think if they play to Ari Sanchez, should play a little bit more down to her non-playing shoulder, a little bit more open lob in order to create the angle so Ari cannot really reach that Vivora down to the corner as she's doing now, for yeah, example. exactly that. There we go. That's better, isn't it? Yes, she recovered that shot. Not comfortably, but she did it. Oh, no. She reached it. <laughs> Fabulous Fantastic. rally, this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely. No, oh, that's a great winner from Just Ali Alonso. 40-15, dump it. Sadie Sanchez around. on her backside. Come on, you're 17 years old yet? Come on. <laughs> yeah, what a winner this is from what Alonso. A shot. Look at that. What Placement. Touch. Look, look, look. There it is. Man. 
that's battle, you know? It's nicer to watch that shot, you know? I'm winning with that shot rather than, I hit the ball out by the three-meter siphon, very powerful. Well, it's fine as well, but this is paddle. Yeah, often the winning shot, that's the lesson that I've learned over the last few days, the winning shot is not necessarily the hardest. Cleverest. Sanchez again, calling to take the shot. Two apiece now. RL9, this is their service game to hold. But a very comfortable hold of serve from the 11-11 pairing just now. Two each in the second set. First point. Oh. Ali knows that every shot to the middle should be played by her kind of vivoreja. It's kind of a, <laughs> a vivora and bandeja. Out. But with the backhand, she's, she's made already yeah, like yeah, a yeah, three yeah. or four Amphos errors since the beginning of the match. It's not usual. Her backhand is brilliant. Love 15. First point going the way of 11-11 against the serve. That one is just long. Second serve required. And Eva Longoria just watching the match, having a coffee. That I think that was well. out. Yep, it was quite wide. Yep. Slightly yeah. wide. Yeah. 0 30, huh? Love yep. 30. 30, this could be crucial. This game could be absolutely crucial to Jensen. Ooh, another portress. Yeah, she liked that. She didn't smile, but she doesn't smile well, that often. She's, st she's still, <laughs> she's still like releasing some she, of the pain. I think she's smiling on the inside. Fifteen thirty. Her brother, this uh, the, the young boy Enzo, Jensen, the next generation also competition. Play. Yep. Yes, for the same team with her sister. Man, Ale Alonso hasn't missed a shot yet. She's going to reach this. Oh, yes. He did it. Oh, it's gone it. just. He got a little gone. bit angry. Just because gone. they knew that point was very important. Now it's 15 43 break points for Paula Jose Maria and Ale Alonso, who seem to. And she gets the racket like, on it and it goes like, just long. Yes. Seems that they're not going to stop with this performance. It's been amazing since yesterday. Second set, I would say. Uh, one and that's it. long too. And there we go. And that's Three, it. And two, it's over. Yeah. So, break of serve. 3 2 now to 11 11. And once again, RL9 have been broken. Let's have a look now at how Team 11-11 have been operating on the court. This is the heat map for Paola Jose Maria. This is the area of the court where she has been, well, that she's been using predominantly. So not Everywhere. not up not up towards the nets Everywhere. Uh, for the majority of time, but very much in that central area, taking the responsibility well, of the yeah. left-hander yeah. in that area of the court. And you could tell also that she's like facing more cross court than down the line meaning that she's hitting perhaps more shots uh, in cross-court than in parallel, as well as she, uh, Alejandro Alonso is doing, but not as much. And Alonso, Alonso has spent a lot of time in that corner, hasn't she? She's been yeah. pinned into that corner, digging out shots, defending, and also playing wider. Defending uh, Ari Sanchez Bandejas when she plays the lob to the middle. So, subtle differences, but actually, when you drill down into the detail, really significant. Ale Alonso, Alonso and... Uh, and it's a, a big innovation in the world of paddle. This is the first time that uh, this sport has been given this kind of treatment where you can, you can look. And I think it'll be useful information as well for the coaching staff and for the players themselves to analyze at the end of the match and to really figure out why they're playing, why they're winning, why they're losing, and how to go about tweaking their tactics and changing the, di the dynamics that set in within a match. Really interesting stuff. 100% agree with you. Let's have a listen what they say. Let's have a listen what they say. 
Pero si juega con el cristal atrás con Ari, la bola viene rápida. This is the score then. 11-11 have control to some extent at least of the second set. They lead three games to two, and of course they have won the first set, 6-4. This next series of three games could determine the outcome of this match. Yeah, what Willie Laos is just the coach of the 11 11 team is telling to the players, you know, as what I told you before, Ned. I mean, if Paula and Ale Alonso keep playing as they're doing now, performing at this level, unfortunately for Jensen and Ari Sanchez, it seems that there is no chance for winning this match. But you never know, because as I told you before, you know, Ale Alonso is the youngest player in, on, on court. And she's the most inexperienced player, I would say. But she's doing amazing. So Ari Sanchez, I, I would say she can't believe what she, you know the, the player she got against cross court. And she hasn't made many unforced errors, like now, for example. You know, yep. of course, I'm talking about her. She got to do a mistake. Um, well, but I think Ali has been playing very, very good this match. Unless I, my memory mistakes me, uh, Mauri. Uh, at the end of the uh, match that they won against Team Bella yesterday, when yeah. Paula Jose Maria, who is the franchise player, she's the senior player, the captain, if you like, in Team 11-11, when she was interviewed by Andrea, did she not actually say it was it was Ali Alonso who I wanted yes. on this team? And I, you know, I, I, I've identified her talent. Having said that, just as we're talking about her wonderful qualities, <laughs> Ali Alonso has probably produced her two weakest points in the last few games. OK, we better right stop talking we'll, about we'll stop, her. We'll, yeah, exactly. She's going to watch the, the <laughs> streaming in English later. Hopefully she doesn't Sorry, understand Ali. English. It's not our fault. Anyway, delicate situation here. Love 30. Now Jensen are waiting a little bit more at the back rather than... Do you remember how she was positioned before? Uh, Jose Maria, again, placement, poise, precision. Reads the movements of the opponent. She knows better than any, of course, Ari Sanchez so well. I think Paula is the fittest player on, on, on the women's circuit, man. She is like... It's like a stone. And a stone might have more fat than her. Unbelievable, man. No fat, just power, muscles. She's got a battery as well, yeah, hasn't yeah, she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just keeps running like a kind of clockwork toy, scuttling around the court. She says hello to me, you know? She says, hey, Maury, have five. And I, yeah, I have five, and I go to the physiotherapist because she's a very <laughs> powerful forehand she got. She has. <laughs> Should we go for a win again? No, it's too close to the side, to the side wheel. That's what I mean, you know? I mean, Ale Alonso is there. Even though she's not hitting the last three shots, she's there, awake, like, awaiting for the next coming shot. She's, like, very active during the game, even though she's not hitting the ball. Well, mentally, and that's very important. Mentally, she's not switching off, is she? 100%. She's that's alert. exactly what you said. And that's very important in panel, because we call it, somehow, there is one tactical part of the game, let's say, we, call, we put the player on the fridge. For example, they play every single shot to Claudia Jensen. For example, so Adi Sanchez is on the fridge. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and in this case... Oh, oh look at that from Alonso. And now they switch. That was wonderful stuff. Great yeah. shot from Claudia Jensen. Cross court there, very low execution. But Ali Alonso here with some acrobatics. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. It's this next shot, isn't it? How she gets this one back, and boom, there you go. And then Paula, that's why lefties, you know, sometimes we're treasure playing there on the right side because we can cover. Break point, I should say, for RL9. Two break points for 11 11 to defend here. He's out. He's in. No, it's in. It's close. <laughs> Uncomfortably close for Ari Sanchez, but it was in, that's all that matters. No risk from after the high lobs from oh. Ari Sanchez. Well, and now we got 3-0, they got the break that back. That is a break. Break back. That's Change a deflating balls. moment. Ali Alonso was not at her best in that game. The architect of 11-11's uh, downfall there, that was... Two, if not three, unforced errors from the youngster that cost them ultimately 
that service game. And that's a big moment in this match, perhaps not a decisive moment, but all it does is uh, it brings it back on serve. Three apiece now, and RL9 with the serve. Second set. One set to love down if you're just joining us. Great approach and transition from Paula Jose Maria, number one in the world. Oh. Brilliant, brilliant how she digs that out, Jose Maria. Wow, wow, wow. No, no, it's impressive this match. This point, at least. Well, that's what uh, where Ale Alonso is struggling with. And Ari Sanchez knows it very, very well, where she has to hit the ball in order to put Alejandra under pressure. Deep into that corner, take yeah. her onto the backhand, tight against the wall. Heavy ball, quick slicing, slipping off the, after the rebound of the back wall. Claudia Jensen with the serve. 15 love, RL9. Having just broken, looking to hold their serve and go into a lead for the second time in the second in the second set that they have to win. And again, and then again, the same tactic, just as you were describing. Yeah. Ari Sanchez taking Alonso onto the backhand in that corner. And a similar result as she failed to get it up and over the net. So 30 love. Alonso at wow. the net now. Unfortunately, that ball was out from Larry Sanchez, and that makes it 30 15. After this match, we're going to have the the number ones in the world in men. Coelho and Tapia playing against each other. Yep. And Koki Nieto and John Sand as well. RL9 will be back on the court, but uh, it'll be the men next up, and they'll be taking on Team Bella. Massive game. Wow. For the match that everyone is awaiting to watch. Well, it could be the end of the Hexagon Cup for uh, Tapia and Sand. If they lose, if yes. If they lose. Oh, that one went just out into the fencing Bye. first. So 40-15. Game point to make it 4-3. For RL9. Claudia Jensen with the serve. A little discussion with her senior partner, Adi Sanchez. But firmly in control of this service game. That one went long. And wide, I should say. Mm, okay, she got it, and they got the 4-3 up well, in the second set. Well, for the first time, some errors creeping into the game of Ale Alonso, and as things stand, it's 4-3 to RL9. Let's have a look at some of the statistics that have been emerging from the play. So far in this match, we've had 100 points in total, 55 of them have gone the way of Team 11-11, 45 to Team RL9. There's not 10 that much points in it. difference. It's not bad. The 10 points difference is like a two games, two and a half games, if you think about. But <laughs> the thing is that it's exactly the difference that we have with the first set. Yeah. The games which, by and large, over the first one and a half sets that RL9 have won, they've been tighter than the, the service games that uh, have been won by 11-11. I think 11 11 have had, have had a, a larger number of love games on their service. With the break points, uh, much better the percentage for Ari and. Uh... Claudio Jensen. Well, it's a good job. Uh, Maori, that I don't ask you to make predictions. I'm not going to ask you to make a prediction because it's very, very hard to say which way this match is going to go. But you know, 
If I got to choose, three sets would be <laughs> my answer. Vale, vamos a por este juego. Este, punto a punto, exacto. Venga, las dos, las dos juntas, juntamos las dos, ¿vale? Tirando ahí, decidiendo bien, ¿vale? Good Bravo, decisions, eh? girls, good decisions, come on. ¿Vale? That's what they said. Team RL9, Claudia Jensen and Ari Sanchez eager to get on with it, get back on the court. They have seized control for now, at least, of the second set. 11 -11. I want you together, girls. I want you playing together. And um, Ari was saying before that she was comfortably playing cross court, that she's not uncomfortable, that Ale Alonso is playing well. Doesn't mean that Ari Sanchez would be uncomfortable playing. And that's what they say. Why well, don't we go a little bit more there? to see if we can find some uh, part of the solution of this match. Well, they are one game ahead, 4-3 at the moment, and yet uh, they still have to break somehow the serve of uh, the 11-11 pairing. Just the one game in it, and uh, hold this serve, and we're all square again on four each in the second set. What a lob from the number one in the world, Ari Sanchez. Suddenly she seems to have woken up again, doesn't she, Sanchez? Full of confidence. That little wobble that uh, Claudia Jensen had at the beginning of this second set has uh, disappeared somewhat. Wow. Oh, just in. I think Ari Nothing Sanchez, you know, is a kind of a player who needs to be like uh, and again, important that one was part out. of the team, of the yeah. match, I would say. She has to feel like, and she didn't, hasn't feel this yet. That she's the important person, I would say, you know, but not important. Everyone knows that she's, you know, the number one in the world. But when she's not there, it's like half of her. It's not 80% of her. It's like half. She's all half or 150%, you know. 15 love to 11-11 on service. Yeah. <laughs> Sanchez left with absolutely nowhere to go by the power and the precision of that smash from uh, young Ali Alonso. As she moves to 30 love on her serve. She stands, Great Chiquita there. She stands a pace or two back from the service line, Ali Alonso. I've noticed that on her serve. That's a vicious shot. And there was no reply for that for Claudia Jensen. Good service game, very confident. She needed this after the last couple of games where she has been a little bit frail and for the first time lacked a little bit of concentration but this is much better from Ali Alonso. Season control, I mean, Jose Maria hasn't had to do too much. It's all been about Alonso so far this game. Great response from Alonso. Now that's where she doesn't want to be though, tucked up into that corner and that's where Ari Sanchez keeps trying to take her. No. It, Where's that no, one going? Because the, the ball hit the top of the fence. I mean, between the fence, the edge, between the fence and the glass, and the ball is out. The ball has to rebound perfectly on the whole glass, not on the just half and a half part of the... Where the each. fence meets the, the glass, yeah. Yes, thank you. Great Chiquitas from, from Claudia Jensen down the line. That was wow. beautifully disguised. What a position. Oh, oh wonderful. Yes. That's a winner. That is a pure winner. And she oh, is really she the only it. player at she the moment on this court who's capable of doing that. We've seen it three or four times. A winner out of nothing, really. She absolutely loves it. If I'm playing this match, let's say, against Paula, who is, you know, we know that her shot off the back wall is massive and she has full control of. She's got plenty of time to decide and it's one of her best shots. Perhaps I put to play that lob that deep to her unless it's quick lob what the coach was asking first to Claudia Jensen and Ari Sanchez but if you play high and deep then it's like playing high and deep lobs to Paquita Navarro be ready no racket no well, shot no racket no point <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> she sees a sometimes funny side of it. when players hit the ball very hard, you know, sometimes the, the racket like the escapes, let's say, from the, from the hand. I mean, un unlike in tennis, these, these little binders do hold the racket to the wrist normally, 
But this one just flies off her wrist and out of, yeah. well, taking her out of contention. And but, uh, but she yes, uses the, the, the safety the cord is the, that cord is, uh, is a must. You know, you have to use that. I've seen in many, uh, you know, you arrive to the paddock class and even some of the coaches. I hate it actually that, you know, they're just doing the session or you see players play without that cord. Uh, how do you call it? Yeah, cord. Yep. Yeah, safety cord. And uh, yeah, but that is a must. You know, it's a very safe. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's very important. So even though if this happens, then. <laughs> Chigoto, the El Raton. And Bale having a little look at what's happened to this uh, racket. And we continue. 15 love then, or love 15. Good reach uh, from yeah. uh, Great shot Paula, from Sanchez. but was a better shot. Oh. So love 30. Well, the first set went to four each, and it was 11-11 who found a break and then went on to clinch the set. 30 love. They want to go for 5-4. What? <laughs> Jumping from back to forward, playing a bandeja. Only Paolo Jose Maria can do that. Great shot. She knows, you know, that uh, Ale Alonso struggles a little bit either with the forehand or the backhand with the low shots off the back wall. She knows where to go. She's figured that out the longer the game has gone on, hasn't she? She's it's a weapon she's chosen to exploit more and more frequently deep into this second set against Alonso. Well, there we go. Love Five game. four. Five you four. never know what's going to happen with this set. Net. No one knows. We're going to reach it very soon. Claro, es que hay un momento, he pedido power ahora, hay un momento que vosotros os veis activas, yo lo sé, ¿vale? Porque lo sabéis, pero podéis más, ¿vale? Entonces, generáis duda a la otra, ¿no sabéis? Entonces ahí tiramos el... So, a little bit more data coming off the court that we can look at, and it's pretty revealing too, the maximum smash speed from all four of the players. And just scanning through those uh, various different figures, it is, as you'd expect, the senior pairing who are used to playing with one another on the paddle circuit, Obari Sanchez and, of course, Paula Jose Maria, who have got the hardest smash, even though, uh, in the case of Paula, Jose Maria, she is probably the smallest player out there on the court. 137 kilometers an hour is her maximum smash speed. Sanchez uh, clocking in at 125 kilometers per hour. Then Claudia Jensen at 119. And perhaps a little bit surprisingly, Ali Alonso, who is a big player, has got the uh, lowest maximum smash speed at 111. Well, they are in pole position in this set, but they still need somehow either to win a tie break or in this next game to break the serve of the T11-11 pairing. That's the task in hand. They look equal to it. They look confident. They look motivated. But if it goes to a tie break and they lose, they have lost the match. It's on a knife edge. Massive game about to shape the outcome of the second set. 5-4. Team RL9 lead, and it's 11-11 who are going to be serving when they are called forward to the court. And if they break, if they break RL9, then they have prized the second set back their way and will be heading to a super tie break in this opening match on the second day of the Hexagon Cup in Women's Group B. If, however, 11-11 manage to hold their throw here and to uh, break the next throw and then hold again, they take the second set. Or we go all the way to a super tie break. I want that. First I want that. That's you me. always want yeah. the games to go long, Three as long sets. as possible. <laughs> you love your paddle, and the more that you can get of it, the happier you are, Mary. Yes, there we go. Well, with the coach... Uh, Ferrari was just asking to the players, actually, it's quite hard to ask this to, to a player, but I mean, hard for the motion part of the game because she was asking to um, Claudia, um, Claudia Jensen to play down to Paula Jose Maria's forehand down to her body, which means that, was in. that the player will have to hit 
Paula will have to hit more shots to Ari Sanchez. Wow, what a recover. Yeah. Not enough. Paula is there. 30 love. I love because Paula <laughs> is smiling all the time, you know. What do you make of those maximum smash speed? Uh, maximum smash speeds there. Paula Jose Maria significantly the strongest smash of all four players here. Well, I would say it's actually one of the biggest smashes in the world in the female side. Delicate shot there. She comes from tennis. Alonso deep and long. Paula Jose Maria yeah. comes from tennis. She's been taking panel very seriously since I don't know the last five six years. Not much more. So what it means, you know, that the paddle is still growing and even tennis players who haven't started playing paddle since they were five or six years old, you know, that can still reach in a very high level into the, this beautiful sport. Alonso knew where that one was going oh, and read that quick. really well. She was ready at the net with the backhand. <laughs> and that was a big point. Ali Alonso, man. Top 23, 24 in the world, I would say, nowadays. Pair number 13, 14 in the world. But, man, she looks like she's top four in the world, you know. He's competing against Ari Sanchez cross court without any problem at the moment. Oh, a little gonna bit reach of good it? Yes, yeah, she did. Goes the second one. She's going to reach it. No. Oh. You got to be kidding me. Jose Maria keeps oh. it in. Goes oh, long. Oh, unfortunately, that was out. Just. Just out. Well, what a letter. Ali Alonso, a... the future of paddle look at, today. Look at this. <laughs> All over the court. Jose Maria there. That's the shot. It's almost there. It's almost a winner. But in the end, it costs her a point. If she touched the post, then this... It's over. Yeah? Something happened there. Did the ball touch the, what? The, the light? Something, I guess. Well, 5-0. 5 all. Anyway. Five all. Not quite sure what happened there. But they've closed it out. They've held serve. Uh, we're at five apiece in the second set. And again, it's a tight match. So that's a real feature of all four encounters yesterday. Very little. Very little in any of them, really, to separate the two pairings on court at any given time. Very mature game from the youngest yeah. player, Alejandra Alonso. I'll not get tired of saying her name because it's the future today. 17 years old, I can't believe how good she's playing at the moment with uh, all her decisions. Well, what's been impressive from both the teenagers, from Claudia Jensen as well, is that both of them, at certain points in this match, have suffered from a little dip in form, and they've recovered. Oh, look at that! Through what's the legs that? there, from Jose Maria. But a winner from Jensen. 15 all. Still smiling, Paulita. Paulita Dinamita. Dynamite. <laughs> yeah, that's how we call it. We call her Dynamite. This doesn't stop. It's like a dynamic. Oh, nice shot there. Yeah, that's what I mean. She's Invented playing very mature, very clever. It doesn't really seem to be a, a, a junior playing on court, you know? Playing a white team, playing a lot at the right moment. Being perseverant in every single shot because she knows that she's playing with a lefty player. You know, and this is the mistake that you can do. Okay, Paula will do a mistake. She will try to go. Well, it makes sense. 30-15. Claudia Jensen in firm control of uh, those exchanges between her and Jose Maria. And it was only a matter of time before she forced the error from Jose Maria. Slips into the lead here on her service game. 30-15. To make it 6-5. And again, and again, and again. An amazing backhand shot. I would play to her forehand if I were there. <laughs> I would not play to the backhand anymore of Claudia Jensen. That beautiful backhand shot down to the siphons. Oh, 
Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Oh, a little bit too much on that, and it's an error. It's oh. out, and it's 6-5 to RL9. And once again, it's down to 11-11 this time to stay in the second set on their serve. <laughs> Right, let's have a little listen in what Willy uh, Laos is telling his chances. Exactly. Well, Willie is asking to the players, you know, uh, why don't we play more to the middle? Because we know that Ari Sanchez's backhand is very good, so that's why we don't play to that corner match. But we're playing open, more open to the backhand of Claudia Jensen, because that's what I just said before, you know. If I were them, I would have played now, at least, to uh, Claudia Jensen's backhand, because she got he Vamos says, a hot hand 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 right now bien. in this side with the backhand. Yeah, but if they play yeah, Paula yeah, and, yeah, and, and uh, they play to the middle, the bola, they will avoid the backhands of the opponents. And Marcela Ferrari. Perfecto. Yo quiero que cuando subamos. Clau, cuando cuando digo moverse, no digo que hagamos el globo nos metamos, vale. Yo cuando digo moverse es que el cuerpo esté atento a poder cambiar, a tirarle al paralelo, a lo que quiera. Still asking for the same thing, like uh, moving after each time, not only when they are on the play, you know, when they play the lot, doesn't mean that you have to go forward or backwards. Just move, stay on the game, stay active. Well, a key moment in the second set, a key moment in the match now as 11-11 have to defend their serve and take this to a tie break at the end of set two. If they don't, then Team RL9, who have mostly throughout the course of the second set been in control, just the margins have been fine, but they have been perhaps the more dynamic and the more controlled pairing. Well, they will have squared the match. Either way, in the next few minutes, in the next few exchanges, we'll know which way this is going to go. Is it going to be victory for Team 11-11 for the second time in two days? and thereby qualifying them for the weekend action on Saturday, or will RL9 be taking it to a super tie-break? The only thing I know, Ned, at this point, is that we're going to have a tie-break, or a tie-break or a super tie-break, for sure. Yeah. There is no chance to escape. That's true. So it could be two super tie-breaks, oh, I mean, sorry, a two tie-breaks. Tie and then a super tie-break. Yeah. Or it or could be just a tie-break. A tie-break, yeah, exactly. Or no tie-break at all. No. Yep. <laughs> Why? Oh no, you're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. The, the most. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is it tie for sure? Uh, sorry. No, it's not. No. <laughs> it's a super tie -break. If RL9 win this match, this yeah. game, they've won the second set. Yes, so and we're going to have a super tie break. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep it like that. <laughs> Guys, don't get lost. It's yes, been a long couple yeah, of days. Forget about us. It's been a long. <laughs> well, forget about me, Mary. You yeah. were spot on. You were nah, dead right. No <laughs> if the second set goes the way. Of <laughs> they're straight to a super tie break <laughs> instead of a third set. <laughs> right. 50 no, there's the port and one now. What a shot, man. At what at what point? The thing is that that's why that's why the motivation and the smiling that the Ferrari was asking to her players, it's important. Paula Casimaria is that kind of players. That she's losing, winning, or playing a tie break because she's you know, she's confident. And that's why she can miss a shot, yeah, but usually she gets the ball in. And even though if it's a very tough moment of the match, that's why she's number one in the world. So, 30-15 to 11-11. Make Amazing. that 30 all. Well, this is, a huge, this is a huge point coming yeah. up now, isn't yeah. it? A massive point. They take a little moment. Jensen knows the importance of this one. If it goes the way of RL9, then they'll have two break points. Set points. Reach for that, Alonso, on the stretch. And again, almost taking it from behind her head. No, no, Ale Alonso, man, has been amazing player since the beginning of the match. 
Oh, do you see? Well, she wrote her luck. She had her one go her way a little bit earlier and then went straight into the top of the net. And now we do have two set points for RL9 to take it, as you rightly said, to a super tie break. Oh, it doesn't care. <laughs> what is that? Set point, what is that? Goal the point now? That doesn't matter. I will go for a winner. Set point one defended. Still set point, though, on the golden point. So still a chance. Still a chance for RL9 to wrap this up without the second set going to a tie break. Good serve from Alonso. Sets up the point nicely, the early exchanges. Very high lob, just in. And a similarly high lob. Great block. Uh, they forgot that it's a golden point? <laughs> or what? It's an amazing point they're playing at the moment. It's not, it's not conservative, is it? It's not at all. Look Down at that. the middle from Sanchez. She got it. A bandeja, a flatter bandeja. And down the there we go, Very two set points shot. defended. Oh. Two set points defended. It's six each in the second set. Somehow they have got themselves out of jail there, Team 11 11. They're still alive in this second set. But we go to a tie break. Relief tie break, all tie round. Break, tie breaks. That was some rally, wasn't it? Uh, to it would be the on first time if we get this tie break and, for example, Ari Sanchez and um, Claudia Jensen win. It's going to be the first time in this event that we have two tiebreaks in a row. A tiebreak and then a tiebreak. Yes, tiebreak and a super tiebreak. <laughs> right, first to seven by two clear points. <gasps> oh, two rackets on that one. Great reflexes. Almost two rackets of them from Team 11-11 oh. as well. Chaos at the net. They can't get this one away. Great defense from Sanchez. Digs that one out. As the rally stabilizes again. We wait for the next change in the dynamic maybe that's it brilliantly deep there from Sanchez forces Alonso to go very high and that wow. was in that was in wow oh, and an unforced error there for Alonso está bien está bien Paulita says it's good it's good good mistake well done doesn't matter so Claudia Jensen and Ari Sanchez 1-0 up as the tiebreak gets underway. First to seven by two clear points. Paola keeping the spirits up from Ali Alonso, not blaming her, encouraging her, win the game. Un puntito, un puntito, one of these two. Un punto, one well, point. It would have been a mini break, wouldn't it? Oh, oh that's a winner, no that's way. a winner. Yeah, there she nods. That's how you do it. What a way to cover the middle of the net, of the court. It's, it's fantastic. Fantastic coverage. Yeah, fantastic from the moment that left her forward. racket, that was, that was always going to win that point. She serves again. Win it again. Yes, she did. Of course she will. It's a shot of the back wall. Paula Casamaria's shot. And Two she thought, one. She thought that was in, Jensen. She's surprised to see that one go long, but it was perfectly judged by Jose Maria, who holds serve twice. 11 11 lead 2 1 now. Still with throw, no mini break so far. Paolo Casemaria is just playing slightly behind the line of uh, Ali Alonso in order to get a little bit more court coverage. Oh, or Ali <laughs> will be blocking. That's exactly what they're looking for, and the tactic has been working very well. And again, Paola to the corner. Sticks at the tactic. This time Alonso with the smash. A little bit short. Deep from Jose Maria. Well, oh, lovely shot. Lovely shot. 
still with serve then. Two they should piece. call the inventor of paddle to Enrique Corcuera and tell him, why did you put this fence? <laughs> and so he will tell the story I told in the beginning of the match. Yes, yep. the perfect amount of power into that shot that the ball dies slightly just before the ball reaches the side fence. Claudia Jensen smiling and apologizing <laughs> at the same time. 2-2. Two, two. Alonso under real pressure on those two shots, but equal to it. And again, she has to reach behind her into that corner. And again, they're trying to exploit that part oh, of the court. And they man. get it. And Ari Sanchez. Now do you understand why Ari Sanchez and Paula Jose Maria are number ones in the world? Can you imagine both of them playing together? Yeah. Well, that's what happens to all of the rest of the players who are competing against them. It's a machine, both of them. So it's incumbent upon the pairing from 11-11 and uh, Ale Alonso to hold serve twice now because still we await the first mini break in this tie break. There'll be a change of ends at the end of this point after six points played. Amazing. Very nearly two hours long, this game, this match. OK, so that Close. mistake um, that she's done is usual. When you've done it seven times and it worked six, then, you know, if you win seven <laughs> for six points out of seven, then you're going to go for it. So a swig of water, towel the racket down. They cannot sit the down course. in these changes because is a Marcelo Ferrari just standing back and watching yes. the two players. Coaches cannot involved. talk. The coaches cannot talk. Are not allowed to talk. I think during this change ends. Uh, do it. That's by regulation. They do it. it. Coaches. Yes, yeah. they do it like this. Hey, <laughs> just play loves down the line. Smile, Claudia. Smile. What does she want there? She's a little twitch there, just maybe blowing a bit of air on those fingers just to dry them off as they grip yes. the racket and we get going again. Still with Alonso on the serve, still with 11-11 on serve. Yeah. Well played, uh, Ali Alonso. She I'm in. opted to go for placement rather than power there is the right option. But I would say that goes down as an unforced error from Sanchez. Paula has been playing fantastically well. Um, but I would say that the, the, the player of the match would be uh, uh, Alejandra, just because he, she's much younger and because she's been doing the perfect match. No! Was that in? No. Just out. Oh. Just out. I think it <laughs> I just hit the fence before it hit the deck. By the way, the uh, score is four apiece, and we're still with serve, still awaiting the first mini break. Sanchez with the serve. Hey, if they get this point, Paula and Alejandra, it would be 5 4 with the serve to win the, the match. So it's very important for Ari. Eight points have gone with serve so far in this tie break. That was oh, a master a shot. That was was it a forehand volley? It's a master forehand volley from Ari Sanchez cross court again to Alejandra, saving that momentum that they were a little bit under pressure. And the series continues. Four five. Little lamp for Sarah from uh, Claudia Jen said that it's that's what I mean. It's unnecessary to play that deep the lob when you play against Paula Jose Maria, just because you know that her best shot is going to be the shot of the Paguala. So if you give her more time available to hit that high forehand of the Paguala, she's going to. I mean, what I mean is that her forehand of the Paguala is better than her bandeja. 
So, which lob would you play to her? Oh, that was brilliant from Sanchez. Six five is the match point. Match point to Paolo so, Jose Maria and Alejandro Alonso, 11 11 team. RL9 with match point. RL9, sorry, 11-11 uh, uh, with match point, but RL9 with the serve. Claudia Jensen has to win this point or it's all cheers, over. And there Claudia, we go. Cheers. <laughs> there you have your team. And and that's how already. quickly it can happen. Two wins in two days for team 11-11. And the margins in that second set <laughs> were so slight. In many ways, Maori, they were the second best team. Uh, but somehow they've done enough to win in the tiebreak. And by taking the second set, they have won the match by two sets to love. And they are through into the semi-finals, taking control of women's Group B yes. in the uh, Hexagon Cup. And RL9 are going to have to play again tomorrow. They're going to have to win the match and they're going to have to hope that uh, on countback, and we'll get into that tomorrow, they've got enough points in the bag to progress. But Team 11-11 and the best player in the world, Paula Jose Maria, is through to the weekend's action. And Marcella Ferrari congratulates her charges in 11-11, have somehow done it. Nerveless stuff in the end. And disappointing, I think, that Claudia Jensen finds herself on the losing team. She looks a bit crestfallen at the end there as that winning point uh, just went the way of 11-11. They came very close to taking that into a super tie break and forcing forcing them into uh, uh, conceding the second set. There's Claudia Jensen, played her part admirably, occasionally brilliantly in defeat there for Team RL9. So there's the match summary, 76 points won, uh, nine points more in the end than uh, the beaten opponents. Ali Sanchez and Claudia Jensen. But other than that, the statistics, not too different, really. And as a result, uh, the margins were slight. And the time elapsed since they started the match, two hours and 40 seconds. Yeah, I actually was talking before the match and I said, girls, listen, don't play longer than two hours, please. Yeah, and that's actually <laughs> what they did. Fantastic. Two hours match, two sets. 6476 in a tie wreck for Team 11 11. Paula Jose Maria and Alejandro Alonso making history in this fantastic Hexagon Cup first edition 2024. Well, hopefully, uh, very shortly, we will uh, have a bit of reaction from court side. Yes. And uh, I believe that the winning pair of Jose Maria and Alonso are ready to share their thoughts about how they got the match won with Andrea. Bueno, chicas, sin duda era uno de los partidos más esperados de la jornada. Paula, empiezo contigo porque había mucha expectación por veros a las número uno del mundo en vez de al lado de la pista, una frente a la otra. Listen, Primero, ¿cómo has vivido esa situación? Que no sé, me imagino que muy cómoda no debe ser. Sí, eh, con Ari hacíamos broma antes del partido porque era un poco raro estar las dos peloteando ¿no? con la compañera enfrente cuando estábamos calentando. Y, y eh, yo creo para todos los espectadores era un partido pues, que yo me imagino que, que tendríais ganas. Eh, para nosotras es un poco raro porque siempre estamos al lado. Eh, pero bueno, también sabemos que, que esto eh, puede pasar, que, que es así. Y yo creo que las dos lo hemos disfrutado, eh, jugando con, yo con Ale y Ari con Claudia, que bueno, pues son el futuro del pádel, como podéis ver todos. Así que creo que ha sido un gran partido y espero que tal como nosotras lo disfrutamos, ellas también y, y toda la gente que ha venido. Lo estaba diciendo Paula, hoy ya más cómoda, ¿no? Al final esto va a ser un de menos a más y suelta y suelta. Sí, la verdad que hoy mucho mejor, menos nervios. La verdad que Paula lo pone muy fácil porque te anima un montón dentro de la pista, así que nada, la verdad que muy contentas y a seguir, a seguir. Paula, en tu caso no va a haber venganza contra... No puede haber revancha con Ari, no puede haber revancha. No, eh, por ahora no va a haber revancha y esperemos que por tiempo no la haya. Así que bueno, eh, por ahora me he llevado yo esta y a ver la próxima. Y sumando puntitos para el equipo además, ¿eh? El doble victoria. Sí, 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 el equipo va bien, así que ya por hoy terminamos y mañana más eh, vamos todos con el 11-11. Muy bien, chicas, muchísimas gracias. Fuerte el aplauso para las primeras ganadoras de la tarde. I mean, she was uh, like joking in the beginning of the day, you know, today morning with Ari Sanchez, her current partner. 
about this match and how it's going to be, how they're going to play, which shots they're going to play and that stuff. And it was very fun, you know, they sent them. But then when they jump on court, there was no more fun. They just to try to beat each other. Uh, Ari Sanchez has beat her in the last uh, few matches, but now she had this chance to play with Ali Alonso and win uh, and beat her for, for the fourth time in the Padre career. And um, the young player said as well that, you know, for her playing with Paolo Jose Maria is, uh, is a beautiful opportunity. And to compete for the 11-11 team in this hexagon camp is a pleasure. Well, there they are, there the, the winning duo for 11-11. Uh, uh, and tell like, finalist. I tell you what, uh, some of the happiest people at the Hexagon Cup here will be Fede Cingotto and uh, Lucio Capra, who are the 11-11 men's players, because they lost their opening yeah, match yesterday. Uh, yesterday. And so the fact that uh, their female counterparts have already qualified for the semi-final, the first pairing to qualify for the semi-final, that's great news for them in their overall hopes. They still the have a chance, you know, they have they to do. compete then against uh, Stupa 2 and Alex Reese is going to be a very tough match as well. But I don't know, you know, this is surprising me. Many of these uh, matches like yesterday, uh, Juan Martin Diaz, now yeah. these two girls. I mean, I think it's a fantastic event that is completely unpredictable results. All right, then, that was the first of four live matches that we've got for you today. It went the way of 11 and 11, and it was a thing of beauty. Let's relive some of the better moments from the opening match. Well, terrific stuff, another really close tussle and uh, an emphatic result in the end in terms of the standings in the Group B for the women for Team 11-11. This is how things stand now. Paula Jose Maria and Ale Alonso of Team 11-11 have qualified for the semi-final. One of two teams who will eventually make it out of Group B, one of either RL9 or Team Bella will therefore be eliminated and won't make it through to the semi-final. But which will it be? They face each other tomorrow in what will be a winner-takes-all match, because it can't be drawn 
<laughs> so one of them is going to have to win, and uh, whichever does will be the second team to emerge from Group B, where we know already that 11-11 will uh, be going forward as group winners, in fact, uh, to the semi-final. Now then, uh, it is overall the Hexagon Cup across all three categories. So the men, the women, and the next generation, a points competition. And uh, the men, the women, and the next generation pairings all score points depending on how far through that competition they get. Even for being eliminated in the group phase, you get seven points. A beaten semi-finalist gets 15. The runner-up overall gets 18 in the final and the champion gets 26. So not until we know how far each of the three pairings for each team go in the competition will we know the ultimate uh, outcome of the Hexagon Cup and that won't be known until Sunday. Well, I hope that makes sense. Uh, what is much clearer, though, is today's fixtures. We've had one of four matches already resolved. Um, team 11 and 11, well, it's not quite right, actually. 11 and 11 were the two to love winners. RL9, it's not that way around, uh, being eliminated and losing, losing their match to love. Uh, but next up, we've got the Group A men and RL9's men are back in action and they need a win, otherwise they will be eliminated. Uh, they're next on against Team Bella. Then we've got the Group A women, Hexagon against Advantage, and uh, the men in Group A uh, make up the last of the uh, live matches we've got in the Hexagon Cup on day two. So next up, this is the clash. And uh, John Santh and August Tapia were beaten late on last night, close to midnight actually, or half 11 by the time we actually finished, I think it was. Paquita Navarro and Juan Martin beat uh, John Santh and August Tapia. That means that RL9 have to win this match against Team Bella, making their debut at the Hexagon Cup. Uh, Arturo uh, Cuello of Spain and Jorge Nieto, uh, also of Spain. So, the stakes could hardly be bigger for RL9, having just seen their women lose their opening match. Robert Lewandowski's team uh, will be relying on the men to get this uh, encounter won, otherwise they will be eliminated at the group stage, having lost, having played two and lost two. Here are the RL9 pairing. On the left, you've got uh, John Sanz, and on the right, the Argentinian player, Albus Tapia. And Mauri, this is a very big moment for these players uh, because having lost their opening match, they simply have to win now, otherwise yes. they'll be going home. Well, actually, we could say that Tapia is used to win. He's very used to win the number one in the world, and uh, John Sant was a little bit yesterday. I think he couldn't really get on the rhythm of the court. Of, I don't know, I don't know, but also he had Juan Martin Diaz in front who played. I don't know, the, the, the match of his life yesterday at some point, who together with Paquito Navarro, complicated them. But let's see now, because now they're going to play against Arturo Coelho, who is a very powerful player, and number one in the world as well, together with uh, Agustin Tapia, and Coqui Nieto. But, you know, it's like, uh, perhaps now, they kind of wake up and activate them, you know, in, and start playing better than what they did yesterday. I don't really know, but <laughs> if they play as they did yesterday, and Arturo Coelho and Coquinieto do their job. If John and Agus could have a very tough uh, time on court. But I think that, you know, Agus Tapia has much more to demonstrate as well as John Sam. There, here they come. For the first time ever in history here at the Hexagon Cup, Coqui Nieto and the king of Padre Mr. Arturo Coelho. A massive boy, and a little boy, on court of this purple heart of Madrid Arena. So there he is, there uh, on the left-hand side, that is Coqui Nieto of Team Bella, and the far, by far the taller man, the 21-year-old Arturo Cuello, the normal partner of Agos Tapia, against whom he is lining up, is the taller of the two, the king of Pado. And the interesting thing is, I think I'm right in saying, correct me if I'm wrong, that John Sanz is the usual partner also of, of Coquinieto. Coquinieto. So yes, of both Coquinieto. these players are playing against their regular partners on the circuit. 100%. So I think it, uh, I think they might have been the, like messing around a little bit in the morning as uh, Adi Sanchez and Paulo Casemaria did. Of course, uh, I saw them training today morning. I think Arturo Coelho didn't want to give any piece of advantage 
took his uh, current partner, August Tapia and John San. So he came, uh, Arturo came today morning. I saw him and I was with him today with uh, his coach, uh, Gustavo Prato. I saw him on court training a little bit just to get, you know, confidence on this new court for them. A giant figure of Cuello, by far the tallest <laughs> player. They need a chair, the other ones need a chair to stand on. That's a quick word with his uh, regular Seguimos playing partner, Alvaro Tapia. As they uh, come around the umpire to receive their final instructions. And pretty soon that famous coin now is going to be tossed in the air. And uh, they will go to their respective sides to the ball. And then get the second match underway. First of the matches today, just over two hours in length. An absolute nail bite. Very little between the two first teams. In women's group B. Gokinieto, 25 years of age, Madrid born. Here he is. So oh, well, just looking out of our shot. There's Cuello, also a Spaniard. The youngest ever world number one, I think I'm right to turn. <laughs> I think. Oh man, the word just happened. I think it was, you know. Is it tails or names? How to say? Tails or names? Heads or tails? Huh? Heads, heads he or tails? Head or tails. And they did it with a, uh, with a coin of two euros. You know, see here in Spain we say oh, the two, the number two up or the number two down. Yeah, so I think Tapia said the number two up and Cole said, okay, number two down. And actually I think that the, the coin was with the number two down, so Coelho wins, but Tapia took the coin from the floor and said there, two, number two up. And it was like, what, what? What did he do? <laughs> Tapi was like a kind of a joking, but anyways, he took the advantage, and I think they're gonna serve first. And it is an advantage to take the first serve in the first set. Keep if you can your nose in front and the score. Yeah, well, it depends. You know, it depends. It's a quite a tactical part of uh, of the game. You know, we're gonna talk about that later. But now it's time to talk about John Sanz. Why not rank number twenty-two? The age of 23 or so, right, right side player, left handed player. Uh, he's been partnering with Mr. Koki Nieto for the last year, I would say like the last six, seven months. They've been playing together, they are performing very well uh, in the circuit. And now he is with Arus Tapia. This, uh, this is the, the, the crazy thing about Padre, you know, that sometimes you see two players and say, wow, these two players are going to smash it. And actually, it don't work for many reasons, God knows why. It could be for the tactical point of view, it could be because they don't match together for, I don't know, emotionally, but tactically. One, when one is playing good, the other one is not. Now we go, Agustin Tapia, El Mozart, the Mozart from <laughs> Catamarca, Argentina. Why the is he known as the Mozart of Paddle? The Mozart. He produces he's a, music he's on the court. He's a director. Who's oh, a director? The director of the, of the circuit, being the number one in the world. The most, ex the, the less experienced, but with the most experienced players he played in the last four years: Sandy Gutierrez, Fernando Velasteguin, Pablo Lima, who is in the Spanish comment um, commentating in the Spanish language just ne next just to next us. Just next door to us, yeah. Yes, uh, with Juan Martin Diaz, with yeah. Mario Andrini. No, that's uh, just for training. But you know, this, they've been playing for a long time in a, in a big uh, circuit. So there's, uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, that's Coqui Nieto, who we're getting a good look at, the 25-year-old Madrid-born Spaniard, paired with uh, John Sanz, described their partnership in the press, I was reading an article in La Marca, as two normal kids, but we are electric and passionate when we play together. And uh, Sanz, apparently, when he was first partnered with Coqui Nieto, said that Coqui Nieto had been his paddle crush. <laughs> Which is a strange way of describing it. Well, but, uh, yes. use, the, use the English word in the Spanish interview, el crush. El crush. El crush. Okay, well, that's it. I think it's, um, you know, Koki is a very perseverant player. He's a very consistent, very tactical. Even though he plays on the left side, he's not a tall and powerful player, but he's playing with a lefty player and perhaps the most powerful player we've ever seen in the history of paddle. He's like the new version of Juan Martin Diaz, I would say, you know, with a very, with all reflex, very quick. And he's uh, like uh, creating a new way of playing paddle, this boy. Uh, you know, very aggressive, going forward, the fitness. 
Well, Co Coyo, Coyo, Coyo. <laughs> I'm going to run him in. Arto Coyo and Tapia have won 14 titles on the circuit in 2023, in last year. Yeah, and I think they were like, I don't know, about like eight or nine in a row. Yes, like, they did. Between February and June, they yeah. won the first nine. Man, there was no, they couldn't find, no one could find a way of beating them, you know? That's Tupa, Dineno, uh, Lebron, Galan, I don't know, name it. You know, it was uh, Paquito, Momo so. Gonzalez, everyone changing pairs, trying to find the right solution to beat some of those beasts, paddle beasts. And I remember talking to you, Mari, a week or so ago while you were still on the beach in Argentina, <laughs> finessing your preparation for this tournament. Yes. And uh, I asked you, on paper, which are the two best teams in the men's category? And I put a little star next to RL9 and Team, uh, and team Bea. Bella, I should say. You said this, in, in theory, this could be the best match. Yes. Yeah, in theory, in theory, at least, at least, this is the match that everyone is awaiting to watch. Everyone is waiting to see this match. It's like, man, it's Arturo Coelho and Agustin Tapia on court against each other. And also Koki Nieto and John Sun. So here, they are not only playing for the prize money, which is massive, 1 million euros for the team, but also they're playing for the pride of who is going to win this match, because then they're going to be the whole year long messing around with the partner, you know? <laughs> I Don't forget, I beat you in the Hexagon Cup. Well, not only that, for um, Arturo Coelho and Koki Nieto, they can actually send their respective playing partners out of the competition. Today. Which means, actually, them going through the semi-finals. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Even if they lo if they win now and they lose tomorrow, yes. they still have the chance, or not. But I don't know. <laughs> I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, because if, if there is one player who loses two matches, exactly. No As we just saw it. Yes, exactly. That's right. So, winner takes it all. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to hear Mr. Gustavo Prato, one of the most experienced. He used to be top four in the world, the old era of paddle. Um, he said uh, to Arturo, hey, stop playing high lobs to both of them to the middle so they can play a bandeja instead of uh, powerful smashes because the ball is quite heavy, as we said before. They cannot hit the ball very hard all the time. So exactly, they hit the ball out, then, then we see what happens. But at the moment, just we can play high lobs and go to attack for their bandejas. And, you know, Arturo, when you play against Arturo, it's not, you're not playing against the wall. You're playing against the, the biggest wall in the world. There we have uh, these two players now smiling, even though they know they, they are a little bit under pressure now because their team is, you know, yeah, eliminated <sighs> <laughs> They're messing around a little bit with, uh, with the opponents. Eh? En principio metiéndola, si sí puede ser. Sí. <laughs> I can't believe. How do you start this match? And Maxi Gravi, the coach, said, well, at least playing a little bueno, bit better than yesterday and just getting the ball in. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> just if you get the ball in, at least it's a massive hey, advantage. That would be a good Arturo start. Well, man, just don't stick it in the net yesterday. Para yeah. eh? It was a slow start from them yesterday. And August Tapia against uh, uh, Navarro and Juan Martín looked a little bit, uh, almost like he wasn't quite in the game mentally, not quite in the right space yesterday. This is, you know, when you are not, when you're not the favorite, you relax a little bit, you know? So it's like, that's why in paddle, it's very simple to say, hey, listen, I want to play against you, that you are a much better player. Why? Why? Because you're not going to be under pressure because you're going to play against Sanguine, who should beat you. That's why I dare you to play with people of your level, because in Pala happens a lot, you know, that people want to play against others who are much better than them. Relax well, and play on. a bandeja. Sorry, Mary, watching on from the Team Bella bench, just in the row behind the front row there, you can see Bea Gonzalez and Claudia Fernandez, who will yes. be hoping beyond hope that uh, the men can get this done here and get a win under their belts for Team Bella. And, to, and as you say, if they do that, they will be securing their place. Um, sorry. Um, they will be securing their place in the, uh, in, the next comp in the next round of the competition for Team yeah, Bella. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to, to, to tell you that, you know, if they don't win yeah. now, 
they will very struggle the team itself, you know, because they just uh, lost Ari Sanchez and Claudio mm. Jensen. RL9 you're talking about now. Exactly, yes, yeah, exactly. the pressure is huge on Team RL9 just generally. Oh. What? <laughs> that is then a smash from the back. And what did you just do, Arturo Coelho? Well, he's made a point against uh, August Tapia there, hasn't he? Tying him up. You relax and enjoy this because this is going to be an amazing match. I'm just telling you right now. Yeto with a violent portrait. Hey, the first shot, and all the team is already outside, shouting, cheering. Vamos, bien. Oh. Well done. Bang and up and over. <laughs> Tapia has received already three powerful shots in the last one and a half minutes. Yeah. Coelho serves to his uh, regular partner, August Tapia. Tapia gets another ball to dig out there. Sands lofts one up. Tapia again off the back wall. Going to be out. And out. Well, they're going to play, as you can imagine, Ned. You don't have to be a master to, re to realize that they're going to play many lofts to Coqui Nieto. They're not going to play many lofts to uh, Arturo Coelho. No. Unless this kind of loss, <laughs> where the ball goes very high. It's terrifying sight, isn't it? Seeing Coelho stretch. Yeah, but in this court, perhaps, as it's a little bit slower, when the lob is very good, but you know that Arturo has the ability to also play that kick back there to the side fence, to kick the ball out, to play hard down the line. So he got so many variations, putting you under pressure if you play a lob to him, you know? Whether well, you play the lob to Coquinier, to Coquinier, to we have the kick bandeja. That's it. One thing, but... Well, it's a business-like start for Team Bella, taking the first service game pretty comfortably, actually. Tapia and Sanz just able to prize one point their way, but on the end of a bit of a pummeling in that opening service game from the massive frame of Arturo Coelho. Tapia in orange, he's not hot, uh, Dutch, huh? Uh, he's not Dutch, he's no. Not Dutch. He's Argentinian. He's the one Argentinian in, the, in this court today. All of the other players are Spanish in this particular match. Ooh, that well, was out. struggling with their back will boast a little bit. Just a bit long. Hasn't quite found the range of the court yet. Yeah, Chap uh, Tapi just also mistake with that shot. Wow. 30 love. I'll just tell you that Tapia and, and, and John are just at least what, what I see now, they're playing better than yesterday. Uh, they're playing slightly more comfortable, just perhaps as well because Arturo and Koki have made some little errors that Juan Martín and Paquito didn't yesterday. Yeah, Nav Navarro and Martín just came flying at them in the opening games yesterday. They had no choice. Well, that was it. That was a, a service game in the blink of an eye. That happened. Well, can't have taken much more than about a minute and a half, and it was done. One yeah. all. Kids are playing, you know. Kids are having some fun, and Beautiful. they can do this kind of shot, you know yeah. what I mean? Beautiful. So they can make like three, four unforced errors in a row, but then they come back with such an amazing skills that only them can just imagine. it now and put in uh, John Santh slightly closer to the net in order to uh, give Tapia to play more shots in order to put him in a more comfortable position because Tapia likes playing I mean li Tapia likes being in the match he doesn't like to be on the fridge and so to do that you need uh, John Santh just to go and close the angle like he's doing right now You see, uh, John is just going slightly one or two steps before Tapia. Oh. Longest rally of the match so far. Beautiful bandeja down the line. Smash from there. Wow. <laughs> oh. Unbelievable shot. 
Tapia, Fuck error. Fucking Yeto, very quick okay. lob. Didn't allow Tapia to prepare the smash. You know, when big smashers get a quick lob, they struggle a little bit because the smash, you need time in order to prepare the racket back and push forward with, a pa with power. But Tapia didn't have the power. Uh, sorry, the time, so the power. Beautifully judged there from, uh, from Coelho. Yeah. That was not obvious to and, the naked and, eye. And even less from that height. You yeah. know? He's watching like a, from the two meters height. The Let it go long. 40-15 on their serve. A massive oh smash. Goodness. And uh, just raw power doing the damage there. And another very straightforward hold of throw. So 2-1 at the moment to Team Bella RL9. With work to do in so many set. Well, the uh, arena here in Madrid starting to fill up. People piling out of the offices. We're just a, a kilometer or so out of the center of Madrid. And this crowd will uh, fill up throughout the afternoon. Now, some VIPs have made their way, including the Colombian racing driver, the seven-time Formula One race winner, Juan Pablo Montoya, who's here, I believe. Estamos aquí con Juan Pablo Montoya, piloto de automovilismo, ex piloto de Fórmula 1. Juan Pablo, nosotros estamos de aquí en España muy acostumbrados a ver a Carlos Sainz, a Fernando Alonso, que están locos por el pádel, pero me ha dicho un pajarito que tu caso es lo mismo, que hay mucha enfermedad de pádel. Sí, nos encanta el pádel, lo juego mucho, lo juego todo el tiempo, la verdad, me encanta, pero no, no, participo en pádel, después de ver esto uno participa, uno no puede decir que juega pádel. Bueno, esto tú y cualquiera, Juan Pablo. Oye, ¿tenéis algún favorito aquí en la familia? No, yo creo que estamos yendo por el equipo por, por, por la gente de Puerto Rico. <risas> el equipo de Puerto Rico, por lo menos. Muy bien, pues que disfrutéis del Dale, partido. Gracias. gracias. Formula One driver enjoying paddle here at the Hexagon Cup. He says, I thought that I played paddle, but no, I would say I participate in paddle because when I see these guys playing, that means playing paddle. There is a big difference between the happy amateurs, and Pablo Montoya included, and the pros who are putting on a show here at the Hexagon Cup. Team Bella with their noses in front in the opening match today for the men. We're in men's group A, and Coelho and Nieto are on serve, 2-1 up in the opening phase of the first set in this intriguing and already very, very highly Skillful encounter, highly rated players, all four of them used to each other who know each other's games inside out. Two oh. circuit pairings playing split up and pairing opposite one another and against one another. John Sands now for Team RL9 with the serve. The high loves that the coach was asking about in the beginning of the match. They know the ball is a little bit heavy. Oh. So that transition from back to forward after the law has been played, I think will be, for the tactical point of view, for the both pairs, a good tactic to follow. If you're just joining us, it's a three-set encounter, although the third set will go to a super tie-break, if required. Win the first two sets, and the match is won. This is the last of the round robin games for the pair in blue, Team Bella. Oh, sorry, for the pair in orange, I should say, Santh and uh, Tapia. And they need to win. Wonderful rally, this one. Arturo is running around the court, but there was Koki playing the whole point. 30 love for RL9. And so far, in the opening four games of this first set, None of the service games have been threatened yet. Yet to have a break point. Oh, what a vibra. Look how uh, Tapia knows his partner, you know? He's gonna reach that? No way! Oh! Almost there from outside the corner. Arturo Coelho try with his wrist. And the backhand shot behind his back, I would say. Gets a racket on it. Can't quite find the angle to get the ball back into play there. Look, look at that. Oh, man, if he makes that happen, that would be the highlight of the highlight. 
40 love instead, though. Second serve. Coquinieto to receive from John Sanz. Oh, oof. What a volley. He missed that volley, John Sanz. Went long. But that's what we said at the beginning, you know, today about the slippery. Slippery, yeah. Yeah, slippery after the rebound of the back. Well, and Tapia's volleys with that amount of backspin, you know, helps a lot for this. Uh, oh, that one's traditions. just in from Nieto. Beautifully judged. Nieto's playing 80% of the shots at the moment. Oh, oh, oh my Potres. goodness. Potres, oh, three meters. That height, <laughs> the giraffe. <laughs> He is a colossus, isn't he? Oh, my goodness. What a power. What a wrist movement. What momentum to hit the ball out of the court. 40-30. Team Bella win this one. We're into the first golden oh. points. But no. You know, it seems that in panel, it seems that, oh, when you miss a lob, or when you miss a shot by hitting the ball up, that seems to be, oh, that is easy. Well... It's easy if you play against me, but if it's, you play against Tapia, it's not easy to play that lob because the lob has to be perfect or you die. You're going to smash it. That's why they make the mistakes close to the back goal, you know, and not to, they don't hit the ball out of the court. They hit it behind just because the ball is deep. They're looking for depth. Two games apiece then. Back on throw, back with Team Bella with the serve. And into the net from John Sands. Cocky, we have a big, uh, big match here. Oh, yeah, man. found the gap, John Sands, 30-15. Getting a foothold in this game. Quick preparation of the forehand shots. Tapia getting pinned to that back wall. Finds the release shot, but uh, that's a brilliant shot from Koki Nieto. All Koki's pressure. shots off the back were down to the middle. He found some little gap there on Tapia's forehand. Tapia's not getting that close to the net to cover the net position because he knows the lob might be coming as well. But Koki's doing a very good job. The reactions of John Sun there. Look what a lob. Chiquita had to play it, and again, going very deep with those lobs, but judging them perfectly, Coelho. Oh, man, what a beautiful ping-pong, ping-pong, ping-pong. <laughs> volley, 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 That's volley, out. and a little Amphos error, because that shot should be cross-court, but because you have Coelho cross-court, you don't want Coelho to get closer to the net and smash it. Let's have a listen in to Team Bella being instructed by the coaching staff. It's a cocky, don't be afraid to play lost because you know that si Arturo is very high, bolea. very tall. Mi, so if they smash, o sea, Arturo will reach it anyways. Medio te va a dar tiempo. Porque o, o ganas, o ganas, para ponerla, ponesela por el drive, creo yo. Porque de ahí no, no, no nos entran tan fuerte. Venga, eh, viene, eh. Dale cocky, eh. Well, that everyone knows that uh, Gustavo Prato is the coach of Coelho. That's why he's talking more to cocky than to Coelho because they, with Coelho they know each other for a very long time. Muy bien. And Coelho might be doing actually what Gustavo said before, you know. <laughs> and so that's why he's talking to Koki a little bit more. RL9 also receiving some instruction. Sí. Claro. Y aparte ahí sí te obliga a salir para adelante un poco, viste. Si lo tiras al medio te juega un poco con el amague este. Vamos acá. Este, eh. Venga. 
So just saying to play the lobs a little bit more down the middle, not open to Arturo Tiempo. or to Koki because they, as more they open the lobs, the more angle they create. On we go again. Nobody able to break serve yet. RL9. 2 3 down. And Team Bella pretty untroubled on their serve, but the same is too, true of RL9 as well. This time it's uh, Tapia with the serve, the Argentinian, the sole Argentinian on the court at the moment. Serving to his usual pairing of Arturo Coelho, the number one pairing in the world. Split up, playing against one another. Portres, powerful from Tapia. 15 love. Good start. Hexagon, uh, Hexagon Cup team treating us like a kings here. Well, we've been given a cup of coffee, if yes. that's what you mean. That's, that's what beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> The teams that we are sleeping, wake up, net. We are in the best match you can ever watch here. Number ones playing against each other. It's a nerve-shredding drama of the final set there in that opening match with the women. And uh, we're just off to a steady start at the moment in this intriguing and very tight encounter between these two, possibly the best teams, men's teams in the Hexagon Cup. Early days still in the first set. Into the net from Tapia. Koki, we have to do that for a long period of time, I would say, you know, just being very consistent, keeping the consistency of the whole match and going for the winners when well, he has to go for winners. Straight down the line, forces Nieto to scramble back. Coquineto on defensive duty, Coelho with a block. That was out. And that was out. Slightly out. Arturo Coelho and Coqui win this point and little danger. Yeah, just the first signs of pressure now on the RL9 serve. Yes, danger now because it's 30 2 3, yep. little ghosts start appearing <laughs> in Tapias and Johnson's just side in. of the court. Just in there. Go for a winner. Oh, beautiful shot from Arturo Coelho. Down the middle, it's low. And now and they're under pressure. The now they're under pressure. He doesn't know how not to play a smash. But Fantastic. he doesn't know that shot neither. Oh, yeah. And the back goal post. It's the second time he misses that shot. Struggling it a little bit with those back wheels. So 40-30 on serve. A lot of that was down to the way John Sanz dug them out of a hole there. You sense that every point matters. This, this, this match is tactically perfect. I could be talking about this for hours. Uh, look how John Sanz now will play down the middle, perhaps slow, because they know that Coelho is in... Oh, fantastic. Do you think he's going to go out? Is Agustin Tapia there? He's not going to be out. <laughs> so, the game is won. Three each. And still we await the first break of serve. But that one was, again, a bit like their last service game. Just a bit closer. And Team Bella are edging their way closer to R09 on their service game. They're both teams studying each other, I would say, right now, even though they know each other for a long time, but they don't know how they perform together by playing together. So, yes, Koki touched that ball. Well, touched all the balls. Ay, <laughs> Koki, Nieto, and John San. 50 love. You had me there, Mary, briefly. Let's just call it a body shot. Highlight. <laughs> Man, this is the oh, match. I beautiful. promise you, this is going to be the match. It's going to be the match of the day because they're all the, 
all the shots these players are playing, and they are not yet, I would say. They might be performing 70% of what they will. They're still, in second, they're still in second or third gear, aren't they? They haven't hit fourth gear yet. And Coelho is physically such a different proposition from any other player who we've seen so far at the Hexagon Cup. He's just, he's just a different beast. Oh, that's it. Wow, that was a quick lob. That's what I mean with a quick lob. Good block from Coelho, but goes long. But that's the danger by being positioned close to the net when your opponents are at the net. That, you know, your partner has to do an amazing job in order not to put you under pressure. And so Koki's lob wasn't that deep, I would say. Good judgment it's there. the second time that uh, John misses the return of the serve. Yep. So when he leaves the court, Maxi Graviel, the coach, I think we have a word to say, as they did yesterday. He also missed, like five or six uh, return of the serve. And you know, at this level, you cannot miss that shot. In tennis, you could because the opponents hit the ball from above the, you know, it's from, from a smash, but in paddle, no. It's gonna go out. No, really? Oh. Arturo Richard. Still in play, still in play. Nieto with the smash. They, these plays are everywhere. Ah, oh. oh, that's the winner from Coelho. 4-3, Team Bella do it again, holding their serve, RL9. And there's nothing they can do about it at the moment. Team Bella edge ahead in set one. Coqui Nieto and Arturo Coelho, they haven't got rid of their opponents, but they haven't shown much weakness either. So we're, this set at the moment is in a state of suspended animation. Five winners for RL9, seven for Team Bella, and a similar amount of unforced errors. In fact, just one more for Team Bella than for RL9. But really, on those statistics, not much in it. 4-3 at the moment in games one. But because it's 4-3, and of course the set is the race to six, there is a lot of pressure now on the RL9 serve. They have to hold, because if they don't, then the set could be gone. Yeah. Also, man, I mean, the, what I see from the tactical point of view, what Arturo does, that's why nowadays he's leading the whole ranking, uh, is that the amount of space covered by him, by being a lefty player, tall, long arms, long legs, and that powerful, man, makes, it makes you, if you're playing against him, it makes it like, like, like very complicated life. I mean, John Sam, the last shot he just played was very open cross court, and Arturo just moved his non play to his uh, his playing arm to the backhand side. That's it, done. Venga. Down the line, este. Tapia, number one in the world, there. Bien, right, back they go, and on we go. But the end of the first set is approaching fast. Coelho and Nieto have an opportunity here to really apply some pressure. They have shown signs in the last two service games of RL9 that they have got closer to forcing a break point or a golden point without actually getting that far. Now, though, if they were able to fashion something spectacular here, they'd be very close to closing out the first set because it's getting very serious now in the first set. That's a brilliant shot from Tapia. Brilliant. Found the gap there, executed Actually, I think, it. Uh, I think a cocky... I mean, my cocky didn't expect the return that uh, Coelho had played and going forward as quick as Coelho did. That's why he was like half second late and half second late here. It's like uh, you're missing the train for seven hours. Most off the back wall. Beautiful volleys at the net, shot. and uh, Cocinieto finds the winning yes. shot. Levels things up at 15 all now. I mean, the thing is that there, uh, Tapia could have played down the line, but this Arturo Coelho is there. That's why what I mean is Arturo is covering that much part of the court. Look how close he goes straight away. So it's not that John Santh is not a good player. Is that the other? Massive boy that is a lefty <laughs> yeah. facing you all the time close to the net. And if you play a lob, you almost die because the, the smash is very powerful. It gives uh, to Koki the chance to do 
yeah. you know, other kind of uh, variations. And the thing is that there, that's what, what I told you before, these kind of little mistakes, or big mistakes, if you can call it as you wish, um, could happen to Arturo. But the thing is that by 100 shots, he's winning 80 by being at the net position, so that's the result. He prefers to be there. That was a big point to win for RL9 there. Leveling things up at 30 all now. Okay. He comes back. He did it. Well done. Yeah. Well done, Richard. 40 30. Oh, Looks skyward. Yes. Knows that he's got away play. with one there, but that was brilliant from John Sanders. Yes. Very well played. Big jump. Magical. Beautiful shot. Cocky needed a, a door. You know, at the end of the at the end of the glass, yeah. Just to open the door and go behind that could be a good yeah, option. You Coelho know, to... covering huge amounts of the net there, and that was brilliant. Aggressive play from Team Bella, and that forces a golden point. And we have the first break points in the sets, and a massive amount of pressure coming the way of RL9 now. Here we go. What can they do about this one? This could potentially cost the first set. Stakes are that high. Half the match could go in this point. What a lob. Great reply from Tapia, no, though. No, he touched it twice. Yes, very well done from Koki Nieto. Well, they survive. Four apiece. Koki Nieto hits the ball twice and owns up to his mistake. Receives the uh, warm applause of John Sant for that sporting gesture. Wasn't visible to the naked eye. Mauri, you spotted it, but often these things are pretty hard to see, aren't they? Yeah. The, the shot that Tapia has just played down the middle is very difficult to do just because the amount of power he prints onto that shot. He places lower, Koki will reach it, um, will reach it before the backboard. That's going to come back, but again, he Beautiful. gets to it, John Santas. Twice in quick succession, he's managed a similar shot. Deep, and the smash, and, there. and that's it for Richard. Quella through the legs of Tapia. Play. Still in play. Kita having fun. Have a look at this. Oh, brilliant from Nieto. <laughs> Beautiful. Viva right down the middle from John Sanz. Stepping forward with a fork and volley. Fork and volley for Tapia. Oh, well done. Tapia. Brilliant, starting. brilliant win. They start cheering each other. That means that the match just started. Love 15. Yeah. What a winner. Tapia knows how much that means. And I think I'm right in saying, for the first time, the Team Bella pairing have been behind on their serve. Love 15 down. Yeah, didn't last long. 15 all. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> yes. 15 all, 4 all. Beautiful. That says a lot about why number ones, pair number one and pair number eight. are mixing and playing against each other. Wow. In. They were just in. Oh, Coelho found a little gap that wasn't really there. <laughs> Brings that right back. I will tell you one little, one little story, that. because with Arturo we share brand, and we had uh, one time to do some shooting with the brand, and he had to play some smashes with the ball, you know? And, you know, I said to him, hey, listen, just play soft, man, because it scares a little bit when you play these matches. <laughs> yes, it does. I think that's what the, the coach was asking. If Koki doesn't try just to block from behind, Arturo will reach that ball. Because he's 192, I would say, or 193, I don't know. But with an like, arm extended, 2 meters 10, 2 meters 20. Plus jumping, man, it's like 3 meters height or even more. Well, I think John was doubting about the serve. Yes, that's yeah. what they're arguing. I'm, don't, I'm not sure they're going to call it or not. Well, seems content to accept the decision. No, they're not going to call it. No, no challenge. I think a cocky because they know each other, you know, they're not going to cheat. I think a cocky said, hey, listen, listen, I think it was him. Beautiful amount of power with that backhand down the middle 
from Arturo Coelho, the king of Basel. Tisbella 5-4 up. And the pressure turns round again, and RL9 will have to come out next time, and they'll have to hold serve, or the first set will go. Core coverage, the heat map. This is Team RL9, the constituent parts. John Santh operates primarily on the right-hand side of the court and quite close to the centre line, again, with occasional forays to the net. That is his area of operation. His partner, August Tapia, as you can see, significantly wider, he's closer to the left-hand side of the court. Mauri, what's the difference between those two players? Well, uh, you, you could see that, first of all, they are not... I mean, Tapia is just slightly more... slightly um, more behind um, than John Sant, as we said in the beginning. He's playing deeper. Yeah, exactly, just because he wants to hit more balls. You know, he wants to hit... That he wants that the opponents hit more balls to him. So if he goes closer to the net, they will play more to John Sand at some point because he opens more angle on the right side of the court. But as he leaves a little, bit, little gap and stays behind the line of where his partner plays, allowing uh, Tapia to get into the game. And I think, oh, correct me if I'm wrong, what you see, Ned, they are playing much better than yesterday. Well, they've survived one break point so far. They're going to hope that they don't have any more break points to defend. Uh, if they do, things could get pretty yes. tight now. 100%. I agree. For that golden point, it could have been 6-3. How significant is this game going to be in the outcome of this match? It could be very significant. Coelho and Nieto are 5-4 up. If they win this game, they win the first set. But it is with RL9 to serve, and so far there have been no breaks of throw in this match. Breaks of serve, I should say. The coach of uh, Team Bella was asking to the players, Koki and Arturo, said, hey, listen, we are doing okay, I like it, it's good, but I need more competitiveness. I need you to start competing, competing better. Shouting is start moving faster, trying to go for winners. Well, two straightforward points there, with a bit of a body shot from August Tapia to the body of Coquinieto. I think it's easier to aim <laughs> Arturo's body, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit bigger. <laughs> that was a mistake from Coelho. 40 love. 40 love. This happened already in the second game. Do you remember that was that quick? In one and a half minutes, and that, that is not a very good news for Arturo and Coque Nieto. Portres, Portos, not even Portres. Okay. For two and a half, and the ball stays in. Five each. Team Bella then to serve and to hold throw and give themselves one more opportunity to try and break this serve, but there were absolutely no chinks in the armour there, as uh, that was a very, very, that was the quickest game of perhaps the whole Hexagon Cup so far. No rallies to speak of whatsoever. Straightforward love game on the uh, Tapia serve. Nieto it is to serve for Team Bella. 15 love up already. Bandeja, love, bandeja, chiquita. Oh! <laughs> what? To reach it. I think you should warn them if he's going to do that. Magical shot from John Santh. At the Vibra. body of Coella swerves it. Vivra again. He knows that Coelho will struggle with that Vivra. Forehand volley from Coelho. Didn't struggle too much though, did he? That was pretty brilliant. Was in. Oh, this is better. This is a great rally. And not, but yeah, but they are in a little disadvantage. So everyone might be cheering now to Coelho and, and Koki, who are in a little disadvantage because they are not playing on the right on their own side of the court. And that's why everyone is clapping the hands to Koki and Coelho. 30 love. Leading this 11th game of the first set. The lefty forced over to the left-hand side of the court, but uh, returns to the right-hand side. 
where he likes to operate on the backhand on this occasion. Backhand again. And that was long, was it? Yeah, yeah. The yeah, thing that is that long. Arturo did two steps and he went behind Koki and then he covered his side with the Chiquita that John Sanz played. So with two steps, he reached it. Well, a love game Big. to Team RL9 Boy. in the last game. And it's another love game, this time going the way of Team Bella, who move into a 6-5 lead. So we still don't know the outcome of set one. It is on a knife's edge, but Team Bella once again move into a one-game advantage. <laughs> Ahí era que te digo que le tires, tiras era un poco fuerte, pues la tiras lenta y te. No, y pac, un poquito ahí, ¿vale? Venga, va. Bien, ahí fíjate que entras por el medio, entras por el medio todo el tiempo. Vamos un poquito más de movilidad. Gustavo Prato, dispensing his advice to Team Bell. Claro, pero. Claro, pero para salir. The tactical difficulty now for Maori is how do they break uh, the um, RL9 slope? Well, yeah, they that's seem actually so what we're talking about. So, right. so few weaknesses. It's like we start, we've got to start moving right now. Is that okay? After we play the lot, we cannot be awaiting until what decision they take. We play the lot, we're going to play. Este, eh. Bien, eh. Bien los dos, va. Vamos a sacar este y lo ganamos en el tabre, ¿qué? Let's try to get this game. I'm gonna, we're going to win this set in the tabre. That's what the coach said to... Va. Sí. Agustín. Este y en el siguiente ya la bola también va a salir un poquito menos. Vamos a tener mejor el globo. Well, if you're a betting person, acá, eh. it would be pretty foolhardy to bet against vamos, the eh. outcome that this will go to a tie break. It's looked like that, frankly, vamos, Johnny, eh. vamos, ever since eh. the first two vamos, equipo, service games that were held. Been very few opportunities for either side to break the serve of their opponents, and it va. looks like we're destined animal, for a tie break. Eh. Or are we? Well, this game will determine whether or not set one ends in a tiebreak or in victory for Team Bella. They do have an opportunity, but somehow they're going to have to break John Sanz's serve. Coelho with the return. Great lob. No! Oh, how did he get that back? <laughs> Unfortunately, he couldn't manage the next coming shot. It's a nice, tricky shot. Uh, I believe that his coach didn't like it much. He's not moving his feet that quick. That's what the coach was asking before. They play this match and do something. No! And oh. there we go. Oh, Coquinieto got the ball Arturo back in play. Arturo there. But, like, uh, uh, he got super glue in his feet, yeah, you know? It's like, uh, <laughs> the super glue, man, look. Became a Spanish there. statue in the middle yes, of the court. Yes, there. I think of Richard. But he wanted to leave that to our Koki, and Koki was outside. I believe that he was awaiting for another portress from Tapia. This point it might be quite important, and it's not anymore. No. Nope. Because it's 40 left. This is uh, fairly straight. Are we going to go to tiebreak? Huh? I think we are. I think it's looked like that for a while now. I want a tiebreak, and a tiebreak, and a super tiebreak. <laughs> I think you're a masochist. <laughs> or a sadist. And he went for a winner. And the winner from Tapia is a winner. Well, there we go. Doesn't come much more straightforward than that. Six apiece in the opening set, and we move into a seven-point tiebreak. I think, as we said, uh, you know, before, that the ball doesn't reach the highest point, and when they smash, and blah, blah, blah. But I think that when they hit the ball, as Tapia did with that little kick, we call it the kick smash, print into the ball a kind of amount of topspin to the shot when they smash, that ball is quite uh, effective, I would say. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh. Almost there. Lucky, I would say, lucky Coelho, who, whose smash just hit the top of the fence, because otherwise, John Sam have won that point from outside the court. Well, he, again, he got a racket to it, but couldn't quite find the angle to bring it back into play over that three-metre fence that he had to clear to bring it back into the opponent's court and lost his footing. Would have been spectacular. 
As it is, though, Team Bella have a 1 2 nil advantage in this tie break. Wow! And that was a beautiful winner from John Sands. Bandeja! Bandeja is always a good opportunity. One step, he's behind. One step, he's at the net again. Cocky running. Low. Beautiful yeah. speed from that height, well, I that's would say. a mini break. That was against the serve of RL9. And so, for what it's worth, they have, a, they have a mini break in their back pocket now. The team in blue. Kick and smash. Out of the court, very massive angle. The ball went between the siphons, I would say the high siphons, and the post of the light, which is the angle is just perfect to put the ball very, very far away from the court, not even allowing the players, even if they run out of the court, to reach it. Mini break back, level, two apiece. One more serve for Team Bella. Nieto to serve. Clever yeah. Tapia, and very that's clever. that's another break. Yes, because he just did as he was going forward, but didn't. So um, in that case, exactly, that's what exactly what happened. So Arturo said to Koki, Tapia is at the back, not coming, not at the back. And Koki didn't take the right decision, but Tapia did by coming forward. Well, John Sands trying to go for the winner, but you know, not every day is Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> six I didn't. Six points played in the uh, tiebreak at the end of set one, and it's three each. And in terms of mini breaks of serve, we are back on serve. So we start again as if those first six points basically haven't happened. It's a race rather than to seven. It's a race to four now. Six zero, three zero, hexagon, cup, beautiful match. It does feel like RL9 have just shaded this set in terms of quality. Even though they've been pushed quite hard in the early uh, games on their yeah. serve, they seem to have grown into the set a little bit more. Yeah. And you know but what, there's not much in it. Do you know what I, what I think, Ned, is that now because it's the, you know, the first part of the match of, of, the, of the whole tournament and so on, but teams will start like cheering more and more and more as the time goes through like tomorrow yep saturday even more in the semi-finals and i cannot imagine in the final because you know the team has a big impact on the players as if it were the world championships you know 4-3 to rl9 then three points in this time break in this tie break potentially away from clinching the first set and that would be their first set in the Mexican cup Oof. Second serve from Coelho. High lob and go forward. There's the block. Couldn't find the gap there. But Arturo the still at the net, covering. Oh, so comfortable for Coelho. Just stretches that big left arm out. Good shot for Koki, a little bit risky, I would say, there. Koki reaching the net, wants to accompany his partner, who is very close to the net all the time, pushing and pushing and pushing. My goodness. Block something, if you want. Block it. Block it. <laughs> Mr. Blocking Boy. Nieto has had to work so well, hard yeah, in this I point. told you, man, I told you since the beginning of the match, he has a big job to do. And ah, that was straight at the body and a good shot. Said, All is fair in love and paddle. John Sanz striking the body of Coelho, pinpoint accuracy, and a big point that, 5-3 now in the tiebreak. Yes. Close, they are close. But look, uh, look. They have the one more serve now, Coelho. 
and Nieto. They have to hold it, really. Keep themselves in this tie break. Well, big Amphos error there from Arturo, who hasn't been playing many, uh, you know, it's like not on the fridge, but, you know, they're like playing much more shots to tap um, to Koki. And if he's not on the game for a long time, okay. he might do these kind of mistakes. And, and there another we go. unforced error from Coelho, and that is it. And finally, Team RL9, having suffered a two sets to nil defeat yesterday, get their first set in the hexagon. And there's the delight and the evident relief, because had they lost that set, they would have been very close to yes. the exit door in the hexagon. So some happiness to Robert Lewandowski. Team. That will relax them. Their Hexagon Cup is up and running. It has started. And they deserved that on balance. I think they deserved it. I think they were slightly, slightly the better team. Exactly. There was just there was just two, three points that made the difference. They were the last two unforced errors from Arturo Coelho. The only difference in the whole set was the last two unforced errors. That shows the quality of the match. Yeah. and the players we have on court. So, very well done to the Ahora four players, este, este showing a fantastic match for the Hexagon Cup. Let's enjoy vamos, vamos. the set one, uh, set one action in no, highlights yeah. form. So the question being asked of Team Bella now is what can they do in response? RL9 just slightly in control, taking this first set. And Team Bella now in their opening match in the Hexagon Cup. Have to win the second set or the match has gone. Agus Tapia gets the uh, serve underway for RL9 and gets the second set up and running. And unless it ends in a victory for Team Bella, they will have won their second match. And they'll still be in the hat with a possibility of, uh, but not a certainty, of appearing in the semi-final. Men's Group A is intriguingly poised. Yeah. He's not going to reach that one. I think Agus is trying that kick smash that I was telling you in parallel. Even though he has his partner, which is massive. Very tall player, but still working, you know. I feel quite comfortable. 30 15 to Agustin Tapia. Well, that one went long from Coelho. Coelho needs to wake up just a little bit. A few unforced errors towards the end of that tie break that uh, cost them the first set. Yeah, I think he would have to look uh, somehow to help. No! No, 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 no! What are you doing, Mozart? <laughs> oh, that was a good shot from Agustin Tapia. Magic, just matching at the Hexagon Cup. <laughs> what the shot. He loves it. He oh, loves it. Goodness. That cheeky grin as well. 
And uh, John Santh recognizing the sheer quality of Tapia's approach to the net there, that beautifully delicate shot. Never mind the power. What about the, uh, the touch of that shot? And that is the game, the opening game of the uh, second set. And RL9 win it pretty comfortably. Man, when you see Tapia doing those kind of shots, it shows the confident he feels at the moment, you know? It's a different player scary. from the one who lost that, that, the, the match yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that is another Tapia. Maybe he's, uh, uh, I don't know, his twin brother or something like that. <laughs> it wasn't the same player for sure. Running onto the court. RL9 running to take their positions. Motivated now while the dander is up and while the shots are landing where they want them to, to really do some damage here. We still haven't had in regular play, outside of a tie break, a break of serve yet. Yes, perhaps, you know, um, as Arturo is that close to the net from the tactical point of view, and they are playing more shots to Koki, even though if the opponents, like uh, if, the, if John and Tapia want to play to Arturo, they cannot, because Arturo is always close to the net, so it doesn't really help much to Koki, you know, so I think Arturo should be slightly more behind, like this, he was there doing the step forward when needed, not all the time, in order to help Koki, you know, to reach some of the shots or to, yeah, to get some pressure off from his partner. 30 love, Arturo Coelho on his serve. Bang. He meant that. Ah, that's the rush over. Wow. Gets there, but is that too long? <laughs> Just Look about. how he got the love back. in play. Look how Coelho is reaching much, but a bigger part of the court now. Playing every shot in this rally. Coelho, they're moving him around, brings Fantastic. Neto into play. Fantastic, very well played. They did a good job, but Arturo was helping. Do you know what I mean, Ned? If Arturo is at the net, as he's always that close to the net, man, you got a massive boy with uh, so much reactions. You don't want to play to him, so you will play to Koki, even though if you want to play to Arturo. Beautiful. Ah, there we go, a love game. Right when he needed it for Arturo Coelho at the beginning of this uh, critical second set as they try and wrestle back some sort of semblance of control in this match and level things up in the second set. John Sands now for RL9. That touched the net, first serve. Nice lead. If when you serve and the ball touches the top of the net and bounces and goes through the door, that will be led in this court. And we're playing with the official dimensions that players can run out of the court. But if you're not, then that ball is out. The ball bounce. The ball hit the top of the, of the net, bounce and goes through the door. If you're not playing with official dimensions, oh, the ball is out. That's his head drop there. Top Might get to that. Nieto, that came all the way back. 15 all. It's hard work this at the moment for Team Bella, particularly on the, uh, the RL9 serve. Nieto doing so much running. Boah, two loves in a row to Arturo. Didn't expect that. After the opponents played hundreds of loves to Koki. Very well done. Very, very well played from Koki Nieto now. Now then, 15.30. Yes. I mean, the thing is the... Clutching at straws, really, in terms of pressure, but they haven't had many openings like this on the RL9 serve. And this is a big point, potentially. Potentially. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah well, it's done. Out. Very well done. And now they do have their break but, points. But do you know what I mean? Arturo is now helping his partner. Just why are waiting a little bit more? Because, don't take me wrong, but Coelho is not playing with Tapia. That Tapia knows and they compete each other and they know each other and blah, blah, blah. He's playing with, with Koki. And if he does what he was doing before, he's not helping Koki a little bit by being at the net that long amount of time during the match. 
First of three break points defended. 40-30 or 30-40 on the 30 40. serve. So it's a um, double break point. Beautiful bandeja. Now that's it, and work. the break is now there. And that's the court. first time we've seen a break of serve in this encounter between Team Bella. And it is the team in the blue who have broken RL9. 2 1, they lead now in the second set. <laughs> we'll start our practice edge. Focus a little bit more on winning. Come on, guys. Vamos acá, eh. Ojo ahora porque la bola está viva ahora. Cambio de bola. John Sanz. Vamos, eh. Having been broken for the first time. Prendidos, eh. All right. Down in this ever-growing crowd, I think Andrea has picked out another fan of note. Let's hear from Andrea. Almorena, bienvenida aquí a Hexagon Cup. Eh, creo que no había mejor plan para la tarde del jueves. Pues no. <laughs> Además que hace poco que me he introducido un poco en el padre porque he jugado un partido en mi vida. Eh, no se me da mal, pero son mejores ellos. <laughs> Hombre, claro, como quieras jugar a este nivel estás perdida. Bueno, pero sin duda en este escenario de Madrid. Sí, muy bonito. Me hubiera encantado ver a Marta Marrero porque Marta fue compañera mía en el CAR de San Cubat. Vivimos juntas en la misma residencia, luego ha sido mamá y si no creo que igual la hubiera visto aquí jugar, me hubiera hecho mucha ilusión también. Bueno, le mandamos un saludo desde aquí, muchas gracias. Gracias a vosotros. Gracias. Well, we've had racing drivers, we've had gymnasts, might even have a dash of Hollywood before the end is of uh, the Hexagon Cup is over, the weekend, we'll have to see. But as you can see, the Madrid Arena here is filling all the time now, and at least half the seats are taken. As we head into the evening action on day two, and this intriguingly poised first Tiempo. men's match of day two, where Team Bella might just have struck a major blow against RL9. Almudena Sida, which is seen on the interview, uh, she's um, is a former Spanish individual rhythmic gymnastic, and you know she's been in the Olympic Games four times, completed the Olympic finals. Very well done and thanks for being here, Almudena. One of the uh, many people in the crowd who are making their way into this arena to watch this game, which has uh, taken a bit of a turn suddenly, having been so solid on all their service games. Finally, uh, Team Bella have managed to exploit a chink in the armour of RL9, who took the first set, but they are now a breakdown in set two in the early phase. Team Bella now with the service, 30 nil up, to move potentially to a 3-1 lead. And for the first time, that would mean that they have a, a two-game advantage. It's be the first time that any of these teams have had a two-game advantage in any of the action in this tight encounter, this high-quality encounter. They could fridge it, but they didn't really. This is this is what happens in the sport of panel sometimes. You know, if you're not keep active all the time, these kind of little mistakes could, could happen. Well, that game was lightning fast, wasn't it? Three one now the score in the second set. Wow, both of the shots were in Arturo said. Buena las dos. Because his shot was very, very close to the cyphers and uh, so was Agus as well. There is a uh, Viboreja, half Vibora, half Bandeja, but uh, with power. Vibore smash, how we call it. Vibore, Viboreja smash. All the shots together by Agustin Tapia. Whoa! Well, point after point is going so fast at the moment. We've well, had no rallies yes, in the opening yes. in these, uh, the new, since the restart. It's a new games. panel. I would say it's a new panel. And this is what they said with a the, with the, with the, with the heavy ball. I mean, I don't know what they mean with that. <laughs> oh, look, look at that. Okay. 40 Pocky tried to do and something game. there. And there we go. Oh. Quick as that. Two yeah, games pass and it be went with serve. Team Bello, like a rueful smile there. Absolutely no way that they could deal with that from RL9. Brilliant. Bien, bien, Arturo. Esa que tiras, te vas para adelante. A nada que no te puede fuerte, seguí para adelante. Dale. 
en la que tiraste well, que te tiró uh, paralela paralela si no te puede tirar fuerte so pero, quick from pero, team Bella and RL9 I think we've got a little bit more data to crunch uh, as we look of out, at out of court winners that have been created by the pairing of Sanf and uh, Tapia um, RL9 all these different ways that they've managed to get the ball up and over wow isn't that good wow see exactly where and how But, they've done it man, I will take this for my courses Yeah. When I coach the coaches, man, have a look on this. This is absolutely brilliant. Bring it back, the ball to the side wall, to the back wall, the winners of the court winners by San Antapia. This is stats are fantastic. Very, very well done from the so set up of the hexagon team. Left and right, por tres, one uh, por cuatro over the back of the four meter fence that they have to clear at the back. And the bring back is when it bounces from off the back yeah, wall sure. and clears the players and comes back over the net for a winner. In all those different ways, they have managed to uh, execute winning shots. And that is, well, amongst the most spectacular shots that you can see in the sport of paddle. And wonderful to see that all represented there in that 3D animation on the court. One of the innovations here at the Hexagon Cup. Tiempo. Este, This is the kind of shots that they all see in their mind's eyes. They head for the court again to produce some more magic. Well, if the next two games go as quickly as the last two games, games did, don't yeah. go anywhere. We'll go the keep, we'll keep the next your 10 eyes. Minutes it was, uh, it was uh, well, without reply, two love games. John Santh, his arm in the air. Hey, just to let you know, yeah, just to let you know, we have Alejandra Salazar and Tamara Ricardo playing together next match against Delphi Brea and Sofia Araujo, who lost yesterday. The teammates of the uh, Team Bella pairing of yes. Coelho and Nieto, and they need a result, don't they? they? Yes, 100%. And Alejandra Salazar, together with Tamara Ricardo, is going to be, they're going to start playing this year together. But it's the first time they compete together in a professional tournament. So. Salazar, Salazar in her late 30s, she one of the, she's one of the real legends in the uh, women's paddle scene, probably the greatest over a sustained period of time. Possibly the greatest, yes. I know Alejandra since I was 14 years old, man, and she's been playing the same, but better. The same way, I want to say, you know, very clever player. But we're here now with the boys, with the young Kids having fun. That ball goes out. Not didn't. What a block from Agustin Tapia there. The big left arm to the goal winner. Waiting to pull the trigger. This is the perfect match. The, the perfect part of the match. Oh, where four players there. are much more <laughs> focused on it, I would say. And then if you want, I can tell you who is going to play against each other in the men's in the last match. Martin Dineno and Juan Tello against Stupatuk, the regular partner of Martin Dineno, Stupatuk and Alex Ruiz. Crowd will be looking forward Incredible. to that one. Well, the next two games. Really. Tapia goes, it smashes. And it brings it back. Unbelievable smash from Mozart. Man, what an amount of power into that shot. I mean, technically, it was perfect because the ball rebound at the highest part of the back wall, making the rebound be very high. Can you go again? No, really. Well, Tim Bell is struggling a little bit. Yep. Great shot from John Sanz, allowing Tapia to kick the ball out by the four meters back wall. Spectacular game to put it there to level the result. The score, three all. Yeah, it's not quite a result yet. It's the score, three apiece in the second set. That's just every bit as tight as the first set was. No daylight really between these two teams. It couldn't be any any more even. I mean, it's, it's but yeah, that was a break of surf. Man, is that is that guy? I mean. This is two and a half meters, it covers everywhere. 
unbelievable coverage from behind, from the transition from back to forward from Arturo Coelho and his forehand. Sends John Sands clattering into the corner there. Tapia, time and time again now, he's finding himself at the net. I think that's the time when Koki should leave that ball of the back goal because Arturo is already stepping forward. And even though if the ball goes out, Arturo can easily run out of the court and decide with just a little bit more time available that he would have by just blocking the ball behind the line. 15 all on the Sands serve. Oof. Tapia has found his eye now, hasn't he? He's, he's found his eye, he's found his range, he's found his game. It's all working perfectly for the Argentine, <laughs> Argentinian superstar at the moment. A revelation, really, compared to the, play, the undercooked player we saw in competition and in defeat late last night. Nieto did well to keep the ball in play there. Again, has to scoop that one out as he scuttles backwards. This time, Coelho has no, the opportunity. No, no, no. And Tapia no, no, somehow... you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> no, Agustin Tapia, how did you do that shot without even watching what was happening on the other side of the court? A little exchange of glances between the two regular teammates. Uh, Only Mozart. Tapia and Coelho. Hey, I could try anyways to, yeah. to reach that one as well. Huh? There you go, there's the glance. <laughs> I said, if I do that one, we keep the highlights forever. Great Chiquita from Arturo. 30 all, though. Oh. Incredible recovery and reset lob from Arturo. Bang. What and he gets there. there. And that's there. over and out for Quattro. <laughs> and we have 40-30. Arturo was a little bit unlucky there because the, the rebound of the back wall was on the back wall was a defense, allowing John Sanz to reach that ball more comfortably because otherwise, yeah, otherwise the ball would come back, you see? <laughs> John Sanz feeling sorry about he smacked Arturo Coelho. No, oh, man, I get tired ah, by just watching. Ah, golden points. It's not only that Arturo is a big boy, also that the transition he does with one or two just steps forward, and still the, the, his volley is very heavy when you reach it, you know? When, when he volleys to you, if you're playing against him, and he volleys to you, his volley is it's a heavy one, you know? Even if he's doing it by a transition one, he's going to reach this. But he's going to miss it. I didn't say he's going to get in. <laughs> I just said he's going to reach it. He did. So, so the with three. The win goes to uh, Team RL9, and uh, they lead 4-3. That's Team Bell. And that was close. They know it. They towel down. The sweat will be running off them now, because uh, that was a tight moment or two. They had to defend their break point there with the goal points. Yeah, I think that... Uh, have a look. We got the short uh, rallies, which are 10 seconds, the medium rallies, which are from 10 to 20 seconds, and the long rallies, which are 20 seconds plus. And you can tell that Arturo Coelho and Koki uh, Nieto, just because I would say Koki, was uh, just awaiting and making the building the points a little bit longer point. That's why they want perhaps a little bit more points with the long term. Uh, but with the shortest one, where Agus and John Sam also winning a little bit more. But the medium ones were the ones who made the difference for Agustin Tapia and John Sanf, winning most of them, almost doubling, I would say. 21 points against 14 from Bella club team, Arturo and Coquineto. And that is where they've made the difference, in the medium length of rallies. It's an interesting statistic, that. Sometimes it's very revealing. On that occasion, it's hard to know what to make of it, but that's yeah, why they're but, doing uh, the damage. As you said, that uh, Ned, it's very important, I would say, from the coaching point of view, yeah, to yeah. realize and to see. Okay, we do it as well, you know, for the amount of for the amount of heat. All right, then back we go. Then 
4-3 to RL9, and uh, Team Bella needs to find a break of serve from somewhere. So RL9 facing their opponents who have the serve, looking for another break, which really would uh, put them in a very handsome position in oh. this second set and indeed the match. It looks so easy what just Agustin Tap has done. It looks so easy, but if he does it, it looks so easy. It's almost casual, but it's, wasn't it? Not many players in the world can do such a wrist movement with the backhand. That high. Oh, well, the net. well, listen, I'll tell you something. I mean, Artur is a very powerful <laughs> smasher, yeah? But in these conditions, as everyone was saying before, the players that the ball is a little bit heavy and the court is not that quick or whatever, for him, it's not that comfortable. But he's trying to kick the ball with a smash, as Tapia does. But Tapia has that skill that Arturo doesn't. Arturo has other skills. And that's why he's missing that kick smash that he doesn't know, let's say, or he's not, he's a strength to kick the smashes. And he missed it today. That one just going a little bit long. Cocky getting that point one. 15-30 nonetheless, so still a, a perilous position here for Team Bella. It's a very important point for both, Tapia and both John. teams. Yeah, both teams. But for Team Bella, it's quite dangerous, I would say, just because they just, lo just lost the first. Oh, that is going to present them with the opportunity for three break points here. And this could be a killer, huh? Yep. This could be... Take one of these and yes. they move to 5-3 in yes. the second set. No! Oh. Again. The ball rebound of the on the edge between the glass and the fence. Otherwise, we've taken a much higher direction. Two break points remain. Koki with the serve. John Sands lifts one. Deals with the consequences. Oof. Lifts again, trying to work his way to the net. Here they come. There are the reactions. Oh. And there it is. And there's the winner. And there's the break. And how big no, will that be in the context of this match? 5-3 now. And they will be serving. August Tapia will be serving imminently for the match. That's how quickly a set can get away from you. And, but that was so well engineered, that entire uh, point by John Santh in particular, who just bent that according to his will. Very well shot, yeah, very well uh, executed. Kick Bandeja down They're to the... Closing in, they are closing in. Cock is back and very complicated shot to hit it back comfortably, would be impossible. And now it's 30 laugh. Big problems for Team Bella in this match. Well, they're on the brink, aren't they? They yes. are on the brink of yes. losing their opening match, not necessarily going Tap out <laughs> of the Hexagon Cup. But RL9, this would be a huge result for them if they can do this, because they stay alive in the Hexagon Cup, still in with a chance of qualifying for the semi-finals. Oh, no, my goodness! Agustin Tapia kicked Bandeja slow down to the corner of Koki who couldn't do absolute nothing. And that gives them three match points. August Tapia has three opportunities here to serve for the second set and for victory against Team Bella. Here he goes. No, he didn't. And oh, there we are. That is the game. That's it. Fantastic for August Tapia. The longer that match went on, the better August Tapia became. Hugs all round for these players who know each other very well, and a particular greeting from his world-class number one pairing there, Arturo Coelho. But uh, the honours go to the Argentinian, the only Argentinian on the courts with his Spanish teammate John Sanz, and they are still alive in the Hexagon Cup.
defeat yesterday followed by victory on day two in the Hexagon Cup. They needed that, they're still in it, and it might well go to count back in this group. Well, I think it was a very interesting match. I wanted the third set, as you know, but, you know, I think that Agustin and John made a much better match. They played much more organized every single point. Arturo wasn't uh, on shape, I would say. Very, you know, focused on the match, 100%. Koki did his best, but it wasn't enough. That's why Robert Lewandowski team won this fantastic second match of the pair. They're safe in a little bit, but they're not sure they no. will be eliminated yet. No, they but have played the their two win. matches, but tomorrow, Team Bella will face Team Hexagon. Yes. And if Team Bella win, then each of the three teams will have won one match in that group, and it will go to the countback, the number of uh, sets and the number of games that they have won. So all three teams in this group could still qualify for the semi-finals from the men's uh, group A. I want to hear now what the guys, the winners, John Santan and Agustin Tapia have to say. We can see the players making their way down to talk to Andrea Balesta. And indeed, I think we can now hear from the uh, victorious pairing of RL9. And uh, Tapia and John Thans have got that win that they wanted. Una de las grandes cosas que nos trae la Hexagon Cup es veros jugar en contra en vez de al lado. Contarme lo primero de todo cómo han ido esas sensaciones. Bueno, eh, la verdad que creo que ha sido un partido muy, muy complicado para, para las dos parejas. Eh, son al final sentimientos que bueno, eh, son difíciles de, de controlar. Y nada, darle la enhorabuena a los chicos, eh, porque aparte de ser buenos jugadores son unas grandísimas personas. Y bueno, sobre todo dar la, la enhorabuena al Mozart, que, que después de sufrirlo durante tantos años, bueno, tantos no, pero de sufrirlo, pues, pues tenerlo al lado es un, es un placer, así que eh, muy contento. Agustín, hoy muchas mejores sensaciones y primeros puntos del equipo. Sí, sí, le decía ahí a lo, al equipo que, que estamos vivos, ¿eh? no, que no nos den por muertos, pero bueno, un placer jugar al lado de Johnny. Eh, ayer no, no, se, no se dio la victoria, pero bueno, hoy pudimos jugar a, a un gran nivel. Fue un partido, como dijo él, muy difícil, sentimientos encontrados porque, porque son nuestros compañeros al final a, a lo largo del año, pero no queríamos perder ni loco, así que <ríe> así, bueno, ellos seguro que tampoco. Así que nada, salió un lindo partido, muy parejo, y bueno, nosotros a, a seguir luchando con, con todo el equipo, que a ver si pasamos de ronda. Pues fuerte el aplauso para los segundos ganadores de la tarde. No Merecida victoria yet. y luchadísimo el Agustín encuentro. Agustín Tapia just said, and uh, John Sanz said, I, uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure playing against, um, against my, my partner. I'm beating him, but they were just messing around in the, in the beginning. Uh, in the morning today, chatting with each other, with a with his opponents, but actually the regular partners, Coqui Nieto and Arturo Coelho. Uh, it's time to enjoy this uh, winning for their team. Robert Lewandowski. Happy time for Arturo, um, for Tapia and John Sand. Arturo Coelho and Coqui will have to do their job tomorrow. Well, it was a much-anticipated encounter, and at times it delivered uh, paddle of the very highest calibre.
All of which uh, leaves Group A looking like this. RL9 have completed their two matches in the round robin phase. They have played two and won one. Team Hexagon have played one and won one. That was late last night. A Paquito Novaro and the 48-year-old Juan Martin Diaz. And Team Bella, who've just made their start in the Hexagon Cup today, have played one and lost one. That leaves one fixture remaining in Group A, and it'll be tomorrow when Team Hexagon play Team Bella. And if Team Bella manage to win, every one of the teams in Group A will have won one, and it'll go to count back. And uh, perhaps significantly, as you can see there, uh, Team Hexagon have won 13 games and two sets already. So they would potentially be in a better place on count back, but that will only be resolved tomorrow. Now, uh, while we have been concentrating on the main uh, arena here, next door in the fans arena, there's another paddle court where the young players, the under 21 males, who are competing for all the teams in that category, they have been competing in the next generation competition. And the first of their matches, uh, the first match of the day has uh, been resolved in the first next generation match of today. 11 11 took to the court against Team Bella Puerto Rico. Argentine Alex Chosas and uh, the Spaniard Emilio Sanchez started strongly, claiming the first set in style. Francisco Guerrero and Rodrigo Coelho of Team Bella and Puerto Rico fought back strongly, winning the second set and taking the game to a tense decider. But it was 11-11 who prevailed, however, claiming victory and moving through to the next round. And this is the way Group A in the next generation uh, category stands at the moment. As you can see, 11-11 have played 2-1-2, two, two. they are through. And uh, the other two teams, Bella and RL9, have played one and lost uh, their match. And so therefore they will head uh, off face to face tomorrow. And there's still one place in the semi-finals available for one of those two teams. All right, we're halfway through the live uh, paddle games on the main arena today. Uh, we've had two two sets to love victories. Team 11-11 it was beating RL9 in the opening match. That's complete. And uh, Team RL9 beating Team Bella in the second of the matches. That was Group A in the men's. Next up, though, we've got Group A in the women. Hexagon against Advantage. And then finally, the last match of the day, Group B men, Advantage against the Rafa Nadal Academy. And this is the next match that we've got. The legend, Alejandro Salazar, the veteran, one of the greatest players ever uh, to wield a paddle racket for the women. And her partner, Tamara Icardo, the Spanish player, will take on Delphi Brea, the Argentine player, and Sofia Araujo of Team Advantage, who uh, played in the opening match yesterday in the Hexagon Cup and lost. And if they lose again, against Team Hexagon, they will be out and play no further part. So a lot at stake for Advantage and Brea and Araujo. A quite international uh, match, I would say. You know, it's Spain, Portugal and Argentina. And this Hexagon Cup, the purple heart of paddle here in the center of Madrid arena. Yep, a lot of the crowd just popping out in the gap between uh, matches to gain a get, get a little bit of a refreshment and the DJ is just cranking up the volume we against which we are competing as we slip into the uh, fifth hour of our broadcast today players ready to jump on the court pretty soon we'll be welcoming these two players out and a word on Ale Alejandro Salazar because she Alejandra Salazar because she is a player you know extremely well Maori yes um Alejandra, I think they, they will be first on court together with Tamara Ricardo, as I told you before. Um, Alejandra Salazar has been the number one in the world for quite a long time. Um, 
the women's in the female part of the game, which is the queen of panel. I want to talk about her when she's coming out, but I'm not 100% sure that she's going to be the first one or which team will come up first. But yes, there she is, together with Tamara Ricardo. These two great players will be facing Delphi Brea and Aujo in a couple of minutes. There she comes, Alejandra Salazar, the queen of paddle, together with Tamara Ricardo, jumping on court of this Hexagon Cup 2024. They will be pairing, uh, they will be regular partners from now on as well. They didn't used to play together before. This is going to be the first match they play together in their professional circuit in a high-level competition, sharing with their team the prize money of 1 million euros, Hexagon Cup 2024, first edition. Absolute different level. There we have this beautiful pair from Hexagon team. And after this, we're going to have also the partnership from Argentina and Portuguese mix of Sofia Araujo, the left side player, and the Argentinian highest ranking player, female player, Delfina Brea. Ready to go? Vamos! Here they come to the central court of this fantastic event of Hexagon Cup. Laughing, smiling, beautiful girls jumping on the court. This is Delfina Brea from Argentina, the daughter of Nito Brea, a very well-known coach, a friend of mine, and Sofia Araujo, also the number one in her country, Portugal. Welcome to all the Portuguese people who are watching, who are here the main stadium at the Madrid Arena. So this is going to be a very, very interesting match. First of all, because Team Advantage, which is actually this team that you're watching now, Delphi Brea and Sofia Rojo cannot lose this match. I mean, if they lose this match, it's going to be the second match they lose, and they don't want that. They lost yesterday. Um, and if they lose this match, it would be eliminated in the female, eh? the female side of, the, of this tournament. So they cannot lose. Secondly, because Ali Salazar and Delphi Brea, somehow they have a very similar way of playing and seeing battle, I would say, you know, tactically. So it's going to be very interesting to see how Sophie Araujo and uh, Tamara Ricardo manage the game. If Sofia Araujo goes for more winners as she's used to with the smash, kicking the ball and smashing hard, then uh, um, uh, Virginia, uh, sorry, Virginia, Tamara Ricardo will, will struggle a little bit, but Tamara Ricardo is a little bit more steady player as well, a little bit less power, but a very steady player who can be for this court better, I would say. And they have the support uh, to team advantage's women of the... Uh, Young men who are going to be playing in the last match of the day, the Group B men encounter uh, between Team Advantage and Rafa Nadal. That is uh, Martin Di Neno and Juan Teo are watching on and supporting them. And these are the two players who they face. There we have, I mean, every time I see Alex Salazar on court, is <laughs> for me, it's incredible because uh, when I used to compete, I used to really see her in every single tournament, and I know her since the first World Championships we met in the 1999, I think it was. That says the, the, how old we are. Uh, I think uh, she is one year younger than me. I think she's 38 or 39. 38 years of age. Yes, 38. And, uh, well, but super professional in all aspects. You know, the, the, the kind of player, the kind of person she is, is brilliant. And uh, that's why she's been keeping number one in the world for many years. A good partner to have around, good person to have around, as well as all the other players we have here at the Hexagon Cup. The official picture of the players with the umpire. 
with the umpire jump on the picture. Not really. <laughs> Didn't want to. <laughs> yes, no worry. The official picture of the four. So, Alejandro I Salazar. 38 years of age, from Madrid, the number one first in her career in 2009, and then she had to wait another seven years before regaining the number one status, which she did in 2016, and then another four years before she became number one again in 2020, and then held the number one status all the way until 2022. Over her career, she has won 58 titles. It's not bad, isn't it? It's not bad at all. It's all right. It's all right. And more to go, I guess. 81.5% of all her professional encounters, she's won. That's her win. 81.5% wow. of matches she has won over the span of her long career, including during that run a 23 match winning streak in which she produced 23 victories. Quite incredible. Yes, well, she was number one in the world with, uh, I can say, the, the last few, which was uh, Marta Marrero. Um, and then it was with Ari Sanchez as well, and then with uh, Gemma Triay. Two of those players, Marta Moreo has become a mother very years, uh, um, not long time ago, so congratulations to her. She's watching, ex-professional tennis player as well, who became a paddle player. Um, so Ali Salazar was number one for many years. She's 37. Oh, I've added an extra year to her by mistake. My, my mistake, I thought she was 38. So she's not as quite as old as I was making out, but... Uh, I'm thinking about that I'm two years older than her. It doesn't really make me happy, that. <laughs> well, she plays on the right side always, and as a right side player, right-handed, she has to be a very tactical player, emotionally very conservative player as well, and, and you know, that's what she has developed at the highest. And there are many young players here at this Hexagon Cup who, when you read interviews with them, uh, when they are asked by journalists, who is, who's the role model, who's the icon, who, which player did you want to aspire to be? And they will almost always tell you the answer is Alejandra Salazar. She has been, if you like, the, the, the forebearer, the mother to many of them, including perhaps Tamara Icardo from Valencia, 28 years of age. Gave an interview recently to the press where she has promised to celebrate if she were to win here at the Hexagon Cup with a big paella dinner. Ha, because and, she um, comes from Valencia. For, for Valencia tradition. And uh, <laughs> she's also promised to dye her hair pink. No way. Yeah, apparently. But are they going to get the one million euros to her? Well, she to said to do that or she's going to do it just... She did actually, she said I'll dye pink highlights, which is... Probably not going exactly the whole the whole way, but uh, well, you know that could be good. She should do it in pink. Uh, sorry, in um, the purple, I would yeah, say. Yeah. You know, I, I would talk to her uh, later on. I do. Hey, Tamara, what about if you change the pink color to purple, like the purple court at the Hexagon Cup? Delphi Brea, the daughter of the coach of uh, Team Advantage, Nito is her coach, her father, 24 years of age, ranked number three in the world, Delphi Brea. Paired, yes. partnered normally on the circuit with uh, Bea Gonzalez. Exactly, very, uh, I would say, she very concentrates her serve in every single match. Uh, is, the, is also, is like the little version of Ali Salazar, I would say. That perhaps could be quite big, you know, the, when you hear comparing uh, such a player like Alice Salazar with someone else, I don't like comparing, but, you know, if I got to compare her uh, with someone on the circuit, I would say, you know, a kind of like a Martita Ortega or that kind of player, but I would say that the best one is uh, to compare with uh, Alice Salazar because the style of uh, the way of thinking tactically, their bandejas, the loves, the momentum on when to go for winners or not, reminds me a lot of how Alejandro also plays. And there we have uh, Sofia Araujo, completely the opposite. She wants to go for winners. She's a very unpredictable player. Uh, even though she, if she can make some mistakes sometimes, but she goes for an amazing amount of winners as well. And that's what actually uh, Delfina Brea needs for being a right side, right handed player. She needs a left side player who covers a little bit more the court and the overhead shots in order to kick some ball out and to kick uh, some smashes as well. So we're gonna see Sofia Araujo on fire today, trying to lead this game and win the match because otherwise they will be eliminated. Mari, I think I'm right in saying that Salazar and Araujo are gonna partner one another in 2024. Is that, are you aware of that? Or maybe I've mis 
No. Mis misremembered my research. They, Gemma Trim? They, they partner before. They partner before. Yes. They, so yes. they do have a spell of, of exactly. partnering one so, another. Alice yeah. Salazar was number one with Gemma Triay. Yeah. The thing was that Gemma Triay, I'm um, sorry, the Alice Salazar got injured, her elbow. Yes? Yep. So he, she was injured and she had to do go to, uh, through the surgery. And yeah? Araujo so, and then Ara when, so into that role. When they tried to come back, then um, Gemma Triay was somehow comfortably playing with Martita. Yep. So she said, hey, Ale, listen, I know that we were number ones in the world, but now I'm playing with Martita. And so Ale said, OK, no problem. I will go to play with Sofia Araujo. So they played with Sofia Araujo for a few tournaments, but was like a kind of a fixing that situation that just happened to her. Now, when the, match, where the year ends, then was uh, Ale Salazar's uh, decision to play with Tamara Ricardo. So she gave her a call and said, Tamara, listen, would you like to play with me? And what do you think that Tamara said? Yes. yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. And likewise, Alejandra Salazar, towards the back end of 2023 last year, she also uh, entered a few uh, competitions on the circuit where she did partner Tamara Ricardo. So they have yes. played uh, with one another uh, before yes. on a few occasions. Yes, exactly. So it's going to be a little bit spicy, this match, you know? Um, it's going to be a little bit spicy because I believe that, you know, that but listen, you know what I mean? I mean, Tiempo. in this match, it would be like kind of Sofia Araujo trying to tell, to say, Ale, listen, I want to beat you just because to show you that I'm better than Tamara, that you chose it to play this year. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a kind of uh, a game that happens in a, this beautiful sport that, you know, that's all I always say, you know, why Maori do you like paddle that match? Well, he's been teaching me so many things, not only uh, to play paddle, but life you know in life uh, to be a, a more comprehensive to be more vulnerable when you need to be you know to be a good partner to listen to the coach to work hard to take different decisions even if you make an unforced error to come back as soon as you can so all those things which makes paddle interesting maria silvela the coach of team hexagon Vamos activa de la deducción, eh. Hatching dinero, doing an aeroplane behind them. Nito Brea, the father and the coach of Delphi Brea. Y ya lo tenemos claro. Aparte, ahí lo bueno que también Tamara no te amenaza con pegarle. Vos podés jugar tranquila más en el fondo para usar este. Viste que ayer estaba más adelante porque luego no te sale bien. Very good, Nito. Te condiciona que la puedas traer ella. Pero esta Tamara no es que le pegue la trae. He looks super relaxed for a man who's uh, just about to be taken to the court after this. Where well, he'll be playing. You know, I'm also from Argentina as uh, Dineno, but I don't know what he's saying, actually. It's Martin Dineno. <laughs> he's pair number three in the world nowadays. Such a player, such a person. A friend of mine as well. Love this guy. Well, Nita was telling to the girls, hey, listen, don't relax, relax, because they will play more bandejas, and they know that, uh, that Tamara Ricardo is not a kind of aggressive player. Yeah, so, so hey, relax, and we play love, even if the love is not that deep, just relax and play from the back. We're going to play with transitions from back to forward. All right, let's get this one on then, the third Vamos match equipo. of uh, day two. <laughs> and it could hardly be of more significance uh, for Team Advantage. Andy Murray's team. I wonder if somewhere in the world Andy Murray is watching on. Andy, how are you doing? Say hi to Jamie as well. Jamie Murray there, a paddle lover, man. They're both <laughs> paddle lovers. And to Judy, Judy Murray as well. Oh, yes. Just say the whole Murray family. Yeah, the whole Murray family and the old um, world of paddle from the UK. We say hello. So the Hexagon team getting it underway with their service. Brea on the right-hand side of the court for team advantage. Arujo playing opposite Salazar on the left-hand side, right-hand side of the court for Salazar. He looks for a powerful smash and again forcing Brea you know, into that corner, but going a bit long with that one. And uh, the net. first point goes the way of team advantage. 
sorry, in Spanish, you know, we said uh, we call uh, Alejandra Bandejandra because she plays she plays Bandejandra. Bandejandra because she plays the bandejas, you know, uh, a very good bandejas. She's the wom the, the bandeja women, you know. And we say Bandejandra, Bandejandra. I love the fact that there are so many nicknames in Panama. <laughs> yes. Uh, we use so many nicknames. Motes in, in Spanish. Y apodos in Argentina. In Argentina. What was your nickname, Mary, when you were playing? No. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> Mary? Yeah, Is that Mary. it? Just Mary. Thanks, God. They, they, they got too many, and so they just didn't use any. <laughs> yeah. Well, just out, I think, for Ricardo there. Yep, number yeah, 30 yeah. then. Wasn't much in it, but it was uh, palpably hey. hitting the side wall before the Last surface. 30, yeah. So a little bit of pressure straight away on the Ricardo serve. Love 30. Opportunity for team advantage to uh, score a psychological and tactical point straight away in the opening game of this, their second match. <laughs> but no answer to that one for Mikado. Just on the pico. Yeah. On the piquito. Just there between the side fence and the, and the, um, and the side wheel. You know, that, that place on the court make that the ball rebounds very weirdly. You know, it's unpredictable. Oh, ah, Salazar! Por cuatro, por cinco, por seis! <laughs> Unbelievable shot from... Ah, it was presented to her on a plate, though, wasn't it? That lofted ball there, and bang, she made no mistake. Well, everything comes from the great shot of the back wall that um, Sofia Araujo didn't cover her side where he should have done it because the ball was coming from a parallel side. But anyways, because Alejandra Salazar with her forehand it's uh, amazing, you know, with the, with, the, with the surf, with the shot of the back wall, with the bandeja, with the forehand volley. All those shots, which are relatives, I would say, similar shots, she does it very well. Yeah. Kick bandeja Sorry. to the side fence, opening angles to Tamara Ricardo. From Love 30 down, they are now a point away from closing out their opening service game. Good response. Ooh. Quick lob, that is a fast lob, not high, not giving any time. Wow. Ah, Salazar and Salazar. Oh. Andrea Salazar. <laughs> Such an amazing fork and volley from the Queen of Paddle, leading now 1 0 with the um, hexagon team. Closes the game out. Yeah, effective, <laughs> powerful, authoritative, and settling whatever nerves were there for uh, Team Hexagon. Now then, Maori, you were just pointing out earlier on in this match, this, this point in the court. Yeah. Uh, what did you call it again in, in Spanish? Pico, pico. The pico. The pico. Just so it's where the perspex and the metal of the caging yes. meet. And, and that can produce a very uneven bounce. Yes, very, very, very. And that's a place actually where you try when you kick the ball with a smash, the kick bandeja, or when you try to play for a forward kind of back, you try to aim that place. Specifically sometimes. at that place. Well, sometimes you do. You wouldn't do it if you're a, a beginner. You just try to hit the ball back. But these players can do it. Well, Salazar stamped her authority all over that, rescuing with her partner, Ricardo, from a uh, perilous Love 30 position down in the opening service game. They've got an opportunity to apply some pressure now to the serve of Team Advantage. What a block. Yeah. What a blocking shot from uh, Delphi Brea with that backhand. You know, usually blocking shots with the backhand is much more comfortable than doing with, with the forehand, yeah? Ricardo under a bit of pressure. <laughs> 30 love. Little Miss A. I said today that she is very, very good with a shot off the back wall, volleys, and bandeja. I didn't say off the side fence. <laughs> 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 so, very well done. Uh, I think that the shot 
that Delphi played was very good as well. Look at that serve. If I were Sofia, I would just step slightly behind, not that close, because they're not playing, they're not playing uh, Chiquitas that yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Actually, um, Ale and, and, and Icardo are playing a little bit harder, the shots. So I wouldn't, and, uh, or Lofs, so I wouldn't step that close. I would just, but I would stay where she is now. But you, as you, you will see that she does boom, and she starts stepping a little bit forward. Forcing the tempo of all these points yes. at the moment, aren't they? That's Team exactly advantage. what I meant. That's exactly what I meant. They won the point just because Sofia wow. stays slightly behind, being able to kick that ball. If she stays slightly forward, she wouldn't reach that ball. She would have to go back, replay a lob, and that's when all the big mountain of mistakes could happen. But very well done, Sofia, with that kick bandeja, allowing Delphi to finish the point with that forward ball and back and forth. Yep, forcing, that was out. forcing the ball all the way out. The so there we go. Well done. 1 0. Even. I love because all the matches are very close in this Hexagon Cup. Very well done how they pick the they picked all the teams. Yeah, it's pretty evenly balanced, isn't it? We've seen very few Super. I think over the first day and a half of action and counting, I think we've had one set that has been one sided. Other than that. It's been close all the way to the finishing line of every set and every match in every pairing. I hope this one as well, because then we have only one match left. Only one. It's going to be Team Advantage against Rafa Nadal. Murray Academy against team. Nadal. <laughs> <laughs> so Martin Dineno and Juan Deyo are going to be facing Alex Ries and Franco Stupatuk. Franco Stupatuk and Alex Ries, as they used to play together, um, but it's the first time they will play on this purple heart of panel here in the Hexagon Cup. Martin Dineno and Tello, remember that they won yesterday against Lucho Capra and um, Fede Cingotto. That was a tight encounter as well, wasn't it? Hey, Sofia is on fire. They have started well. <laughs> Sofia is doing very well. Well, 30 up now, and again, as they were in the first uh, game of this set, this opening set of this match, They've got a love 30 advantage, and they can apply a bit of pressure now to the hexagon serve. Salazar with the serve this time. Oof. That was out. That was good yeah. happen. You know, it could happen to her that she would go for an amazing shot or that little unforced error by risking. But as I told you, you know, this is what Delphi Brea needs at some point. It's a kind of player who is uh, aggressive and danger. The bandejas, the bandejas, and, and the volleys that Sophie was playing were all of them in the air. Three break points now for team advantage. Early pressure for Team Hexagon, for yes. Salazar and Nicardo. Yes. It's how quickly it can happen. Three opportunities to break the serve. Well, don't forget, in the first game, they were 30-40 as well. No, there was love 30. They were love 30. Yeah, love 30, sorry. Lujo lobs it deep. Nicardo. Beautiful to opening the angles for both of them. Great amount of power from Delphi's back and volley. Salazar read that perfectly, saw where Brea was going to place the ball. Yeah. Ah, wow. brilliant from Alaujo, aggressive, to the feet, oh, yeah. unanswerable. Oh, Job done, break yes. for team advantage, scrapping for their lives in the Hexagon Cup. The best possible start, they first one one in the opening set. So it's a family affair, Nito Brea and his daughter Delphi and Araujo, who has started extremely well. Let's have a little listen in, Mauri. We've just judged the coach now. Delphi is the coach at the moment. Aha, there we go. Let's listen. Hace el esfuerzo de mantener la red y mantener la presión y tampoco te compliques 
¿Viste como esa dejada? A donde tengas el mejor tiro. Claro, pero a donde mejor tengas el tiro, estás perfecta. No, no, pero igual estás perfecta porque vos ahí todas las que estuviste presionando, que le entraste por Tamara y después cuando fuiste por el medio también con la bolida. Valientes, ¿eh? Sin miedo. Sin miedo, valientes. Eso. Si nos metemos, nos metemos. No lo preparo para... Entro, entramos. Vamos, ¿eh? Don't be afraid of anything, the coach says to them. Don't be afraid of anything if you're going to prepare. Mala suerte en este juego. Dos cintas han tenido en los dos primeros gonna, puntos. Mala pata. If you're going to prepare the point, Va. go forward and vamos, go for vamos. it. Well, no need to panic for Salazar and Ricardo, but they have work to do already in this first set, having just been broken by team advantage. Huge amounts of experience, in particular from Salazar. And Ricardo is a seasoned professional as well, the uh, player from Valencia. But on the evidence of the first three games, they have started more sluggishly. And uh, the team in blue, team advantage, have come out of the blocks very fast, very aggressively, yeah. and have broken the serve. And uh, it looks like they have, well, as their name suggests, they do have the advantage at the moment. Look at that defensive two shots that Ali Salah Ali just played. Sofia Araujo trying to do what the coach said, trying to keep in a position as much as they can. She should have run forward there. She was in the air. That's why she couldn't really step forward quick. She thought Tamara would play a bandeja. So, love 15. Sofia Araujo, the only Portuguese player in the Hexagon Cup, serves wide. Second service. Oh, well, tried too hard for that one. I told you today before, Ned. I mean, for, for those smashers, for those who like smashing, for the smash, you need time to prepare the shot. If you're going to smash when the ball, when the lob is coming very quick, you're not going to be able to smash comfortably, and you can either do all that, all that mistake or reduce the amount of power with your smash. Where Ale Salazar would have reached it. Now that was much so, better, wasn't it, from Araujo there? Yes, she took yes. the time to place the ball. Put yes, a bit of spin but the ball on it. was coming slightly slower, and she and she played a kind of a vibra, not a smash. That was long. Or well, maybe it wasn't. It looked long. It wasn't. No. Let's see, atrás, 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 because the players were behind. Uh, so they level it at 30 all. Hey, Still one point away, though, aren't they, uh, Team Hexagon, from creating that break point opportunity. That hasn't changed. Every time they are within this kind of position against the, the serve of Team Advantage, they have to try and fashion at least a break point. Yes. At the net, Ricardo forced back, smash. And again. The match is there between oh, these two yeah. players, I think. Between these two players, the one who is more conservative, the one who wins more yeah, points yeah, yeah. between these two, I think will be the one that makes the difference. Well, there's the break point that they wanted yes. to try and uh, create. And here's the opportunity. Can they take it? Can they break straight back? Well, well Brea's, Brea's barely, from, yeah, yeah. Brea has barely touched the ball in this game, but when she did, it was a telling and unforced error. And that is a break straight back, and we're level again at two apiece. And the serve reverts to Team Hexagon. In conversation, Salazar listening to Icardo. Do you see, do you see Alice Salazar that it's like only just by being there, you know, she, her face, the, the, the body language is a complete... 
is in harmony, you know? It's, she's very comfortable on court. It doesn't matter who she's playing against. Perea couldn't dig that one out. Yes. 15, love. Down the middle, slow, and Vibora cross court. And again, and another same one shot. Cross court. Better the second time around, and 30 love before you know it. Delphi Brea has come under a bit of pressure in the last two games. How quickly the game can turn, the momentum, the tide of confidence sweeping through. Team Hexagon at the moment, as they find their range on this court. Remember that they're making their debut at the Hexagon Cup. Brea and Araujo played yesterday, they know the conditions. Wow, what a chiquita after Alice forehand. Araujo somehow volley. managed to get a racket to that, and brilliant block. And Another now... chiquita cross court. Amazing reach from Alejandro Salazar. Reset. Both the players in blue at the net, looking for the opportunity to find that winner as the rally slows down. The winner is and we coming. Reset. A winner is coming. There you go. You and called it. Salazar, even though you that, uh, it. Delphi was behind the line, I think that the ball took a little weird rebound off the back wall because the ball was very deep. And that's why Delphi struggled to hit it back. It wasn't that difficult because she was behind, awaiting for that coming shot. But because the rebound of the back, well, I think, was a little bit um, complicated for Delphi to get it back. Well done for Ali Salazar, anyways. That was 40 love, huh? first. 40 love. Second service. Tamara Ikado. Yeah. There's no way back Woo! from that. <laughs> <laughs> you, me, both. No. Okay, 40 love. Mountains so to climb still in this uh, game. 40-15. They're very serious in this match. They don't want to lose a point because they know they cannot lose a match. So... Point by point, clawing their way back into this game if they can. Good block. Yesterday, Sofia Araujo was playing a little bit more cross-court, those shots of the back wall, and now suddenly she's changing down to the parallel to Alejandro Salazar. Yeah, it's the fourth time she does it since the beginning of the match. Beautiful love cross-court. No space for a winner to Tamari Cardo. That was a good lob as well from Bayer this time, but wonderful from Salazar. And this is a terrific rally. And an amazing point from Delphi Brian oh, Sofia yeah, yeah. One more point to go to get a golden point. Trying to break back again. That's what we mean by point by point. Just think about what lies ahead of you. Step by step. Win the next point and it is a break point opportunity. A lot of talking in this game from both pairings. Yeah. Was that the umpire just saying? Yeah, time. Time. Tiempo. Time. And now they got 20 seconds between points. It's kind of high. That's out. And there we have golden point. Yes, so that was just sheer concentration and willpower and tactical cleverness. And now, all of a sudden, they are faced with the tantalizing prospect of breaking back <laughs> all of the matches. 2-0, juice, 34, 30, 40, 3-0, 4-0, 5-0, tiebreaks, love it. Okay, good love. Giving the responsibility to Tamari Cardo, who took the responsibility to put this match 3-2 up to Hexagon team. And they cross the winning line, 3-2 to Team Hexagon.
Well, that was much better, and they look more relaxed. 2-1 down, now 3-2 up, and uh, the pressure swings round and falls on the shoulders of Team Advantage now. Seven winners for Team Hexagon to the five winning shots of Team Advantage. On the other hand, Hexagon have eight unforced errors to the six from Team Advantage. It's very even. Swings yeah, and roundabouts. Similar. Swings and roundabouts. Very similar. That's why the, the, the match is that even, you know. It's, it's three, two. And, and how, how long it's been already? What? Half an hour? 25 minutes? So it's long because, yeah. because the rallies are long as well. So the coach of Hexagon was asking about the. Uh, to go more aggressive to Tamara Ricardo as she did in the last point, she was the same when they are at the end. Martin Dineno getting involved with the coaching and the advice, having a quick word from the back there in the ear of Sofia Arujo. Of course, Team Hexagon's men were involved in the last match of uh, yesterday's action with that absolutely brilliant victory by Juan Martin and uh, Paquito Navarro. Can Alejandra Salazar and Tamara Ricardo repeat their success? Team Hexagon's women there looking increasingly confident in this set. And in the background, wearing his glasses, Juan Martin just waving at someone in the crowd. Yesterday's hero, the 48-year-old who won the last match with his partner, Paquito Navarro, who played at times some breathtaking paddle. It's tight. There's not much in this opening set. 3-2 at the moment to this pair you're looking at. Tamara Ricardo, Alejandra Salazar, 37 years of age. They're going to want to put pressure on Team Advantage here. If they were to break the uh, serve here, that would be a body blow in this opening set. What a touch. That one makes a difference between one player and the other one. When, when oh. Ali touches the Team ball, is, it makes a slight difference on the... Because paddle is not a matter of, of how open the angle, how fast you hit, but it's the amount of power, depending on where your opponent's position is, depending on the strength or weaknesses of your opponent, so where you're going to hit that shot, and actually only masters can do that. Thirty love. That camera angle was very revealing, wasn't it? From the perspective of the yes. Team Hexagon pairing. It just made it very plain how difficult it is to find that gap and uh, split the defensive play of these two players in blue. Araujo wants that Ooh. and aims it. And that was quite right, deliberate. Yeah. And that's a genuine apology there, I think, but she meant that. <laughs> I think actually she's trying to come forward and, you know, have five with, uh, with Tamara. I think Tamara didn't see her. That might hurt, man. Struck that, her on that, the leg. She'll that get a hurts. Set. Yeah. Well, it won the point. <laughs> yes. And perhaps the next point as well, because... Uh, 40 left. Not really. Tamara just recovered very quick. Out by the door. With a little bit of luckiness uh, by Alejandra Salazar, the ball. After that. But she was in a very good position after the first volley. There it is, just skipping well, over the top of the net and out. A yes. little bit of good fortune there for Alejandro Salazar, but uh, Alejandro Salazar, but Hexagon have got a, a lot of work to do if they're going to claw their way back into this game, which they aren't, because that's it. 40-15 oh, yeah. becomes 3-3. Now then, Hexagon. Salazar takes the ball. Salazar to serve. Delphi Brea to receive. Rufo claws that one out somehow. Good, very good, yeah. and well paid back yeah. defensive uh, game from Delphi and, and Sophie. Yeah, from both players. Yes, fantastic. Defense. Fending off similar shots from the back wall. Yeah. Love 15. And Tamara, there was a weird mistake, yeah? There's not 
It's quite rare to see that mistake from a bandeja. And there she goes. Ah. Well, it's something, you know, that, um, I mean, all the players know, but I still don't know why they would play a deep lob to to Alejandro's forehand side. I mean, I, it's, it's going to be hard anyways. If we play the lob to the middle, should we go with the bandeja to the middle? Or, Well, that's why she's been at the top of the ranking for that long time together with different partners. Turns out she's quite good at paddle. <laughs> yes, <laughs> she's different level. Yeah, there's not many uh, ways through her, is there? This, this game is very important. You know, we always say in uh, I don't point, know in tennis, this point is I don't very know in important. tennis, but in paddle, we do that. This, we always say that the seventh yeah, game yeah. in the match, uh, it would be one of the most important ones. And you know, if Delphi and Sophie win this game, and then they lead in the next change ends for five three, if they win their their game. That's it. You see three you see? break points now. Three break points in succession will follow and, and this is a major opportunity in this critical confidence. seventh game <laughs> don't give confidence to that girl from portugal don't give any confidence because if you do she doesn't need it really does she? it. <laughs> she's not lacking in confidence. what a shot from oh, oh so unlucky for the taking wasn't it <laughs> so Sofia unlucky Aruko. she apologizes to her partner but actually you know she didn't try to do anything you know she just tried to get the ball back. Just a it simple, was like a simple error. Long, yeah. With both arms open, that's why she lost a little bit of power. I would say that that's why the ball went to the to the net. Still a break point. Yeah, gets the ball across. Yeah. Salazar at the net. And, and that was out. That's out. And now he's uh, golden point. Juice <laughs> three zero. Fantastic match. Very, 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 very close. It's bubbling up nicely, isn't it? It's going to be another tense encounter. And at the end of every point, there is a lot of communication between Ricardo and Salazar, agreeing as a pair how they're going to approach the serve. Oh, and, and that, there she went. She puts her hands to her well, face as she know, knows yeah, the because, potential significance of yeah, that. Yeah, because she's using a shot that she's not used to do, which is a smash. But anyways. Very well done. Well, delight uh, from the team advantage pair and all the men, men players behind were uh, up and out of their seats to applaud this moment, but it's a moment to forget for Ricardo into the top of the net. Look at that, Her hands feet for the face. On the position. Ay, yeah, 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 That's yeah. why she's regretting for that mistake. She didn't get even, didn't get the feet on a proper position, a side of position to smash. She didn't have the time. And even though she does, perhaps, it's not her uh, strength of uh, smashing, like, for example, uh, Sofia Araujo will be. Have a look on the court coverage from Alejandra Salazar. Yeah, the innovation of the Hexagon Cup, one of the many innovations, the heat map. You can see where each player operates in which side of the court. What? Alejandra Salazar You could tell that she's Team Hexagon. You can tell she's always in the right position. Yeah, when she's defending, she's defending. When she's attacking, she's attacking. She's not like in between, for example, as Arturo Coelho was in the match before that. He, she's, he was in between the back court and the, and, the, and the center of the court. And Tamara Ricardo, you could tell that she's the player who has to be slightly more in front, allowing Alejandra Salazar to do the job when they are at the back of the court defending, as Alejandra is a very good defender. Um, so. Here we have the two court coverage from Tamara Ricardo and Alejandra Salazar. On this fascinating first stuff. match together. Fascinating stuff, and it's a fascinatingly poised first set. Now, the question is, can Team Advantage hold their advantage to the finish line now? Two games away from closing out the first set. Remember, Team Advantage have to win this match or they will be eliminated from the Hexagon Cup. It matters not just for them, it matters also for Juan Teo and Martin Dineno sitting behind them. Yes, Seba Nerone. 
al servicio como las pruebas social It matters for Juan Teo and for Martin Dineno because even if they progress and the women go out, it's all about the points tally for all the different players in all the different categories who represent the team at the end of five days of uh, competition. When we find out who wins the Hexagon Cup outright, it's a group effort. So for the men, they need the women to get through here. And likewise, the women need the men to get through. What a Vivora to the corner, which is actually, uh, you know, that shot is in between a Vivora and a Bandeja because there is not a big amount of wrist movement. The preparation is short, but the ball goes very, very good to the corner, giving that motion that the Vivora shot does. So very well done from Sophie, um, from Delphi Brea. And what well, this is 30-15 to Araujo. Araujo is playing well. She's doing the job. And if they play like this, I think they are a little bit ahead. That's why they are winning now. Yeah, but what I mean is they keep playing like this and they don't lose the control of the match. Uh, they can be leading the game. Get to touch to it. Does it Cardo? Ball still in play. Too fantastic shot from Salazar. Too good that's as exactly said. what uh, Nito Brea was uh, telling to, to her before. When Alejandra, Alejandra plays the bandeja to you, you try to kind of block it with a half volley, so your shot goes slightly more to the middle, so Ale doesn't get with the back with the forehand, but didn't work. I mean, she tried to do it, but Ale Salazar came to the with her forehand volley, anyways. Quite a big point coming up here. Team advantage concede this point. There'll be break points aplenty for Team Hexagon. Second serve. All these key moments, one after the other, as we get close to the end of the first set. Ale doing something different, stepping a little bit forward. Let's see if it oh. works, and it did. It did indeed. Just powered her way there. Yeah. Powered her way, Ricardo, eventually to forcing the error, and they found the net. And uh, here we go. Think about Two that. Two great points. Ale Salazar never, we, she would never go forward with that shot. But with 30-0, 3-4, she knew there was a very important point. She did it at the right moment to change something into the tactical part of the game. Take a risk. Yes. But it's, it's paid off. risk. And, uh, it's yeah, not a, a risk to trying to smash a from behind the line. Do you know what I mean? Considered risk, and it's paid off. Very well done. And there we there go. There we go. That is the break. Four -oh. Break back. Oh, four -oh. Back Another with break. Serve. Break and a break and a break and a break. Love it. Now then, can they hold? <laughs> That's hey. the next question. Ricardo and Salazar have to hold serve, otherwise it's all for nothing. Again. Making use of those 20 seconds before the umpire calls tiempo. Well, that, was out. that bandeja, yeah, was complete and natural. Yeah. Didn't really make a lot of sense. That's why Alejandra Salazar regrets badly. She says, "Why did I do that?" She almost, almost regretted that before she hit it. <laughs> yes. But she did it anyway. <laughs> so, love 15. <gasps> I was going out. I was going out, I think. That's the worst part. I lost one very important match by being hit with my opponent's smash. The smash was going out and they hit me. That would have gone out, I think, for Delphi Brea. Salazar perhaps but, a little lapse yeah, in judgment. But didn't miss it. And look at the lot. Oh, look at the lot. Look at the lot. Brilliant from Salazar. Alejandra Salazar, yeah. unbelievable player. Playing that fantastic lob cross court. And hey, it's not the first time that Delphi does um, a mistake, makes a mistake off the back wheel with an easy shot, I would say. I mean, easy for these kind of players, yeah? 
30-15, on serve. Tiempo. Tiempo. <laughs> Get on with it. Yes. So if you want to learn some Spanish, here is also the place to be. Bandeja, víbora, tiempo, por cuatro, por tres. Different level. Well, the banda, banda vivero, the combination <laughs> shot. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I invented that, but it's not. It's not yeah. <laughs> Alejo just lifting it over the head of Ricardo, forcing her into the corner and bringing the two players in blue to the net. And that was out. Long from Brea. <laughs> Shaking hands, smiling faces from the hexagon team. Tamara Ricardo and Ale Salazar. It seems that they start enjoying a little bit more. Also, the balls. This is getting serious now for team advantage. Lose this game, and they are going to have to serve it out to stay in this set. Beautiful Vivora pushing back to Delphi Brea. Nice touch from Brea, sends Salazar back, Araujo in the right place at the net. Ah, oh, no. such yes. aggressive, no. Potres, yes. the Portuguese player, from Sofia Araujo. took total control of that point and dominated it. That was brilliant from Araujo. Portugal is here. Well <laughs> done, Sofi. Look at that, look at that. Coming forward, stepping forward, nothing else to do to the hexagon team at that point. <laughs> But still, game point for Team Hexagon. Yes. After their standard conference, it's time to serve again. Can they get over the line and make it 5-4 with this serve? Wow, wow. Oh, my goodness. Fantastic point. Fantastic oh! point. Fantastic bandeja from Bandejandra. And this is 5-4 to the Hexagon team. Absolutely fantastic. Class response from a class athlete. 5-4. They're close to winning the first set. Andrea Ballester is down in the crowd, and I think she's unearthed a famous Spanish comedian. Miki Nadal, la de veces que yo te he escuchado en tu programa decir que tenías prisa, que tenías un partido de pádel. Tenías pádel, claro, que tenías pádel y hoy no te has querido perder estar aquí. No, 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 no. Esta es una oportunidad inmensa de poder venir a ver a, ver a grandes maestros aquí, a ver cómo la mueven. Qué gusto de verles. Que te ha enganchado a ti el pádel, ¿de qué manera, no? Pues sí, la verdad es que esto engancha mucho, ¿eh? engancha a todo el mundo. A más jóvenes, a, a mayores, a mujeres, a hombres, a chicos, a chicas. La verdad es que es un deporte muy, 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 muy divertido y que en el que haces comunidad también y muchos amigos. Sufriendo aquí con las chicas que te he visto, ¿eh? Sí, sí. He venido a ver a Alejandra, que la conocí personalmente hace poquito, pero vamos, a disfrutar del juego de las cuatro. Me encantan. Y luego los chicos, que también me gusta mucho. Muy bien, muchísimas gracias. A disfrutar, Miki. Gracias. Well, thank you very much, Andrea. My Spanish wasn't up to it, hence my lack of love. Well, sure he just said that he loves the sport of ballet <laughs> just because, the, yeah, he's a, he's a very uh, famous comedian here in Spain. In Spain. No relation of Rafa Nadal, no? Uh, no, 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 no. Otherwise, he would be on court, perhaps. Uh, <laughs> no, what I mean is that uh, he said that he loves the sport of ballet, he loves Ale Salazar, that they're close, and that uh, he loves the sport of ballet just because, you know, he gets so uh, many friends around this sport, which is conquering the world of, uh, of the sports doubles. We have reached the business end of the first set in this uh, clash in women's group A between Team Hexagon and uh, Team Advantage. And it is Team Advantage, you have the disadvantage. They are 5-4 down and they are out of road, really. They will be serving in the next game, but they have to hold. If they don't, then the first set is gone and their chances of remaining in the Hexagon Cup will be hanging by a thread. <laughs> ah. And Di Mario may be like a, a little bit worried about this, but he might be still trusting 100% in his team. 
It's a great team, the advantage team, but it's also the hexagon one. Comes out slightly behind the line. And just in case the part of the players was going to challenge and they have any doubt or discussion, they will not be discussed because we've got I don't know how many cameras around the court. Lots. Yes. In case the challenge is asked for any of the players. Bit of good fortune there for Salazar. Sits up. Araujo with the big lob. And again, just trying to dig it out with a back to the wall and forces <laughs> an, yes. an error there. They knew the point was important. Every point matters in this yes. game, doesn't it? 15 love. But you know, this first point, if they lose the first point and they're losing in games and losing in points, for the mental part of the game, it could be a little bit struggling. But it's not the case. Now it's 15 love. They can risk now a little bit more. They can play a little bit more relaxed. Sophie and Delphi trying to even this scoring to 5-5. Five five. Tactical rally. What? That was a great... Yeah, that was venom and power precision. and precision. <laughs> and Brea needed end, that. Yeah? Ne she needed it's that like for a, her confidence, I think. It's like a cartoon. <laughs> yeah? Amazing <laughs> smash in the air. It wasn't a smash, actually. It was a high volley, but moving the wrist, which uh, produced much more power than with your shoulder. Some of the power came from the fact that she was charging forward as well at the ball. Yeah. Her forward momentum added to the uh, force of that smash. Oh, she's done really well Whoa, there. Yes, and that, that was a brilliant that passing that shot from man. nowhere. <laughs> Fantastic from Brea, and that is 40 love on her serve. And now they can relax to some extent and just get over the line and then see what they can do if they close this game out. Try somehow to uh, break the Team Hexagon serve in the next game, if that's what's going to happen. Haven't won this game yet, though. One more point. That was in the pico again. That edge. And again, oh, you're going to get those crazy girls. Oh, i tell you what, that was their best goal. That was their best service game, and they saved it to a point in the set where they absolutely had to deliver. Well, they play under pressure, yeah? They like playing under pressure, I would say. Have a look on that shot. Oh, my goodness. Beautiful. Right, it turns the table on Salazar and on Ricardo. They have to hold that. Otherwise, Team Advantage will be serving for the first set. Kick cross court. Sofia and Delphi stepping forward smoothly. Nice Vibra cross court. Perfect love from Tamara. It was brilliant, wasn't it? A couple of centimeters inside the uh, back wall. That one looks like it. Ooh, was that going to go long? Ricardo couldn't take the risk. She had to play it. Moving to the net now. The match is at the highest moment now is that the all players performing very well have a look what tomorrow Araujo Whoa. moving in for the kill and getting the kill there and uh, first point goes against the serve it's love 15 Araujo made her move when she had to that's the clinical moment that's the match winning shot she waited just slightly more in order to put the ball slightly lower and not to hit that backhand that height at that height, there was very good decision from uh, Sofia Araujo in a very short period of time. Fantastic. Hexagon have lost five oh, what points a block. in a row, but uh, that's turned the tide a bit. That stopped the rot. 15 all. Well, that mistake. Just once Doesn't or twice. Really That's, yeah, once Much or twice she's made errors like that. But other than that, it's been pretty flawless from Salazar. 
15.30 though, big point coming. Swarming all over the net, Araujo and Brea. We're not saying much about Brea, but she hasn't missed for a long time already. I don't want to say anything, just in case she missed now. But Don't say anything, Mary. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I talk about the weather. Yes. Great defense from Araujo. Amazing. Oh. That was a little bit too much, perhaps, uh, after defending those two shots, yeah, stepping yeah, forward yeah. and forward and forward. That it might have been perhaps uh, better to stay back, recover the net in a, in, a, in a different way. Do you know what I mean, net? Perhaps you could have stayed slightly back a little bit, play a lot, and then step forward, because she was already under pressure. Took the risk, and on yes. this occasion it didn't pay off. But they still have 30 points in this game. They are still one point away from forcing a break point. This game is still in the balance. That's long. 5-0-30-0. Is this point important? Yes, it is. Every point counts, but there are some points which are a little bit more important than other points, just for many reasons. Well, the clo we the closer people. to the finishing line you get, the bigger they well, come. So Tamara releases some of that power in parallel with a beautiful forehand volley. Team Hexagon get this next point one, then the pressure reverts entirely onto the shoulders of the Portuguese. Sofia Araujo and young Delphi Brea. Oof, what tight, depth. Tight. That's what Juanito was asking. That's a good shot. After the bandeja, go to Alice Baca. Oh. Unlucky. Well, this, I told you. There we go. The six, five to hexagon team Alejandra Salazar and Tamara Cardo leading this first game. Well, vamos, vamos. I wonder what else is being said here. Yes, tiempo, vamos. Yeah, many of them. Now the coach there, Ramiro Choya, is also a pleasure having him here. Get it. From him, they're back. And some advices as well. We can't hear him that much because the microphone is on the main coach. Valiente al medio, eh? Valiente entra tú en el medio. Te peleas con tu compi si hace falta. Valiente, manda, manda ahí. Vamos, eh? Go to the middle, go for those shots. The uh, coach uh, Maria Silvela said to Tamara Cardo, go to the middle if it's needed. Fight with your partner to cover the middle more, 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 more than Alejandra. And uh, Tamara said as well, uh, I mean, I shouldn't play that many shots off the back, well, I should play a little bit more half volleys because um, Araujo gives me that little gap to play back to her feet. But if I play off the back, well, I can give them more time to react. Well, we're going to press the dent now. We're going to be focused and focused on this. Be careful to this. This is the dent that is coming, but it's going to be fast. It's not going to be fast or fast. But it's the one that you're going to be able to get out of the way and everything. Let's go. Let's go. Well, the next game is either going to result in a first set win for Team Hexagon, or we're going to go to a tiebreak. It's as simple as that. Yes, you're complete right, Six, six five. five. Le arrancamos sacando bien. Eh? Vamos, eh? and, uh, vale. Sofia Araujo, the Portuguese player, vale. struggling a little bit in the first vamos, set. Vamos dentro, and struggling in the whole competition of the female side for the advantage team. If they lose this set, they can be in a very tough position. Well, they're halfway position. out. They're, half, they're over halfway out of the competition if they lose this set. It really will be pretty desperate stuff. They'll have to somehow win the second set and then take it to a super tie break. That's their only way of staying in the Hexagon Cup. But for that to happen, they're going to have to lose this set. Yes. And all they need to do is hold their serve to take it to a tie break. We have seen so many close matches in the Hexagon Cup. And this is another one in the conveyor belt of tension. 
The last game when the Sofia served, they won in a 40 love. A very quick game. It's not the case. <laughs> Tamara Ricardo is doing what the coach said to her. Do you want me to cover the middle? Okay. Love 15. I go for it. And there is the coach happy. Well, they listen to her words and put it into action. Exactly. You know, the words, uh, you know, sometimes watching the match from outside it makes uh, for the players. You know, I, as I told you, I used to be a professional player as well. And, and having the coach outside gives a massive uh, advantage and help. If you trust them. Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah. In control. They're in control, Team Hexagon, of this point at the moment. Oh, <laughs> just, just wrong-footed, just slightly wrong-footed there. Oh, that's the, uh, Araujo playing a clever shot. What I had just said about the, the coaching point of you from outside the court is because Padel looks very easy when you watch it. That's the more interesting thing, you know? Padel looks very easy from outside. <laughs> and then just try to go and get a point from Alex Alassari if you can. You know, it's very, very hard to play as these players do. But it looks very simple when you see them performing. So that's why, from the coaching point of view, when you are outside, when you're sitting on the bench, you can study a little bit the game situation that is happening right now, and perhaps that changes throughout the match. Now the tactic is another one. Now we're going to play higher loves, now we're going to play different loves, unless the tactic is working, that you're not going to change it. Oh, well... 15.30 now. Dun. This is getting really tense. Dun. Dun. <laughs> dun, 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 There's a shark dun, dun, in the water dun, dun, somewhere. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, six At five. Least I, I think that's what you were singing anyway. Yes, exactly. Well. Yeah. Oba. Again, it's, it's Anoujo who has it in her game. Sophia just uh, not joking. flick a switch and do something aggressive to get a point one just when she needs it. 30 all. She's not messing around. Serve. But it's still a big point. Hey, listen. This point is the one. Great change from... Oh. Yes, very well played, man. Ah, Salazar very was well kicking herself yeah. there. It was deeply Delphine. placed, but Salazar could have got Such. that back. Such a decision, and, and she's 24 years old. 40 that, 30. That's what it means for the future generations of panel. You know, it's uh, the difficulty. That's why you, you got to play a long time in order to decide properly what to do in which moments. It's oh. 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 I well, thought it was over. I think you thought it might be yeah, over. I yeah. think she thought it, it might be decision. over, but it uh, I got to say. fell into the net. I Golden think it was points, a break point, set point the for only Team thing, Hexagon. The only thing that I would consider is that Alejandro Salazar was very at the back, playing the shot of the back roll, was far away from the net. So even if the drop shot goes one and a half meters after the net, it's both still been a winner. A winner it's all, still a winner. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Long. Second serve. It didn't work neither. Set point for Team Hexagon. Set point for Salazar and Ricardo. High love to the middle. Decisions has to be taken. Down the middle. Freya to the forehand of Salazar. Slight miscue from Salazar. Ricardo calms things down. Big tall lob. Diver across card. Brilliant Diver winner. What a winner from Brea to defend that set point. Two amazing points. Golden point. They are still in this set. It is six each. We're heading to a tie break. Look, Look at that. this shot. Waiting, waiting, waiting. There you go. That shot is massively difficult because the ball is coming from very high. The higher the ball comes, the heavier the ball is. And when you have to do such a shot like that, that vibra that you have to move your wrist, it's very hard to hit the ball in the sweet spot of the racket. So what uh, Del Fibra has just done at that moment in a set point, wow. Into a tie break and it is the mini break straight away for team advantage. Sofia Araujo points to the bench as well, as if to say, come on, we're in this now. And we've taken control of the set, albeit by the slenderest of margins. Six each after 12 games and the first points.
goes to team advantage in the race to seven. Forehand volley down the line. Sofia Raucho, a little bit more confident now. She's a very emotional player, man. When she gets in shape, she's like very powerful. She's like, here I am, opening angles, going with powerful shots. He's a, he's a very good player from Portugal, number one player in her country. That was out. That was long. 3 0 is a significant advantage. There's one Team mini Mexican. break, actually. Just one mini break but, and holding you know, two serves. 3 0 is <laughs> it's like uh, in a tie break. You know, if they play to 30 points, well, it's no problem. It's just three. Yep. But they play to seven. And they've got in the, the chance of two more chances to produce another mini break here. That'll be another first serve. Right, quick lob. Scrambling to the back. Salazar down the middle. Brea reading that perfectly. Araujo lofts a tall one. And that was a big mistake. That was an uncharacteristic big, big error. At a point in the tie break her. where it's really very delicate now for Team Hexagon. 4 0. Leaves them right on the edge. That was in. But Delphi and Sofia at the moment are performing a little bit better, I would say. I'd say so too. 5 0. And now she can afford a smile to go with the uh, shouts of aggression because they're very close to closing out this tie break now. 5 0 is a massive lead in a race to seven. And Team Hexagon have been blown away in the tie break so far. How this game has changed in the opening sets. The fluctuating fortune, fortunes of these two pairings. Everything is going the way in this tie break so far of Team Advantage, <laughs> and that one is long. 5 1, just a chink of light now. Six shots lost played, them. and they uh, go off court for a uh, sip of water and a quick changeover. The coaches, as you explained earlier, Maori, not allowed to intervene at this point technically. It's down to the players in the middle of a tie break. Juan Martin watching on. Teammate, the team hexagon teammate of Salazar and Ricardo. Oh, Delphi, eh? Nito, we heard, we heard that you said, vamos, Delphi. <laughs> Coach, intervention. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, what I went to, to say is that uh, Sophie just missed that forehand volley. And even though they were they're, they're winning still 5 1, but she is that, that kind of player that I love the intensity. She doesn't, you know, forgive herself for any mistake, even if she's winning 5-0 in a tie break, you know. That makes a very complete player. Look where Ali Salazar stays. She knows that he's going to serve to the backhand side. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, luck! Who for is both more sides lucky? There. Who is more lucky? Well, in well, the end, Delphi and Sophie are a little bit more lucky because they're six one yeah. up, and now. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I will bring a violin or uh, next time. Well, just don't bring a shark into the commentary box. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. You know, one of the players in the main circuit is um, called uh, Maxi Sanchez. Hello, Maxi. He was injured last year. Hello, Maxi. I hope that you're OK, buddy. And um, you know that we call him the shark. I didn't know that. Yes. But, I, but uh, nothing surprises me with paddle nicknames. <laughs> you see? The rat, the shark, the cat. OK. The Mozart, the philosopher. Five set points. And there we go. And that's that it. That was long. Salazar a little bit loose again. 
and somehow, somehow, <laughs> Team Advantage have won this yes, first set. They were almost out of it, but they've won it. Incredibly tight affair between the two teams here as Martin Dinedo has a little word with Delphi Brea of congratulation and advice just to keep them focused as they approach the prospects of winning the second set and closing out victory that they need, that the men need for their prospects of winning the Hexagon Cup outright. Remember Dineno and, uh, and Teo having won their opening match yesterday. They'll be in action in the next match and they'll be starting to think about warming up for that and getting ready for that, I would imagine. But that is the summary of what happened in the first set. Total points won. Well, it was shaded in the end. 46-37 going the way of Team Advantage, who win in pretty much every statistic there. More winning smashes, uh, more consecutive points won, uh, more golden points won, higher percentage of points won. So, on balance, if you look at the raw statistics, they did deserve that victory. But at times, it has to be said, it didn't look like set one was going to go their way. Well, a really entertaining first set. Going the way in the end in a tiebreak in an emphatic fashion to Team Advantage, who take that one set to love advantage. And they're halfway there to securing the victory that will keep their hopes alive in the Hexagon Cup. Nothing is guaranteed, I, I think, until uh, the group has been complete, completed tomorrow. But if they can see this one out and take the next set, they will have lost one yesterday and won one today. However, they know they're still in a fight here. And Team Hexagon with uh, Ricardo and Salazar will not give up until they have to. And they were right in this match. In fact, in the latter stages of that set, they were in control of the uh, first set. And they'll be, I think, rubbing their eyes in disbelief at the fact that they lost that tie break so convincingly. Probably a bit shell-shocked, to be honest. They were steamrolled in the tie break by an increasingly confident performance from Araujo with all her aggression and uh, Delphi Brea, who rediscovered some fantastic composure in the closing moments of that first set. Get things out of the way, though, in this all-important set, too. Of course, whatever happens, Ricardo and Salazar will be back in action tomorrow and still in, potentially, with a chance of qualifying for the semi-final, even if they lose this match. Oh, look at that! Out of the court goes uh, Sofia Arujo, and uh, the point goes the way of Team Hexagon. 30 love now. Well, it's actually love 30. That is significant. So a break of service here against Delphi Brea's serve. 
would be just the start that uh, Team Hexagon require as they try and uh, turn this match around that has just gone against them. Oh, brilliant shot from Salazar. Good defence from Bayer. Oh, Ricardo meant that, and that was the winning shot, effectively forcing the error from Delphi Brea, and that gives them four break points. Well, the truth is that we haven't... I think that, that we're going to see a quite similar second set, I would say. Just, both pairs are very even in the level, I would say. But the truth is that if Tamar Ricardo steps forward a little bit more and risks some of the shots, you know, perhaps they can change... This game because it was 7 6, it was very, very close the first set. Actually, Team X Hagon could have won the first set. Well, that was a break of serve to love. The least expected outcome, I think, after uh, Team Advantage had invested so much in that tie break and uh, dominated it. They have gone down without a fight in the opening game on their serve of the uh, all important second set. You know, for the uh, stats, um, always happens that after winning some. Six, the first set, uh, the first game you usually lose if you've won the, the tiebreak in seven six. Is that you true or yeah, is that yeah, just yeah. a no, no, superstition? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. I know, I know that from a long time, and uh, it usually happens that you lose the first game after winning the first set. It's kind of that you oh, relax, and after you relax, you get hey, 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 wake up. So the second set already. Think about it, they won the four points in a row. And now, another point. <laughs> well, with that amount of Amphus errors from the advantage team, I think we're not going to see exactly the same set we saw in the first one. But as I said before, they just won the first set and perhaps, uh, I wouldn't say relaxing, it's not, it's, it's not the word perhaps, but they're not performing as they did in the first set, that's for sure. It's 40 love, they haven't won a point yet in this second set of the hexagon cup, the beautiful purple heart of panel. Well, you can risk that if you want to, it's 40 love. Virginia, that's why Alejandro Salazar says, no worries, Virginia. Um, um, Tamara, you're doing very well. I confuse uh, Ricardo with Virginia because they used to play Virginia Riera with, and we're gonna see her in action tomorrow, Virginia Riera and Tamara Ricardo used to partner together. That's why I confuse sometimes the names. Well, a little bit of luck as well uh, to Alejandro Salazar, the most experienced player on earth, I would say, uh, in the female side of panel. And 2-0 for the hexagon team. A little bit happier now. And as I told you before, Ned, this is uh, just, you know, was for a detail of two, three points that make the difference between the 5-4 and the 6-5 on the first set. Otherwise, also hexagon team could have won the first set as well, it was 7-6. Yes, indeed. Curious match and a curious start to the second set. Yeah, but look so far, Team Advantage, team advantage oh. simply haven't turned up. <laughs> they haven't hey. turned up. Love 15 now. And say what you like about the starting games of a set, and it's a strange phenomenon, but two breaks of serve early on, and suddenly that becomes very quickly very serious. Injecting a bit of energy into that smash and uh, trying to turn things around, I think, psychologically as well, just to get them yes. started in this second set. Because they haven't started yet. Sofia Arujo with the serve. 15 all. Third game. One breakdown already. Hmm. 
Good yeah. decision from Sophie Araujo down the line where she saw Alessa Lazar just reaching that shot uncomfortably off the back wall. In the middle of the court, she was far away from her comfortable position, and that's why Sophie decided, even though she knew that she wouldn't bring the ball back and it wouldn't be an amazing smash, but the decision behind that smash is perfect. So 30-15, can they win their first game in this second set? Clash of rackets there from Team Hexagon. Good effort Kick there from Brea. Cross court from trying to Brea. stretch them, moving them around, looking for the winning opportunity. No, no. Very oh, good that's amazing. That's amazing. Really amazing, amazing defensive uh, position. Yeah. Alex Salazar was defending all of Delphi Brea's bandejas, vivoras, uh, snakes, all the things you want to say. She defended every single shot, allowing Icardo just to step forward and play that beautiful, slow forehand volley down the line, giving them the chance to carry on leading the second set. Look at that. No. That's what I meant with the drop shot that Sofia Araujo played today. You know, it, uh, I think Delphi didn't risk that match and it's still been as effective as the drop shot should be. You know, even if Alej Salazar would reach that ball and the play a lot, but wasn't comfortably for sure. The aiming of the drop shot is not to win the point all the time. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. Almost there. Very nearly got that back. Almost there. Golden point. And oh. another break point oh. for Team Hexagon. And now? And this is pressure. This is serious. More questions than answers from the advantage team in this oh second God. set. And I think that Tamara Ricardo will return the serve. Oh, Ale. Tamara, I believe. Yeah, Tamara. Big point, even this early in the second set, this is a big point. Woohoo! They are not that happy a thing about this uh, goal from the umpire, but they didn't challenge it, so. Oh, oh, that was out. That unlucky, was Alejandro Salazar. Very, very, very well done from Sophie and Delphi Brea, putting 2-1 the second set. Well, Andrea has been out and about once again in the crowd, and she's unearthed another prestigious former footballer in the shape of Fernando Lorenzi, I believe. <laughs> Here we go. Bueno, Fernando Llorente, buenas tardes. ¿Cómo está el partido de las chicas, verdad? Que tenemos ya aquí un rato. Ha llegado, creo que justo en el tiebreak. Hola, sí, la verdad que bueno, muy interesante. Me estoy patando de vos súper bien. Disfrutando mucho viendo pádel y bueno. Eh, ya te digo, encantado de estar aquí. ¿Y jugarlo qué tal? ¿Cómo? ¿Jugarlo cómo lo juegas? Bueno, también estoy enganchado al padre, estoy jugando ahora bastante y bueno, con ganas de ir mejorando poco a poco. Muy bien, pues disfruta que ya has visto que todo puede pasar aquí en Exxon Cup. No, está claro, está claro, me ha encantado la organización, todo el espectáculo que hay y ojalá que, que sigáis haciendo este tipo de torneos y que cada vez más gente pues se una a esta pasión por el padre. Gracias. Ah, oh, nice to see Fernando Lorente there, of course. Uh... Another Palace Most fan. Most readily associated with Athletic Bilbao. Yes. Ampona player. Also played Another Palace in, fan. Played in Wales and in England and in Italy. Long career. Representing Spain as well on 14 occasions. Scoring seven goals. They're all here at the paddle. This is a state of play. Team advantage. I've got themselves on the scoreboard in the second set. They have one game on serve, but they're a breakdown. And uh, Team Hexagon and then cruised into a 2 nil lead, 2-love lead in the second set. I've just been pegged back by one, so it's tight. 
But they do have the advantage. They've started well, have Salazar and Ricardo, and they need to win this set, obviously, to stay alive in this match. 2-1. New balls. Second set. One break. Alejandro Salazar serve. What else? If you, if you have a friend who is not watching this, please call them. Call them. Don't be... How do you say? Selfish? No. You have to call your friends and tell them, listen, guys, come to watch the Hexagon Cup. It's the best event. You can watch. Good lob from Ricardo. Very deep right to the line. And again. Ah, oh, Brea didn't like that, did she? Screaming out frustration into the fence. But it uh, missed the top of the net by some distance. Well, they try it now. They're like, you know, they might be thinking, hey, the sooner we break back, the better. Ah, look at her frustration. Agony, this match. <laughs> it's been... Almost every match has been agonising for the players involved at the Hexagon Cup. <laughs> yes, it's true. At no point in almost any of the matches have any of the players been able to relax and just enjoy the game and enjoy superiority, supremacy over the opponents. They've always had to worry about what the opponents are doing. Yeah. It's been the opposite of relaxing. Unless you're sitting in your armchair at home, enjoying the spectacle. In this case. point is perfect. Beautiful point. Tamara Cardo didn't allow the opponents to reach the net as they wanted to. But now, didn't work that uh, blocking backhand after the offensive shot. All the hard work. The Argentinian player. 30-15, still leading this set and this game. Team advantage looking for a, a way of prizing an opening for a break back, but it's not going to work like that. Hexagon move to 40-15, shutting the door on any possibility that team advantage can put them under pressure on the serve, at least in this game. The thing is, uh, Ned, that they were comfortably during the whole match. I mean, that, that team advantage won 7-6 the first set. Doesn't really mean that is because uh, Ale Salazar and Tamara didn't play well. But there were two mistakes that Ale Salazar did at the end of the set, and that made the difference. But uh, the difference in the, in the result, I mean, I'd say, of the third set. Oh, 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 that's a long way out. You know, but, they, but, but it's like they're not playing better now. They're just playing the same. But it's Delphi and, and Sophie who are not that comfortable as they were in the first set. Yeah. They built their form towards the fantastically close finale of the opening set and then their form mystifyingly has just dropped off the edge of a cliff it's like they're two different players on the court at the moment they need to rediscover yeah the the spirit apart from anything else that got them that uh, that win in the tie break the aggression they brought to the game because at the moment they're handing yeah. it, it seems to me that salazar and ricardo are being allowed to dictate too many of the points You know what I find interesting about this uh, sport of paddle? That you play with couples all the time, with your partner, and you, you play with the scoring, that if you don't know the scoring, for example, we're playing together against two others, and we don't know how the score is, never the match completes changes. Do you know what I mean? Is that because it's very fundamental part of the game is impressively important. So playing without uh, looking after that match, the score, because you can be losing 5-0, 40 love, and still winning. Or 6-0 in the tie break, and still winning the tie break. Every point counts the same. <laughs> exactly. But emotionally... It doesn't feel like that. It doesn't feel like 100%. 30-15. Well, yeah. Delphi Brea with the serve. Still with the advantage on serve. Team advantage. A verla, let me see. Sofia Araujo said to her partner, and that makes it 40-15. Well, a little bit breathing, not getting a, another break. It would be a must for them to keep him playing. Sophia 
Second serve. Game point. On serve. With a little bit of a margin. 40-15, as you say. Both going for the same ball there. Araujo deep to Ricardo's backhand. Salazar's backhand. Wow, for the fantastic. gap on the forehand. Well and deserved. Five. Game oh, four. Yeah. Sophie and Delphi. That's better from team advantage. They narrow the gap to three games to two in set two. That will have settled some of the nerves, but what they need to do now is step it up and start to really worry Team Hexagon on their serve. That's where the game will be won or lost. Let's have a look at some more of the 3D animation tracking the balls that we've seen. These are the successful lobs that have hit the court of Tamara Icardo and her tallest lob, uh, seven metres. It looks as if <laughs> there on the graphic, as if it's sort of level uh, with the wall at the side, but of course it isn't. Seven metres is double that height. Yeah, uh, interesting to see that the players are not using higher lobs, perhaps. But also, what I mean is that these lobs count if the ball bounces, yes? Yep, yes. If the ball doesn't bounce, it doesn't come uh, onto this screen. Yeah. With this, uh, uh, so what I mean is that if the lob is higher, perhaps the players will hit the bandeja. That's why it's not in here. But those lobs who are going behind the opponent's uh, back, I would say that the ball goes to the back wall, that the ball bounces, the highest one is seven meters from San Maricado. So there we go. More innovations from the Hexagon Cup, bringing you the breakdown and the analysis of each point and the way that the lobs have landed on the court. Delphi Brea just telling herself down there and getting ready. Now, can they apply a bit of pressure to the Team Hexagon serve? Sooner or later, they're going to have to break back. They know that. We know that. It's only one break, Nito said. Only one break. Girls, come on, let's do this. The whole team supporting Delphi and Sophie. Boyed up. Boying each other up now. Salazar and Ricardo once again communicating, getting ready. This time it's going to be Ricardo serving. One and a half hours in play already, and we're only halfway through set two. Not even halfway through set two. Wow, what a recover. Oh, that's a winner. That is a winner. Pure class, that's woken them up. Portugal, welcome to the world-class players. <laughs> Thanks to Sofia Araujo, absolute different level from the Portuguese player. Look at that. Ah, that's genius. Oh. So much awareness. She had eyes in the back of her head there. She knew exactly where to place that ball and did so. <laughs> Beautiful. And it's love 15 on the Team Hexagon server. And this is what they need to do. They need to try and double it up, make it love 30, apply that pressure, ask the question if they can. Deep to Salazar. That was hand. higher than seven meters yeah. from uh, Sofia Araujo. Vivora. Body shot from Brea. Wins Alejandra's point. back. So Salazar was Delphi turned apologizes. But it's part of the game. Yeah, it's a curious thing, the apology, isn't yeah. it? I think the intent is I didn't mean to hurt you. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but I, it's, did uh, mean to, I did mean to put you in trouble. Yeah. Tactically. Yeah. Totally legitimate part of the game. Well, you could really tell when someone tries to hit you with a ball and when it's part of the game. And the professionals never hit each other intentionally. Well, 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 well. Yeah, yeah. We have got a situation here where they have got every chance of turning this set on its head now, or at least levelling it up now. Four breakback points. Salazar and Ricardo have... Uh, in very short order, in this service game for Ricardo, put themselves under all sorts of pressure now. That's it's a, it. It's amazing. There's the break. <laughs> it's as simple as that. How the game changes within minutes. Now, the f ten minutes ago, they were uh, starting the set. And, and Sofia and, and Delphi look like uh, from, from another category, you know, a lower category level. And now they're like, you know, like the most professional players on earth. 
unbelievable well, the how two, the game changes just for a few minutes. The two breaks of serve that we've had so far in this set have both come to love. And now, of course, they need to hold. Viene Alejandra, said Tamara to her partner. Sofia Arujo serving to Tamara Ecado, 28 years of age, from Valencia. Has promised, if you weren't listening earlier, that she is going to celebrate victory with a paella if she wins the Hexagon Cup. And also, she Dry will... her hair pink. Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That with the slippery... Set, uh, yeah, skidded it off, to us skidded us off the today. surface. Fifteen all. Arujo's service game. This time to Salazar. Deep from behind the service line. Deep into the service court. Pumba. Massive. No celebration there from Araujo. That was just business as usual. Yes. The gun from Portugal. What it's like, they've suddenly started playing, isn't it? <laughs> That's the thing, you know, that's why I always say, if, if you're a very um, consistent player and focusing all the time, not getting lost within things, oh, because you made two mistakes, you're a bad person. No, you just made two mistakes. That's it. If you can handle it, that way of thinking, which is very hard, then you can, yeah, you can be Ale Salazar. <laughs> oh, it's a real venom in Brea's game. Beautiful. She's hitting everything hard now. And it's... Uh, no, before! Uh, Okay, she knew that she'd taken before the siphons as the ball was dying. The ball has already reached the highest point and was starting dying of the siphons, which is unreachable. But the pressure had been created to force that error. So it should be a fairly forward, a straightforward service game here for team advantage to see this one out 40 15 40 30 now oh, it does, does get interesting not to alejandra's forehand now it does get interesting team hexagon win this point and we're into golden point territory and it will be a break point for team hexagon in the famous seventh game of the second yes. set Great shot off the side wheel and amazing lob from Ale Salazar, giving the, them the chance to lead and keep the net position now. Let's see if they can manage. Ale will go for a winner. Of course he will. Lob down the middle, to the middle there. Unlucky, but... It was a great Goal lob. point, yeah. Went out, it was wide. But it was tight. a little unforced error because uh, Riera, um, sorry, um, Icardo played the lob and went forward. And Ale stayed at the back. So Why did um, uh, Sofia play in parallel when she could have played down the middle slow and opening the angle much better than playing down the line where Alejandra Salazar was already there? There we go. You can see that this does touch the side wall there. Ding. And it's out. So, golden point, important point. Oh, it's Ready then. It's massive. You ready for this? Van de Handra, cross court. Backhand Handra. Vivora. Oh, that's out. That was a big error. That was an unforced error from Delphi Brea from 15 40 down in the all important seventh game. They claw back and they break team advantage. Let's have a look at the statistics. Total points won 63 for team advantage to 58 of the 121. Golden points, three to uh, team hexagons, two and break points, three from six for team advantage and four from seven for team hexagon. That's reflected in well, the fact that they are 4-3 ahead in the second set. Yes, this uh, is, is 
very even for what we are watching now. I mean, it's a thing is that uh, if I were Delphi and Sofia, I would be a little bit worried about that being winning much more points than what it looks like. Do you know what I mean? It looks like uh, Alejandra Salazar and and Riera has lost much more points than this, but because they're just conservative, they just carry on always fighting for every single ball, and so now it gives them the lead to 4-3 or 5-4? No, 4-3. 4-3 in a very important part of the game. As if they win this, then we go to Super tie wreck. If they win the set, if they win the next game, then it's 5-3, and they're, they're within one game of winning the second set and taking it to that super tie break. There we go, the advantage now to Team Hexagon. Four games to three in the second set. One set to love down. But with the noses in front now, with that break on the golden point. Well, Dali. Yeah. Dali. When Alejandro Salazar, you know, when your partner tells you what to do, that is a big help sometimes. Not all the time. You're not going to tell, hey, now play the forehand, now play the backhand. But when you have to decide something and your partner helps you with a decision, you go for it with much more confidence. Because if you miss, hey, you told me to hit the ball hard. You told me to go for it. So you can kind of share that mistake with your partner. Salazar with the surface service 15 love up in his eighth game in the second set. Deja, 30, make that 30 love up. Deja, bandeja. They win this, they go two games clear. Flat bandeja. Is the decision that makes the the shot to be called bandeja. You know, there are many players who ask me sometimes, hey Maori, what about the with the bandeja to hit the ball at the head height and then from height to low. Yeah, well, that is technically how it should be played. Brilliant. Brilliant but, uh, from uh, Brent. Yeah. But the bandejas can do many variations. You know, you can hit the ball next to you, in line with you, next to your non playing shoulder, kicking the ball like a more ruler. But the aiming of the shot itself is to keep your opponents behind the line in a defensive position after they've played the lob. If the lob is good, you just play a bandeja and try to keep your opponents at the back of the court. So 30-15 for Team Hexagon on serve. Everything comes from the forehand of the backward from Alex Salazar. That because he's that good and Sophie or um, uh, Delphi have to block that shot, then Tamara Icardo is just there. Just, I mean, of course she's done a good shot, but everything comes from the, from the one shot before played by Alejandro Salazar. Good transition volley, good change of angles, amazing uh, shot from Alejandro Salazar. Fantastic from Salazar, gets Be the ready, one. Be ready because I think we got to a super tie rig very soon. It looks that way, doesn't it? 5-3, two-point, a uh, two-game buffer. Now then, team advantage, simply have to hold serve, and then they have to break. Otherwise, they are out of the second set, and we are heading to a super tie-break. And as you rightly say, that is the most likely outcome now. this making Team Hexagon work as hard wow. as they can for every what? single point and that's long point from Alejandra and Icardo great loves great defending from Alejandra all those shots from the middle from the corner giving them the first point very important three but points this away could from be the last game of this set three points away from taking the second set She had to reach for that. Brilliant, though. Ricardo, and again. Tune in. 
Love 30, they're getting close up. Huge pressure now for Team Advantage. Love 30 down on serve and serving to stay in this second set. But we do go to a super tie break. Oh! <laughs> Valencia won't come back! Well, everything is going the way of Ricardo and Salazar in this game. They're playing brilliantly. And now they have four set points to take them all the way into a super tie break. They are giving us uh, this beautiful present. I think, as I asked in the beginning of the match, such a similar level match needs and deserves a super tie break. Well, can they defend four set points? It's a very yeah, tall Yeah, of course they can. <laughs> Maybe but they can't. Maybe they can't. You never mess around with Alejandro Salazar. Five. Oh. So there we go. Six three is an emphatic scoreline in the uh, second set. Momentary pause here. Well, that was such an emphatic final game in that set. It barely reflects how close some of that was. But they did, when you think back to the beginning of that second set, they did rush into a two-game lead, and they did actually dominate that second set. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, look, the at the point, look at the total points won, 29 to 19. That is a huge advantage. Yeah, uh, I think the main part of the, of, the, of the set was in the beginning, the, the yeah. first three games where, you know, Delphi and, and Sophie couldn't really get the rhythm back from the first set. And then it went the massive advantage from Tamara and Alejandra that you could see in this stats set summary on the percentage of points won and all the winners from the Hexagon look. team. Let's have a look back at how they got uh, set 2-1 for Team Hexagon. Well, are you ready for this then? One set apiece and the future participation of Team Advantage, at least as far as their women's team are concerned, is hanging by a thread. They have to win this super tiebreak. Maria super tiebreak gets its name. It's slightly longer than a normal tiebreak at the end of a conventional set. Instead of a third set, it's a race to 10 and you have to get to 10 uh, and you have to do it two points ahead of your opponents. I think it's a good format. I love it. You know, you can just decide in a third, in a this ten point super tie break. Oh man, if Alejandra, if Alejandra Salazar smiles and is uh, smiling in the first point of the super tie break, I would be a little bit worried. Zero one. Mini break. Ah, she rushed that, didn't she? A little bit over anxious to get the point one into the net, and that's a mini break in favour of Team Hexagon. Two From, uh, if you ask me who deserves the match, I would say that uh, Tamara and Alejandra Salazar always play the same since the beginning of the match. They play regularly, yeah. But, um, but because you know, I don't want Sophie and and Delphi to live and to be eliminated.
from this female competition. Yeah, they've been a little bit less consistent. They've been either brilliant or a little bit unconcentrated, and that's the reason they find themselves what the where defensive. they are. But Salazar doing brilliant defence, and so too is Ricardo. Lofts one there, and can't get it. Can't well, get a racket on that, but can't get it over the net. So, Brea and Araujo holding on to the second of their serves, and that was a bit of a body shot, wasn't it? Pumba. Two one. One mini break in favour of Team Hexagon. Alejandra Salazar, 37 years of age. Fighting also for her future participation in the Hexagon Cup. But even if Team Hexagon were to lose this match Ray Chiquita. in this time break, they're still not effectively eliminated from the semi final. They'll play again tomorrow, whatever happens. Tiki-taka, tiki-taka. Ah! Oh, unnecessary tiki-taka down the line, I would say, from Alejandra Salazar. But, you know, good decision. Anyways. To each. Didn't succeed. And now it's two all. And the mini-break has been squandered. Set all. Two all. And it's back Love on it. serve. She got it! Whoa. Portugal is back again! <laughs> Can see how much that meant to her. Reaches the yeah. double backward rebound. Well, memories go, back to to the, memories go back to the tie break at the end of the first set that they absolutely steamrolled in Look their favour. She didn't expect that shot, but she was ready. And it was in that occasion Araujo who was the motor for that change in the dynamic of uh, team advantage. Can she rouse the team in blue now? Can you believe now is one break to advantage team? Oh, 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 that was brilliant. Oh, what a touch. What a touch, Portugal. Sofia Araujo, unbelievable. Yeah. Backhand, what's a backhandeja? A kind of a bandeja with a backhand. Unbelievable shot. And that's how quickly it can change in a tie break. Look as at they that. go to the little mini break after six shots. Beautiful. They are 4-2 up against their opponents from Team Hexagon. Winner takes it all. Winner takes it all. The super tie break, one set each. Win this and they take a place. Or at least take their chances of a place in the semi final. Lose hey. it and they're out. Now we've got so many people on the, the stadium, eh? Love it. Thursday night. Enjoying the best paddle in the world. That's gone out. And uh, she's showing a bit of emotion at Araujo, yeah. furious with herself there. A little touch of the hand of her opponent. As, uh, no breaks now, huh? No uh, breaks. We level it out again. That's a, that's a little mini break back again for Team Hexagon, and we're all level. They now will serve twice. Ricardo to serve twice at 3-4. And again, doing that uh, return of the serve straight after the side will rebound. she find yeah. that angle the Argentinian player stepping forward that's what that's the thing they said today before you know that she has the, the same decisions and the, the same way of the doing the trajectory from back to forward with the fork and winning volleys as Alejandra Salazar does but of course Alejandra has, uh, has uh, much more experience but Delphi is younger so each player has the strength It's a big point, this, you know. Team Advantage win this one. Nice they are shot. Six, three Look up. That. Amazing. The speed of that bandeja. Pushing Alejandro to the middle. And missing, uh, missing. that lob. A 6-3. Yeah. 
Well, Icardo unable to hold either of her serves there for Team Hexagon, and that might be decisive. Remember, this goes all the way to 10. It's a super tie break. Haha, <laughs> you thought it was a tie break? No. It's a super tie break, like a Superman, which is more than a man, is Superman. This is a super tie break. <laughs> so we don't go to 7, we go to 10. Ned. Team advantage. Still chances. Two serves. Delphi Brea to serve twice. What a awful. There they go, 7-3. So much confidence now. Big problems to Hexagon team. But Delphi and Araujo. So this is what happened to this is exactly what happened to them in the first tie break at the end of the first set. Powered off the court by Team Advantage. You are just three points away now from winning this match. Just oh, in the corner yeah, there. Yeah. There was nothing she could do to get that ball back over the net. 8 3, make that two points away from victory. 11 points played, 8 2. If, if you are Salazar and Ricardo in this second set, in this, uh, uh, after having won the second away. set, you must be thinking, what's happening? They were so dominant, really, in that second set. Is there a way back for them? Is there a way back for Team Hexagon now? Even at this late stage? They need at least two or three points now. But of course, otherwise they lose, but... I know what you mean. They need point by point, they need to claw their way yes. back into this. Very lofted lob there. Dangerous. Oh, that was brilliant wow. by Arujo. They are playing at the highest performance now. The last part of the game. Brilliant fourth and volley from the Valencian player. Point oh, by point. And there's yeah. one of them back. So you know what I mean? If, if you tell me that this is the other way around, that is that Hexagon team is winning 8-4, I would tell you, mm, because Sophie and Delphi are younger, I would say, like, you know, more emotional players. I would tell you, mm, I think that could be over. But in this way, I'm not 100% sure that Ali Salazar and Ricardo would give up at any point of this super tie break. And they know it. You know, Sophie and Delphi know it, so that's why they, they are focused focus on the next two points. It's two points, Mario, that's all they need. Two points away. Two points. So close. And yet, it's still uncertain. Salazar with the surface. Oh! oh. oh. Eight, five, the comeback is on. Imagine if they get this point now. <laughs> we could be uh, the longest tiebreaker, perhaps. Super tiebreaker. She wanted that too much. She wanted that too much. If I don't talk for more than 30 seconds because I die from a heart attack. <laughs> oh my goodness. Just thinking one more point and we're on match point, but it's not there. Oh my goodness. This point is crucial. 8-6. After oof, it was 8-3, don't forget. They're either gonna go 9-6 or 8-7. Look at that bandeja. Oh, Look there we go. That bandeja. Alejandra Salazar. Oh, what an amazing shot. Cross court. Well, the, the fencing, stipends. you heard the ball clatter into the fencing, oh, and that played God. its part in that. And uh, what part of the match? In which itself. moment? Yeah. In which moment? Only number ones in the world can decide to do that kind of thing. And Alejandra was number one in the world. And there they are. 8-7 to advantage team.
amazing match. Team Hexagon winning four points in a row in this super tie break to get themselves right back into it. Is there any chance? It's in, it's in. Oh. oh, they're playing with fire now, both of these players. This is mine, Alejandra said. Great shot from Delphi. What Not a enough. rally. What a rally. Salazar again to Brea. Brea with the smash. And that one surely and has to go. go. There it is. Pa cuatro. And there the it is. And the team. Match point. Two match and points. Yeah. Did you remember what I told you? That then in the next stages, perhaps tomorrow, we're going to see the teams as well involved into this game. Even they're outside, they're going to be feeling like they're inside the court, cheering for the partners, the players, the mates. A seven around here. Nito Brea. There we have. They left. Um, there was also Paul Hernandez, the next generation player. But perhaps we're going to see them on court on, on Saturday. They reach the semi finals. Two match points to defend against Team Advantage here for Salazar. They have to survive two match points to stay in this match. Salazar looking for a. Oh! And that's it! They have done it! They remain in the Hexagon Cup. Team Advantage still in it. The team in blue somehow, somehow, by sheer willpower, have produced the shots that matter when they've needed to. And they've won the super tiebreak to win. This match by three sets to one. Well deserved for uh, Delphi Brea and Sofia Raujo. They really need this match to be, to keep competing in this Hexagon Cup. Alejandro Salazar, I think, is uh, he's not 100% happy about the, the result, but you know, the performance was very good. Now we can tell the team is very happy that they are all the players, Dineno and Teo, ready to fight against Alejandro Alex. Well, and Dineno, Stupa, the next match. Dineno and Teo, I don't think were there. They can't possibly be there. They're waiting to come on the... Uh, they just came to celebrate. Oh, he's just got off, just came on to celebrate, and now he has to get ready, get his head on for his next match. Brilliant team advantage. And now we are getting a real taste of how the Hexagon Cup works, as you say. The involvement from the next generation players on team advantage, the involvement from the men in support of their women, <laughs> and Delphi Brea and Sofia Araujo, having lost yesterday, somehow win a very tight, tense encounter by two sets to one against a class opposition in the shape of one of the greatest players ever in paddle, Alejandra Salazar and Tamara Ikado, who played her part brilliantly in what could have been on another day a victory for Team Hexagon. That's not what happened, though. It was Team Advantage who got the win. And let's find out how they did it. They're ready to talk to Andrea, the two winning players from Team Advantage, who are still in the cup. Bueno, chicas, pues lo vamos a resumir como lo que me acabáis de decir of the record. Ahora sí. Eso sí, ha costado, ¿eh? Ha habido que pelear dura batalla. Sí, sí, estamos vivas, estamos vivas. Todavía seguimos. Nada, agradecer de verdad a todos los que vinieron. Eh, está buenísimo jugar acá, está buenísimo hoy ganar. Eh, estamos muy contentas. A ver si, si el sábado podemos seguir. Tenemos que mañana estar, estar muy atentas al partido de las chicas. Y nada, felices. Sofía, hoy te ha soltado muchísimo más, ¿eh? Bueno, sí, la verdad que ayer estaba un poco nerviosa, eh, pero bueno, hoy como, como ya era el segundo partido, me pude, me pude soltar un poco más, pero bueno, tenemos la victoria, que es lo más importante. Enhorabuena, chicas, un fuerte aplauso, yo creo que para las cuatro que nos habéis brindado una batalla fantástica, chicas. Gracias. You could tell from the... From the interview yesterday, when they lost the match, to the interview today that they won the match, you could tell how competitive these players are. Delphi said, uh, yeah, well, for, it's a massive play for us here in this event. She's pleased to be competing at the Hexagon Cup with her team. And uh, Sofia Araujo uh, said, yeah, I play a little bit more uh, confident today. I felt uh, a little bit more confident than yesterday. But the most important thing is that we got a victory of this match. So there they have the hack, father and daughter.
Brea's family winning for the advantage team. Well, it's been terrific stuff, and it's worth reliving, I think, because the Hexagon Cup has just delivered another masterclass of drama and, in the end, emotion. That was that, and this is how it sets up the group in which Team Advantage find themselves as well, Group A. They have uh, played two, the only team to have played two, and they have won one. Uh, Marte, Martita Ortega and Gemma Triay, who beat them yesterday, have played one and won one. And, uh, well, Team Hexagon are still not out of it. They will play Martita Ortega and Gemma Triay tomorrow with a mathematical chance still of progressing, but obviously, they're going to have to win the match. So all three of these teams uh, will believe that they can still go forward to the next round, to the semi-finals, but it will probably go to count back. We'll have to see. It's very tense indeed. Now then, the next generation players have been involved as well, including Team Advantage's uh, Garcia and Hernandez. This was earlier on in the day, the second Next Generation match of the day. And in that second... In the second Next Generation match of the day, Daniel Santigoza and Guillermo Collado of the Rafa Nadal Academy team took on Team Advantages Pablo Garcia and Paul Hernandez. Despite tough opposition, tough opposition, I should say, not tough, tough opposition, they overcame their opponents and claimed victory. And in the end, they did it in straight sets. So bring on the next round. This, by the way, is the auditorium in which the next generation players in the round robin phase, the first three days of competition here at the Madrid Arena, have been playing. The fan zone, where the fans can get up close and personal with these young players, under 21 male players who we are going to see in action on the main stage as the weekend progresses in their semi-finals and respective finals. And this is how uh, group, 
Group B of that next generation uh, category stacks up. Play two, one, two for Santi Goza and Guillermo Collado. They are through, uh, but all to play for still between Team Advantage and Team Hexagon, who've both played one and lost one, and they'll go head to head tomorrow to make up the second team to go through from Group B. Three quarters of the way through today's schedule. Just a reminder of what you might have seen or what you might have missed. The first match of the day, RL9 uh, being beaten two sets to love by 11-11 in the women's group B. And then we switch to uh, the men's group A. It was RL9 uh, who beat Team Mella two sets to nil. And that absolute thriller we have just seen that went to a uh, super tiebreak in the third set, group A. That was for the women. Team Hexagon just about edged out uh, by Team Advantage, who won the super tie break. Just, it was nervy stuff. <laughs> and then the final match. Next on, just a few minutes away from seeing Rafa Nadal Academy uh, go head to head with Andy Murray's Team Advantage. And they have uh, only just departed to the side of the court where they've been cheering on their female teammates to victory in their match, but the Group B men's match still to come. Now, if you missed the first men's match, though, it was another high-quality encounter with some really fabulous action as well. Although, maybe we'll see that. This is just our next on men's Group B, just confirmation of what we're about to see. It's Martin Di Neno and Juan Teo, who have already won one match uh, yes. against Alex Ruiz and uh, Franco Stupa making their debuts at uh, the Madrid Arena here in the Hexagon Cup. And uh, yeah, as, as I was just alluding to, if you haven't uh, seen the action from the earlier men's match, it was an absolute thriller in Group A. And this is what happened. What you have just seen was the first match of the day.
And if you're ready to watch the best paddle in the world, you're going to be now watching Franco Stupatsuk, the Argentinian star, together with Alex Ruiz from Rafa Nadal Academy team, jumping in the Hexen Cup public court here, the purple heart of the Madrid Arena, in the center of the center of the center of paddle here in Madrid, Spain. We're going to watch Stupa and Alex Ruiz, they used to play together in the main circuit for a while, so they know each other. He's a left-handed player, Alex Ruiz, the Spanish guy from uh, Malaga, from the south of Spain, and Franco Stupatsuk from Chaco, Argentina, the north province. Actually, uh, Stupatsuk is the current, is a regular partner of Martin Dineno, who will actually play against him today, together with Juan Tello. We're gonna see them jumping on the court right now. There you have on the left side, Mr. Juan Tello, the big boy who plays on the left side. From Argentina, this pair, both of them, Argentinian players, Juan Tello and Martin Dineno, La Renga from Argentina. Different level players. This match, man, let me tell you, this match it's going to be spectacular. It's the last match of the day, and it's going to be absolute different level. It's, it's very even. It's very similar level, even though we have a left-handed player on the side of uh, Alex Ruiz. And for the second time today, after the women have uh, also demonstrated it, we're going to see two sets of players who normally pair one another playing against one another. And uh, Power, it's, it's a certain tactical. fascination about that. Alex Ruiz and Juan Teo are normally partnered uh, with one another on the circuit. And Martin Dineno and uh, Franco Stupa are a uh, world-class pairing as well. Yeah, exactly. So they, these two pairs actually are the regular partners. You know, uh, Juan Teo plays with Alex Ruiz and, uh, uh, and Dineno plays with Stupa. But not now, because this is the Hexagon Cup. They play with their own teams. There are Stupa and Dineno just greeting one another. So again, Rafa Nadal against Andy Murray <laughs> in this magnificent event. It is the Rafa Nadal Academy to give it its technical name, but uh, yeah, the name Rafa Nadal is attached to the team. So Rafa would be a left, left handed, he's a left handed player, so he would be playing on the right side if he was playing by the. I promise you that when he retires from tennis, he will start playing some panel for sure. He does play panel, I know that. But, you know, of course, he's a tennis player. Same thing uh, with Andy Murray. But if they panel together... There are many things, Paco, is the umpire of this match. There are many things that you got to know. No podéis entrar hasta que lo diga tiempo, porque están con los anuncios. You cannot see sí, until, until I tell you ¿vale? time. Sí. No, 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 eso ya, ya estoy con ello. Y nada más, que el último set es un super tag de alguien, ¿vale? Francos. Eh, cara o escudo. Cara. Polish descent. Escudo. Escudo. Restáis. ¿Quién empieza sacando? Martín. Bueno, there you go. That's easy, quick decisions. These guys are going, like, very fast. We say, okay, who serves? Stupa and uh, Alex Ruiz won there, the uh, raffle, how do you say? And uh, they say, okay, <laughs> who goes, oh no, they will return. Stupa decide to return, because if you win, the uh, tails for, how do you say? I forgot to say that. Tails for, heads <laughs> head or tails? Head, heads or tails, by no, Sunday you'll have an absolutely perfect match. Heads, okay. heads head or tails? Or tails, yeah, forget yeah. that. Um, so if you win, doesn't mean that you have to serve. If you win, you can decide you either get to the serve. Choice, yeah. Exactly, or to return. Stupa took one, and he decided to return the serve. And straight after, they asked to uh, tell you, hey, okay, who serves? Martin will serve first. So Martin Dineno will be the one starting. 
Uh, really excited to see Stupa play at the Argentinian star, 27 years of age, from the uh, very north of Argentina, isn't he, from the province of Chaco? Yes, Chaco. Yeah, yeah. well done, man. You've got so much information, man. Well, I also know his multiple nicknames, the Polaco. Uh, the Polakito, exactly. <laughs> Papelito, the, Papelito. Little, the little bit of paper. <laughs> exactly. What does that mean? Why do you, why well, do you because, call him a little bit of paper? Well, because, you know, uh, there was uh, Lalo Altueta that I would like to say hello to him. He was the uh, ex-commentator. Mm -hmm. And uh, he put that nickname to him because as he is like he's flying on court. So that's why he calls him Papelito, because like if you put a sheet of paper like a height of 10 meters and start going down step by step, okay. waving from one side to the other. Papelito. And that's what, how he moves on court. You will see him like uh, on court or outside the court, going for the portress. Alex Ruiz from Malaga. Very dangerous player. Very interesting player as well, because he's an athlete who competes at the very highest level of his sport, but lives and manages type 1 diabetes, which is uh, yes. something which is becoming, across a lot of sports actually, increasingly uh, prevalent as uh, technologies and medical technologies learn how to manage the condition of type 1 diabetes, and these, uh, these athletes measure and moderate their own blood sugar levels and live with it and can play at the very highest level in a variety of sports. So a real uh, role model is Alex Ruiz, the 29-year-old, I should say. Yes, such a nice guy as well, um, Mr. Alex from Malaga, Andalusian. Yeah. Well, this man, if you've been watching yesterday, you'll be a little bit more familiar with perhaps the 28-year-old. El Gato. Argentinian Juan Teo, the cat. <laughs> El Gato Teo. like a cat all across the court. We had in his match that uh, they won against uh, the Rat. Chingotto and uh, Chingotto Luchito Capra. And Capra. It was a tight encounter, wasn't it? They were yeah, very, yeah, very tenacious, hard to beat. But Teo and Dineno just found enough to get over the line and get the victory. And this man, uh, Martin Dineno, he's real box office. I think in the world of Padel, he's one of uh, three or four players who people really would pay good money to see. He's uh, yes. something special, isn't he? Yes. I mean, if you want to learn how to play paddle, just start watching this guy playing because any and every decision he takes with every single shot is usually correct. He's clever. He's clever and he's very talented. And he talks. He's a leader <laughs> on the court. <laughs> the, radio. <laughs> the radio from Ezeiza. Ezeiza is the city uh, where he was born and uh, in Argentina is actually where the main airport in Buenos Aires city is and there's where he comes from and the radio from Ezeiza because he's from Ezeiza also because he talks a lot they will call me the the, the radio from uh, Pehuajó they will call me no well, I also yeah. talk a lot but he talks during the match <laughs> giving information to his partner buenas tardes Mr. Umpire good afternoon Yes, fabulous to return. Fabulous pictures here of the entirety of this uh, paddle court. It's one of the differences, I think, between paddle and tennis, one of the many differences uh, that the cameras can get so close, can't they? Deliver these shots that really give you a sense of the dimensions of the courts, the physicality of the game, the speed with which the balls fly. We can get right in the faces of these players. And look at the stadium now. Much more people on Thursday night, like yesterday was Wednesday, and there were so many people here in the stadium. Actually, surprises me uh, because it's not usual, you know. Uh, even in, in, in the other circuit, when they when they get to the Wednesday and Thursday, usually it's a Saturday, the day, or Friday, I would say as well, when mainly most of the people go to the stadium. But this is how it looks, man. Fantastic. Tomorrow more, Saturday more, Sunday more. Hexagon cap, different level. A lot of youngsters as well, watching on. Carlos Pozzoni is the uh, coach of the Rafa Exacto. Academy team. Hey, it's so funny to listen to this, actually Carlos Pozzoni is the coach of Stupa and Dineno. He's talking about, hey, Dineno's going to do this and he's going to do that. He's going to be playing short, he's going to be playing deep. There's Martita and Gemma enjoying it as well. <laughs> yeah, and Carlos Bosani is looking at them like, hey, listen, you dance if you want, but don't 
sink because he's going serious now. We're competing for Rafa Nadal Academy. It's okay, we're going to close the angles at the net. That's what Carlos Pozzoni said to the players. We're going to try to get a little bit closer to the net so they can reach the net quick lobs, but not the Chiquitas. That's what he's asking for. Yo no le habilitaría tanto esta a Franco, o sea, el largo, este, el cruzado del gato, excepto que lo tenga muy cómodo, porque esta es la, es la que mejor hace. Este. Y esta, si llega incómodo, tanto si llega con el globo por el medio, tanto si llega Alex como si llega Estupa, tenemos un poquito más de vida. Tenemos un poquito más de vida. ¿Qué está siendo dicho, Mauri? Bueno, está pidiendo a Martín no jugar. Uh, to Stupa's non-playing shoulder because Stupa has the ruler. He's the, he's the ruler man, he's the kick bandeja man. Stupa took place every single shot with a kick bandeja, you will see cross court. And he does it perfectly. So he says, don't play every single shot to Stupa high. You can play also to the middle or to um, Alex Ruiz because otherwise Stupa will put uh, ruler, um, the rules to, to tell you and we put him under some pressure. Well, this pairing exactly. of the players, one goal forward, that's one team right. from uh, and Martin Dineno are close to securing a place in the semi-finals, but they're not mathematically certain yet. Obviously, if they win this match, they will comfortably have qualified for the semi-finals, uh, but if they lose it, they still have a mathematical chance, depending on how tomorrow's match between 11-11 and uh, yes, there are Lucho Capra today, and Chigoto. depending on how it goes, it's still possible. So if, if Dineno and Teo win, then that's it. They're, they're through. Yeah, our oh, team advantage is male or in semi-finals. But if they don't, then <laughs> set counting and uh, yeah, all yeah. that stuff. So could go to count back. Maybe for tomorrow. But the one remaining match tomorrow in this particular group in the men's category uh, will be between 11 and 11, the Chigoto and Capra team. They will play Alex Ruiz and this man now. Stupa tomorrow. And it could be that that'll be a straight playoff between those two teams. It could be as to who will progress in the tournament. But all to play for as they make their debut here. Franco Stupachuk, one of the superstars of World Paddle. And Alex Ruiz makes his way to the side of the court. There's just a slight delay as he needed a trip to the toilet to get things underway. He, he too has got a bit of strapping on his left elbow. Does he normally play with that, Ruiz? Not really. Not really. Something you'd noticed before. So we'll just keep an eye as whether he's got a bit of a strain. I'm not sure, you know, because uh, with diabetes they need that uh, little stick thing on the, on the arm. Yeah, well, but I'm not sure that this is full. I don't think, no, that's more of a muscular, a muscular strapping, isn't it? It looks like for the elbow, yeah? Yeah. So we're underway now. Well, Team Stupa, advantage with yeah, Stupa, Stupa and, and Alex, they're just getting used to the to the court a little bit, that they got a little advantage, Teo and Dineno. Okay, there First he goes. First big powerful smash right. from Teo, brings it back. It's like uh, Teo is telling, hey, listen, I know that they're the ball is a little bit heavy and the, the, we cannot bring the ball back very easy, but uh, Alex, if you're going to stay at the back, be ready because I will smash it. Backhand from shot. Ruiz. Oh, look at that. He pays off to Juan Tello. Did you see that Juan Tello is kind of a player who's like very aggressive mm. and then once the point ends, he's walking in slow motion. Well, I wonder if we'd had a stopwatch on that opening game, how long that took. It didn't take long, sure. did it? We didn't have a single rally of any notes, and uh, they won it to love. That's why, that's why Stupatuk preferred them to serve first. Do you know what I mean? From yep. the tactical point of view, it makes much more sense, because now there are no breaks. Perhaps if they had served, the book got a broke uh, a well, break. Just straight yeah. away under pressure. Exactly. A little touch of the ball no. settles the nerves, no. and now they can start Still their perhaps. start their match now, effectively. <laughs> One day you're just there, trying to catch it like every cat in the world. So 15 love to Ruiz and Stupa. 
sliced backhand. Another sliced backhand, this time from Stupovic. There's a ruler. Stupa is a kind of player who doesn't matter which are the conditions, which the conditions are of the who is playing against or where the conditions of the ball or the, the wind or the sun. He plays usually at the same performance, the same level of pain. Oh, that was brilliant. Yes. Dineno reached it. Teo got there. And there he oh, goes. Oh, it was Dineno, wasn't it? And yeah, Teo at the back. Oh, <laughs> fabulous point. Players. What a point. 30 laps for Stupo. Spectacular. But how did Dineno reach that? Uh, oh, he just, just gets there. there and positions it beautifully as well. But a great recovery from Ruiz. I think that was too much from uh, Juan Teo. But you know, when you're playing, when you're a big smasher, it's very hard to decide other things because as you are usually winning with that shot, you don't have other shots. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> you don't have a Vibora so Bandejas perfectly mm, executed. You know, you, you have a good smash. But if you cannot smash, that's what I'm going to mean, you know. Look what stupid. Ha! Papelito, that's why Papelito is everywhere. Vicious from Teo. Beautiful match, beautiful yeah. tactics. Fabulous movement from both pairings <laughs> across the court. And a very comfortable hold of uh, serve so far from the team of the Rafa Nadal Academy. Stupachuk. Juan Teo means business though, doesn't he? It's a pretty frightening expression in his eyes, I have to say. Team advantage have one foot in the semi-final, one foot in Saturday's competition, but they're not there yet. Stupa, you see oh, the oh, kick oh, smash oh, in parallel oh, to the middle of the court and the ball taking the highest oh, point oh, after oh, the oh, rebound oh. of the back wall. And if Gato Teo cannot reach that ball, didn't even jump for it, is because the smash was different level. Well, neither pairing has taken a point against the opponent's serve yet. One apiece and two serves to love. That is pure power. I mean, that's not spin, that's not top spin, that's not it's just pure power. I'll tell you what, he just hit it really hard, didn't he? I think we can <laughs> yes, say that. It wasn't a cat, it was a lion. <laughs> huh? oh, oh, fabulous oh, return. Oh, that oh, was class oh, from Stupa. And now we do have the first point against the serve, and it came at the hand, at the elegant, cultured, brilliant hand of uh, Stupachuk. And again, quite ambitious from uh, Gato Teo, that shot. I think he was going backwards, and it's mashing. A little bit of pressure here. Yeah. Just a little bit. 15.30 on the Teo serve for team advantage now. So opening, potentially the Rafa Nergal Academy to do a bit of damage here. <laughs> Look at that. That was nice. Sideward boast. We hadn't seen that with intention, like intentionally doing the shot. Look how he goes. Like, walking. What a lob from Alex Ruiz down the line. I told you this match is going to be very, very tactical and the mistakes will be just there. And the good thing about this place is that none of them really is nice. like a very emotional <laughs> that could lose the mind very easy, you know? Four of them are... It doesn't matter if they make a mistake or two mistakes in a row, they will be again performing 100% within a second. The fitness of Stupa is just unbelievable. The ruler is comfortable. What's that? I'm going back, hand. Didn't work. Oh. Ah, oh, these reflexes are ridiculous here. Ah, oh, that 
was just out from Alex Ruiz. Great ping pong, ping pong, volley, volley at the net position. That's 40. The, that's the second time Luis has gone long, but both occasions, Stupa has gone over to his playing partner and said, doesn't matter, you're trying the right thing. Keep going. It's 40-30 now on the team advantage serve. Juan Teo to Stupa. Not love Chiquita. Now he's the love. Great. Oh, oh just look at gets that. it over. There he goes. Massive. Will he take this? Yes, he did. Oh, oh. unfortunately, there was a side glass there. He wanted to keep his racket safe. But he lost the point, and this is 2 1. Not much in it, is there? It's going with serve at the moment. 2 1 to team advantage over the Rafa Nadal Academy. No, está bien, Lato, está muy bien. Pero esto es tan sencillo como que en el volumen y en el trabajo, el error de Alex termina apareciendo. Pero con la presión. Sí, claro. Si le tiramos la vasita, no la bate. Flaco, no es cuatro de copa. Exactamente. No es cuatro de copa. Si no queda más o menos, tenemos que buscar. Claro. Pija, pero... Primero eso. Y segundo, lo que tenés que saber es que si vos lo pasás del globo y el flaco se arma para la salida de pared, Viene piedra, porque de ahí sale muy fuerte. La tuya en medio. ¿Entendés? Escalonado. Claro. Quizá bueno, lo que menos tira es. Aquí tenemos tres argentinos, ¿sabes? Tony y Ronnie. Así que no puedo traducir todo lo que han dicho. Atentos para tapar y mantenerlo en la línea de la pelota. No entiendo por qué digo esto. Es lo que tenemos que aguantar. Así que lo vamos a plantear por ahí, que creo que es correcto. La primera es un día. Ahí aguantamos los paroles y después salimos a jugar. Pero la presión me entiendo el dedo permanentemente. No entiendo el dedo, el dedo, el dedo. 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 Shitty shot, but you know, a very good. Um, if they push a little bit to Alex Ruiz in a long points, Todo lo que sea adelante, I'm sure that they're going to win soldate. more points in that way. Vamos, chicos, eh? Vamos con el primero, eh? Well, Alex Ruiz then being identified as the potential point ah. of weakness in the longer rallies. Let's see if that gets borne out the Vamos longer aquí, that this match goes on. At the moment, though, it's going with serve. Ruiz and Stupa find themselves at the wrong end of a 2-1 deficit. La bola sale, eh? Sí, sí, pero sale, pero sale. Si le pega sale, bien. sale, sale means that the ball is going sí, out. Sí. Ah, if you want to kick the ball out, sale, it's sale, this to the players Vamos a because sale, eh? he got a lefty and right-handed player Vamos who chicos, can kick eh? the ball out of the goal if they Vamos want to, you know what I mean? Dale. They are powerful, they can kick the ball out. And they Big say, hey, man. listen, the ball sale, eh? The ball goes out if you, want, if you kick the ball. They are big men, aren't they? Yeah. And Alex yeah. Ruiz. Well, uh, um, Alex Ruiz is a little bit taller, but Alex, um, but Stupa is a little bit quicker. Yeah. So he will, he will get in the, pos in the right position at the right moment quicker than, I think, any other player. So, Ruiz to serve. And let's look out for that now, having eavesdropped, interestingly, on the uh, discussions going on at Team Advantage in the longer no. rallies. <laughs> Just in case that wasn't one of them, but in the longer rallies, just just have a little look to see how vulnerable Ruiz is to making a bad decision or producing an unforced error. That's the theory. That's some of the tactics that Team Advantage are going to be working on. So the only Spanish player, Alex Ruiz. The other three players are from Argentina, living in Spain for a while already, where they train here at the highest level of panel in the world. What? Oh! Fabulous. Oh! What a touch. Absolute different level. Point. Hey, Stupatuk was there because the shot they played before was amazing. Got to tell you, Richard, but Stupa knew that, <laughs> that Juan Teo could reach that ball and he played a drop shot and again. Should explain if you're just watching this, just joining our coverage today and didn't manage to watch yesterday. When Maori refers to Gato, he's referring to Juan Teo, the taller of the two players in blue on the left side of the pitch. <laughs> Rafa Nadal Academy in the yellow kits, firmly in control of the service game. Neither pairing threaten, threatening so far to break. <laughs> <laughs> 
Welcome to your flight. This is Stupa Airlines. Flying to smash. Beautiful net coverage from the Argentinian player. Two games all. Going with serve. Set one. Oh, brilliant. Yes. Very well done from uh, Juan Tello. Blocking, 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 but... At the corner of his eye, he just spotted that crucial little gap that he could exploit. Found the right shot at the right moment and almost did it again, but well, that was back. a lovely <laughs> response. <laughs> Stupa said, ah, you... Tello, you block and you win the point? OK, I also do it. Papelito, the little sheet of paper drifting around his movement, second to none, across this court. Ah, ah, Dineno into the side wall. Yeah, he tried. You know, sometimes it's not bad when, you're, when your partner is under pressure and they're playing some shots to your partner with lobs and chiquitas to get a little bit more to the middle to just cut off the amount of time available for the coming shot. And But, yeah, I think it wasn't the right time to, to do it for Dineno, as she was, uh, was far away, the ball from him. That's why he missed it. Wow, what a defensive. Oh. So, break point. <coughs> Three break points, in fact, for the Rafa Nadal Academy. Big mistake, I think, from there, from, from Juan Tello staying at that position on court when you know that one of the best shots that Stupa has is the is that rulo on the kick bandeja that goes down. Well, that is a winner. Uh -huh. That shot is very difficult. If you're a right-handed player, you play on the right side, you kick it, the ball out by the three meter siphons is very hard. 30-40. First of those three break points defended by team advantage. Little discussion between Teo and Dineno now. Oh. That counts, that counts as now we move to the golden point. point. So, still possible, still a break point. But on the other hand, team advantage have leveled it and they themselves are one point away from going into a 3 2 lead. Which way is this going to go? Ooh, that was what tight, that lot. was very close. Look where he went to play that Vivra shot. <laughs> Two miles away from his position. Ah. The shot of the bag one from Alex Reese. And there's a break. A rock. There is a, is a break. So we've had the first break of serve. Alex Ruiz and uh, Stupa getting themselves in front by three games to ten. <laughs> Let's have a look at some of the uh, statistics so far in the opening phase of this first set, uh, which has resulted uh, just after that last game in a break of serve. We've had four winners, clear winners actually from Team Advantage, uh, to the two winners from Stupovic and Ruiz. No unforced errors from uh, Martin and Teo. No one. Doesn't errors. really surprise yeah. me from Dineno because she's uh, is a very conservative player. But uh, yes, from Juan Teo, who's, uh, you know, it's because he has to win more points. It's very good from, from the Bantish team. I suppose it's always a matter of opinion, isn't it? It's subjective what is an error and an unforced error. Yeah, That's, yeah. Uh, there's well, no clear, it's not a clear cut to, thing. But. Well, I believe that, you know, I think that you've got to know how is the sport playing Absolutely. properly in order, in order to decide, okay, that was an unforced error, but that was uh, just an error. Forced error, I would say. You know, forced and unforced error. I, I always say, you know, there are good mistakes and bad mistakes yeah. in a sports of battle. So, if you know that you just play good mistakes, then you're a good player. So, final instructions from the uh, Rafa Nadal Academy team coach to Stupa and Alex Ruiz, who have got themselves a break up in this first set. 
¿Seguimos ruido o nos vamos? Men's Group A, the last match of the evening. Here on day two of the Hexagon eh? Cup in the Madrid hey, Arena, hey, where you've been hey, treated no nada, eh? to some really tight no encounters. Mira. And this one has the potential to go all the way as well. All the way potentially to a third set that will be decided in a super tiebreak if required. But at the moment, we're still in the relatively early stages of the first set. But the first blow has been struck, and it's been struck by the team making their debut here at the Hexagon Cup. The team preparing to serve now to hold on to an advantage they have just managed to create for themselves, having broken team advantage of Teo and Dineno in the previous game. Stupachuk to serve. Oh, look at that touch! Beautiful! Stop it, Chaqueño! <laughs> Stop it! Beautiful forehand volley, great first serve. Great um, uh, drop shot. It wasn't a risky drop shot. It was enough to win the point. That is a great decision from the Argentinian player. And that one comes all the way back. That was the what the coach was asking for. Hey, listen, if you if you have a clear shot, just go for it. Do it. You got the power. Use your best weapon. Okay, that's quick. Yeah, it's very quick. One more serve potentially to get this one done, and then it's a 4 2 advantage in the first set. It's going quick, this set. Yeah, that was going out, I think, from Stupa, and uh, Juan Teo took it anyways. There we go. 4 2, they hold on to the break. Easy game looked for them, that they won easily, comfortably. And there's pressure now on the pairing in blue from Team Advantage. Yes. They've got to serve effectively, really, to stay in this set. They've got to hold on to this because if they are broken again, then Rafa Nadal Academy will be serving for the set. I think that when they are on the net, uh, both pairs are similarly, uh, they're quite similar, you know, they're both offensive, they're both very good. But when, when Teo and Dinero are at the back, the lobs haven't been playing that good as, for example, Alex Ruiz and Stupa did. Wow, what a shot from Juan Teo. Are waiting until the ball drops down a little bit in order to print that perfect backspin. To a double rebound, impossible for Stupa to. Bandeja boy, Mr. Martin Dineno. Well, again, it's another lightning fast <laughs> service game, isn't it? Yes. Passing so quickly, 40 love in the blink of an eye. Yes. Monteo looking to close it out to love. Well, there we go, it's as simple as that. Power? You want some power? It's an easy game paddle, isn't it? Just <laughs> smack the ball as hard as you can. 3-4. Well, we're getting closer to the finish line of the first set and somehow they need to break back. Hence the look of concentration and mild concern on the face of Juan Teo and Martin Dineno. I think we've got some more data to crunch. Let's have a look at this one. We have got uh, court coverage, the hot spots being occupied by the right-handed player for um, the Rafa Nadal Academy team, Alex Ruiz, who drifts occasionally over to his uh, teammate's side of the court. Oh, well, yeah, uh, you could tell that he was a little bit more playing at the back than at the net. Slightly more defending than, than uh, at the net position. That means as well that it could be that they won the points at the net quicker than, you know, than the amount of time they spent at the back of the court. And have a look on the Stupa too. This is why they call him Papelito. That is yes, precisely it's exactly what the is meant. the of yeah. why. He is covering 75 to 80 percent of the court when the ball comes uh, from a log or a, yeah yep air game shots i would say and when he's playing at the back he's covering more his side of course as uh, 
Well, that's they should fascinating. That was fascinating uh, how it's revealed exactly what makes uh, Stupachuk the different proposition, the talent that he is, drifting all across the court. His movements, incomparable. Well, the coach in the beginning, Sebastián Nerone, from the other team, was saying that, you know, that when, when they return the serve, they are struggling because Stupa and, and Riz go with the first volley very quick. Right. Two very, very quick and efficient uh, service games from both these pairings have yeah. set up this uh, situation in set one. So now... Where, uh, the Rafa Nagada Academy are now just two games short of closing out set one. Now uh, Alejandro Ruiz serves, so I think this is the moment for Team Advantage to try to get closer on the scoring. Yes, exactly. So they return the first volley, but, you know, yeah. that's what the coach said before. They got to just manage to get one, to hit the ball back nicely, so they just volley slower or without any intention, so they can play high a lot, like for example now, exactly. That's exactly what they need in order to get a different game position. They've got to maneuver those yellow and green jerseys away from the, <laughs> yeah, the, the net. Look at, Look at that. Oh! Ah, that was tricky, Yeah, I would say, because it was a very slow <laughs> kick smash from uh, the guy from Malaga, uh, Alex Reese. A very slow kick, but it has the amount of spin enough to go out by the three meter siphons. Por tres, net. So, 30 love on the Ruiz serve. Two more points, and all of a sudden it's 5 3. Yes, let's see if uh, Dineno and Teo can manage. That is the lob. The thing is. That if you play the oh, lob to long, Stupa, that's long. the difficult thing of, of playing against Stupa and Alex Ruiz. If you play the lob to Stupa, Stupa will go with an easy, simple ruler, which is very painful, I would say, if you're defending. If you play the shot to Alex Ruiz, if you're short, he's going to smash it. If he's a great lob, he's going to go for a massive shot of the bag. Well, that's why when they serve, it's very hard to break. This camera angle that we were just looking at there gives you such a strong sense of how difficult it is to get that ball past uh, this pairing when they move towards the net. Covering everything, Stupovic with his movement, Ruiz with that huge reach of his, but they've got themselves on the net there. And forced back, and forced into the area as well. Mateo putting the ball into the net, and they do have that 5-3 advantage. They're a game away from taking the first set now, and they have a two-game Buffer, big pressure on Teo and Dineno now to hold on to the coattails of the first set, if they can. Dineno with the serve. Alex Ruiz is feeling comfortable, oh. and when Alex is comfortable... Brilliant defence from Dineno there, scrabbling back to get that in play, and that look, look at is that, look, a look, gift! Look, 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 look. To you Teo, Stupa's there. You're not going to believe <laughs> this amazing point. Franco Stupa took is in that house. Different level. Well, Alex Ruiz can't help but grin. Hey, it's hey, just hey. incredible what Stupa's done here. There he is, in the uh, right position. Excuse ah. me, how? He knew that Dag was going there. How? That's how they know each other. You know, he knew that after that, Juan Tello would go with the backhand cross court. And that's the first Man, time in this Hexagon Cup we've seen that. The ball Huge being played part, just cheekily. The wrong side of the net, so to speak, but the right side of the court and taking the point. Love 15. You don't see that much game situations anywhere else more than at the Hexagon Cup Madrid 2024. Oh, beautiful change. And the lob goes up. Teo. It's ragged. It's ragged from Juan Teo. Juan Teo's put the ball into the net and uncharacteristically often. Slow motion again. And this, is pre <laughs> this is big pressure now. After running the whole court, he goes. 3-5 down, 3-5 down, love 30 down. 
in the first set that has gone by so quickly. And if they get the net again, this is what I meant. Ooh. Okay, well, Out. I think it's the first ruler. Stupid Suk missed. Uh, I think the first one was in 1977, <laughs> with the first time he missed the ruler. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. That is uh, news for great shot. Yeah. Yeah. Good recovery. Good recovery from Team Advantage. Level things at uh, 30 each, but yes, exactly. Rafa Nadal Academy is still only one point away from carving out two break points. And those break points would be set points, of course. Well, um, I think they go slightly into uh, Stupasuk's head because um, Stupa just played the kick ruler, the, the, that kick bandeja, that I call it. Not as good as he usually does, just because he missed the one before, like a minute ago. And so he didn't want to risk again that close to the side fence. So he played the kick bandeja to the middle, which is not as effective as it would be, as he always does very cross court to the side fence. Oh, they that, call did it. that go long? And that could be a double fault. Well, okay, the umpire call it out. The players call it in, even though um, uh, even um, Alex and Stupa call it in. Um, well, oh. they save. <laughs> aye, 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 aye. Five, four to Rafa Nadal Academy. They still need this first set. Fascinatingly poised, but they still have their nose in front. The Rafa Nadal Academy team, five, four up in set one. Right, let's have a good old listen, Maori. What are they saying here on this bench? Escuchen una cosa, Martin. Se nos está viniendo como una bala. Cuando sacan, pero cuando restan y nos tiran, el, y nos tiran, se queda mucho el tres cuartos. Quiero que utilicemos esa jugada mucho, ¿vale? Si él te canta, Martín viene. Quiero que le juegues el globo rápido a Martín. Pero a Martín, ¿eh? Juega el globo rápido a Martín, porque viene embalado, porque sabe que se la vas a bajar. Entonces viene embalado. Comprale el globo, ¿vale? Si este te canta atrás o tres cuartos, bajásela, porque la va a querer defender con cristal y está más fácil. Y escucha, dos veces entraste por el revés del gato, ¿vale? Usa la derecha del gato. Over to you, Mari. What's being well, said? Yeah, he's asking, he's, he's telling that, you know, that Dineno, every time they play the lot, that Dineno and Teo play the lot to uh, Alex Ruiz, Dineno is going very fast to the net, so he's asking to, 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 to Alex Ruiz, don't go for the fast shot. If Stupas says to you, listen, Dineno is coming forward, just play a quick lot. Play a very quick lot, no high lot, giving time available to Dineno to reach it comfortably. No, play a quick lot. But si if Stupas tells you, hey, Pero si Dinero is a little bit behind, just go for the winner, por lo menos as you did before. Now let's hear what uh, Seba Nerone says. Sí, claro. Well, 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 para Seba Nere, Nerone si podemos, por el making sure para that they are focused on the task in hand, which is increasingly matando. desperate. They si have to rescue this set if they possibly can do team advantage. Set one is coming to its climax. Que entre, básicamente, no, 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 it's all about no this next match, gato, at least to some extent, in this opening set, because the Rafa Nadal Academy are very close now to closing out the first sets. But the margins are still slight, and they have an opportunity, Dineno and Teo, to level it, but they're going to have to break the serve here. Nerone, the coach, Seba Nerone. Imparting his last words of advice, Dineno. I think Tail. it was clear, uh, you have to compete now, guys. Mm -hmm. It's the time to compete. It's 5-4 down, you don't have any other option. Or you compete and win this, or we go to second set. Stupa with the serve. Serving for the set. And now they go for a lob. That's what they are looking for. I'm waiting for this moment to release from the surf of Stupa, which is very good surf. Oh. Oof. Alex didn't do what the coach said before there. Well, team advantage taking the first point. 
against the serve, love 15. Clever little boy from Argentina, Martin De Neno. Clever one. All or nothing now in set one. Every point matters in this game. No. Second serve. Very quiet in the arena now. Knowledgeable crowd here, understanding the tension, the importance of every point, and even that one, soft as it was, levels things at 15-15. Yeah, I think uh, Juan Tello is missing such an opportunity there because he reached perfectly the uh, ruler from Stupa. Now he's going to go for a lob. No. Oh! 15-30. Mm. It was almost as if Ruiz, like you were saying, was expecting the lob and was almost a bit surprised to find yeah, it I coming low so, he was over the, the net lob towards well. him and it wasn't the shot he was expecting. But it does count as an unforced oh, error. And that one goes remember? long. Do you remember? And now, and now we have a series of break points that matter enormously to this pairing. Do you remember the coach where he says, OK, listen, but remember in the long point, we're going to go to Alex. And that's what they're doing now because they know that at some point, if there is one of these two players who can make a little mistake, would be Alex more than Stupa. It's more likely to be Ruiz. Yes, just because he's a lefty and very powerful and very, you know, a kind of player who wins many points, but can also lose many points. So, great point. And now he's a little bit under pressure. He got to go off for a great winner. Yes! What's sure. that? Oh. It's only Dinero on the court. How did Stupacuk oh, yeah, yeah. not get that one away? But they get away with it in the end. <laughs> they dodged a bullet there. Stupacuk had the whole court at his disposal here, and he plays it straight well, back to Dinero. Well, he thought that Martin would go cross-court, running cross-court, you know, that's the natural way of where you're going to go to reach that. That's why I think Martin... Um, Stupa tried to surprise Martin, but it was Martin who gave the surprise to, to Stupa. Still one break pointer. I think Dineno was so surprised that ball came back to him that he fluffed and his line slightly. But there go. we go. Five there we have it. Five each in the opening set, and the break back is complete. All the matches were very, very even since the beginning of the second day of the Hexagon Cup, and this one is not going to be any different. Any different. Teo and Dineno now have that crucial late break back to level things at five each. Teo with the serve, they need to hold throw, they need to hold serve, and then they need to try and close it out. Good start. And they're unsettled now, Ruiz and Stupa were so close, so close to and a decisive now, blow. I know it's the first time I think in the, in the game that Teo and Dineno are leading. And think about how many mistakes from the Alex Ruiz were in the last... I don't know, two games. Well, four, five? Two, po two points played in this game and two mistakes from Ruiz have set up a 30 love advantage on the tail serve. It's nothing, it's, there is no difference yet because there is no breaks, no nothing. You know? Still, 5 0 because they had an advantage before. But if Teo and Dineno win this game, they know that we'll, if they lose the set, it will be. Only in, in a tiebreak. Tie Very good. Gato. Muy bien, Gato. 40-15. Dineno said, very well done. Cat. <laughs> okay, about to move ahead, potentially, in this set, right when it matters, at the very end, having been behind for most of it. Showing all the powers of resilience that their female counterparts showed in their victory uh, in the previous match. And they move into the lead by 65. Well, we have a game on our hands here. We have a tournament on our hands day two coming to an end of the hexagon cup here in the madrid arena it is filling up make no mistake by the time the weekend comes around pretty much every seat i think will be bouncing 
Connect with us if you're just at home watching on. Hashtag Hexagon Cup for all your socials. Visit the website at hexagoncup.com or on uh, X or on Instagram. Look for the tag at Hexagon Cup underscore and uh, get involved as they are doing in the stands and across the world watching on. And the biggest prize fund ever put up for a televised, for a paddle tournament, which is a uh, new, innovative, and at the moment, with every single match that takes to the court, delivering great drama. Para ganar un poquito la posición y empezar castigando de ahí. Vamos, pero para. Pensamos en estos cuatro, eh. Estos cuatro, vale. Cuatro, eh. Sofía Araujo having won her match in the company of uh, Delphi Brea in the seats behind Teo and Dinero. Who are mirroring the contributions of their female counterparts by. Never saying die in this match. Cheered on now. What can they do? Can they win it in regulation time or will this go to a tie break? We're about to find out. Big moment in the match. We're about to find out which way the first set is going to go. 6 5, we're back on throw. It'll be the Rafa Nadal Academy who will have the ball and they will be serving to stay in this first set and to take it to a tie break, level it at six apiece. And then, as we know, in tie breaks, it's anyone's game. But they have to get there first. And Dineno and Teo will throw the kitchen sink at them here. Well, Alex Reese going to serve now. Left handed player. Didn't get any break. They just broke a stupid serve before. And now we're going to see how they can manage this. I think they will try to break again. No. What a change of direction, speed, rhythm from Papelito. Mr. Franco Stupa took perfectly down to his uh, regular partner in parallel, Martin Dineno. There we go. Uh, sorry, he said to Stupa took, but but he didn't mean you, <laughs> you talk to your partner, buddy. <laughs> you talk to Alex Reese not to play that shot to me if you don't want to be hit with the ball. Uh, well, it was a little bit under pressure, Alex, in that shot. 50 no. Oh. Net, we are getting in a very tough moment of the match for Alex and Stupa. And let's see how Alex manages the. Pressure. How did he get that back? How did look. he get that? Oh. Oh. Is that a winner? Stupa no, with not. a return. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere. All Order players. is restored. Order and is restored. There Super is down and the middle. There and there's the Gato. Teo hit it. No, oh, no, no it's still in play. It's still in play. Yeah. Dineno with the smash. And what a are. point. Good what good a point. Dineno and Teo. That was the point <laughs> of the Hexagon Cup so far. Outstanding from both pairings. <laughs> but. Most importantly of all, it went the way of Team Advantage in the end and they moved to 15-30. Just impossible paddle, some of this. <laughs> he didn't really read the direction from where Dineno hit, hit the <laughs> Look ball. at that expression from Martin Yeah, Dineno. yeah, he's like, man, you should have done that. I tell Not you what, me. Murray, that almost left you speechless, which is something I haven't heard over the opening two days. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> You had me worried. I thought you'd expired. No, no. What a backhand. What a drop shot. Oh, Gato. fantastic. Gato. So Alex Ruiz doesn't have to smash the ball. He can play a shot like that as well and produce an out and out winner. Stop the ball dead. Look in what they've got to Look do in order to win the touch point. There. Had to play an amazing backhand from Stupa and then an amazing backhand and drop shot from Alex Ruiz fighting for every point now. 30-0-6-5. Great lob. Amazing backhand. Set points incoming. Set. set points incoming. <laughs> Two of them for team advantage. Two chances. Ruiz with the serve. <laughs> Teo with the return. No! One gone. And now, the clench of the fist. Who do you think goes for the golden point? Ruiz, um, Teo again? Or who would choose to go? 
Dinero, Taylor, 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 yeah, he asked for. He says, I missed that return, but I'm not going to miss the golden point. Edge of the seat time, <laughs> Ruiz. Change the serve down the middle. From amazing Oof. love from Gato Tello. Comfortable, double rebound, close in the net. Angle, Juan Tello. Targeting Ruiz, goading him into making that error. And there is the error. There is the error. And that tactic that we heard explained by their coaching staff worked to a T. They closed out set one. And they did it before the need for a tie break. Somehow, Rafa Nadal Academy have contrived to lose that, and somehow, Team Advantage have won the first set. I'll see you in the second set, Ned. Have a banana, my son. <laughs> Chiquita banana. <laughs> well, that was amazing. The ones who, wish to, who has to win is them, not us now. They Look how tight it is. 52% place, 48%. Two points different. Two points Two different. Points. Total one. 29 to 27. This Consecutive points won, five apiece. Winning smashes. Well, Alex Ruiz contributing to six, and Dineno and Juanteo just getting four. And golden points won. One for Alex Ruiz and a stupor. What really matters, though, is that set one went the way of team advantage. And Martin Dineno and Juan Teo are at it again. One set up. Breathless, breathless stuff here. The Mexican Cup bursting into life again for the last match on day two. So, Juan Teo examining his equipment there, making sure that everything is in working order. With his game, it most certainly is. Both he and uh, Martin Dineno. Leaving it late, but coming at the Rafa Nadal Academy with a late charge in that opening set when they were in control. Stupachuk and Alex Ruiz. And somehow the game got away from them, and somehow Team Advantage did what they do. Doing enough. 7 5. And we get the second set and potentially the final set underway. Touch there from Stupa. Hasty there from Guadeo finding the net under no pressure on that lofted lob there from Stupachuk. And they are suddenly under pressure again. 
Love 30 down in the opening serving match, serving game of the second set. Love, make that love 40. And there could be, should be, probably will be a very early break of serve in this second set. Again, repeating the pattern that we saw almost identically in the women's match that saw victory go for team, to team advantage. They lost, having won the tiebreak, they lost the um, opening game of the second set to love. Are the men going to do exactly the same? Nice between the legs. So 15-40. Still got three break points. Have uh, Stupachuk and Alex Ruiz. Oh, a little bit relaxed yeah, after uh, such a great end of the first set. Yeah. Uh, three times in that match that Manteo under relatively limited pressure smashed the ball into the net and uh, really Teo has effectively lost them that opening game through some wayward finishing. And they'll be surprised, I think, Rafa Nadal Academy, that that went their way so quickly. But it did. They do like a little joke. You know? He caught you in the middle. He said, like your, like your mother-in-law. He's always in the middle. <laughs> you know? That was a joke Franco from uh, Carlos Pozzoni, the Argentinian coach. Well, it's good to know that mother-in-law jokes exist across the world. Yes. And everywhere. in every culture and in every language. Lucky me, I got the best one. Yeah, me too. Well, so lucky us then. We don't have the same mother-in-law, do we? No, I think so. <laughs> so a muted start in terms of team advantage to the second set, to the fireworks that ended a brilliant final, final game. What a smash off the back wall. He's out by three meters. No, he didn't. He was there and unfortunately... So 30-15 on serve, Stupa, with the ball in hand. Now Dineno oh, tying himself in knots there and frustrated by that because he just couldn't quite dig the ball out deep in the court. Alex Ruiz playing him into difficulty there. So suddenly they're like two different players on court. So different from how they ended that first set. What a backhand. Now, is that the spark that will uh, get their set? Hand. And if you play with that amount ignited. of backspin in this court, it really pays off. But it's not that easy to play with that amount of backspin. Have a look. Have a look on that preparation and executing just in front of him down the line. That's very difficult shot to do. Where's that one going? Well, loose, loose three. from one player. Careless. Do we call that portress as well? <laughs> I think he'd rather you'd called it nothing and just moved on, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. Just better to don't even call it. Pr pretend it didn't happen. Ooh. 
<laughs> Stupa almost gets his partner. It happened before in other matches, of course. That you know when the players don't know each other that much, and the cross to the other side sometimes happens that they hit each other. Atrás, Ale. Alex, Alex wrist back. Very well played from uh, and clever, awaiting patience. Al Alex Ruiz. Hey, 2 0, last 15. Mm, it's all going their way in Some the early, questions. early exchanges in the second set. From the advantage team. Just a little reminder of how things stand in this group as well. Team advantage are playing, having won the first set, they're playing if they win this match to win the group and progress to the semi finals. And Rafa Nadal Academy. Regardless of whether or not they win this or lose it, are not out of it yet, and it would all go to their encounter tomorrow against the 11 11 team, where it will be decided. Regardless of uh, whether or not they win or lose this match, they are neither out nor in. I think tomorrow is going to be a big day. Yeah. Net as well, because we're going to go all the results, we're going to know who goes through the semi finals, we're going to know who's going to be eliminated from. Males from female and from next generation. Remember, there are three categories, I would say. To 60. Ah. Oh, it's such an unforced error. But, anyways, still leading this game 15 30. Yeah, at the end of tomorrow, when we know which of the teams are eliminated from which of the categories, we will have a league table for the overall Hexagon Cup. We'll understand which team in all three categories across. Uh, the different groupings are actually best placed. Listen, on Saturday, we've got the great news that we're going to have all the matches on court. Next generation, female semi-finals and male semi-finals. You want it, Paddle? Saturday is the day as well. Record-breaking in many ways. Possibly the longest ever broadcast by any sports presenters in the history of television. Wow. Oh. Wow and wow. And wow Fantastic. indeed. Fantastic. And that sets up another break point. In fact, two of them. And this, well, they are taking the second set at the moment completely under their wings. This is a uh, total control at the moment and a potential double break of serve. I'm curious what Dineno and Wanteo, their levels of concentration just dropping off the edge of a cliff at the moment. How quick Alex Ritz goes to the net. Well, yeah, big mistake, I think. <laughs> for, for to yeah. You know is. He Set knows. the controls to the heart of the sun. That one was off, that ball. Probably still rising. He wasn't that comfortably still. to smash there. Still. He was running backwards and I he knows he's not the core to smash back to his side. And even less if you have Juan Tello in front of you, the massive Argentinian boy who serves now for the golden point. Still wow. a break point, though, for Ruiz and Stupa. What a level yeah, and there of it is, and there it is. Three nil up. A level of panel. They have a buffer. Zero. They have a buffer. That is potentially a really big moment in the outcome of this match. Perfecto, perfecto, perfecto. Perfecto, ahí. Hey. Well, Andrea Ballester has been busy, and I believe she's ferreted out another interv interviewee uh, to enlighten us at the side of the court. Vanessa Martín, un placer tenerte aquí en esta jornada de Hexagon Padel. Tú que nos inspiras a todos con tu música, ¿qué te está inspirando a ti este partido, Vanessa? Pues muchísimo, además, estoy flipando, me lo estoy gozando. Ale Ruiz Paisano está haciendo un partidazo con su compañero. Y a toda velocidad, ¿verdad? A toda velocidad, ¿no? Me quedo, yo que soy aficionada, lo veo tan fácil y después, cuando te pones ahí la pista, qué complicación, ¿no? Pero bueno, sí, claro, el, el deporte es inspirador y sobre todo cuando lo ves así, en este nivel tan exquisito. Muchas gracias y que sigas disfrutando aquí en esta boca. A vosotros, gracias. Vanessa Martín, thank you.
for coming to this uh, Madrid arena. Uh, Vanessa Martinez is a Spanish singer, poet and songwriter. She's uh, from Malaga. And she came also to watch Padre because she's a Padre lover. Like all of you there, like everyone here at the Madrid are watching the Hexagon Cup. Reaching an ever wider audience, the fastest growing sport in the world is being uh, exemplified here by the Hexagon Cup and the level, the standard with which these players are entertaining us. Quite incredible stuff. <laughs> They're Kids are it. also having fun. The future of paddle <laughs> could be there. Who knows? It there we are, you're on the telly! Uh, hello, buddy, how are you doing? <laughs> on the big screen, enjoying themselves. Kids of all ages being treated to uh, an intriguing match because at the moment this is I headed to a super tie break. The team who lost the first set, what, two, the Rafa Nadal Academy, breaks. are uh, in firm control of this second set. He's two breaks up, it's not one break. Um, no, they've, they've broken them twice. They've not won a game yet. Have team advantage. What yeah. about Try getting shots. the ball past that wall of yellow. No chance. My goodness, Martin Dineno. Yeah. It's intimidating at the moment from Ruiz and Stupa. Yes. They bossed that point. Yeah, they're both. Both players, uh, Ruiz and Stupa, are very aggressive volleys. No, that was out. That was out. I think it was out. Easy one is. Yeah, they call it out. <laughs> Sorry, Alex, to kill your smash by calling it out, but it was out. I tell you, Mario, I have been really impressed by the spirit of fairness yeah, yeah. amongst the paddle players. Don't yeah. always see that in tennis, I have to say. Yes? Do you, do you see that in tennis as well? Or no, not, I think you see it a little less. A little less. A little, yeah. a little less. Could be. There's a real spirit of sportsmanship. I mean, it's partly due to the fact that, as we see here, actually, these two pairings are normally playing alongside each other rather than against each other, so they know each other very well. But there's a lot at stake here, not least. A million euros prize fund. Wow. What a fantastic. Yeah. Like a, I don't know, it was a bandeja from a cipher, from a cipher's rebound, you know? From Gato Tello, left side player. 30 -0. Just a squeak of a chance here now for team advantage to put a bit of pressure on the side. Second serve. Very interesting how even all the matches are in this complete different format event uh, with different partners, different players, team players, and all the matches are very, very similar. I, I'm quite impressed about this, actually. Uh, even though there are some players who play in this main circuit together, but most of them don't. They just play now against each other. Like right. these two. Ruiz did brilliantly there. That was aimed at his ankles, and somehow he managed to get it back with something as well on it. Fantastic defence. So not, not just in attack, but in defence. Oh, and that is absolute wow. It was the right idea, but there we go. Yeah, I think that, I mean, he, what he tried to do was good if uh, another player would be uh, in that side, like no Juan Tello, because Juan Tello is there, has always a powerful shot, and he's quite tall. Look. You know, it was powerful shot. He, could, yeah. he couldn't even... He would be much better to a stoop to defend that Bandeja rather than he volleying. Break point. Like he was already on the way, you know. Putting some pressure with a good lobs. Juan Tello. Fantastic lob, that one. Oh! Dover point. Blocks. Still break point for team advantage. They've been broken twice in the second set. But if they can get this point, they'll have clawed at least one break back. He's going to play with second serve. He's going to give the chance, perhaps, to Juan Tello to start leading the point with the, with the lob. Not really. Oh, oh, no! Such a mistake! That was the opposite of a lob. 
and I tell you, we are closer to the third set. I got to tell somehow. I think that Dineno and Teo, we have to do such a work, such a job in order to come back. But otherwise, you never know. You never present. know. But that does, I agree with you, Mauri. That feels like their chance has gone yeah, of leveling this second set. Four love. That is uh, close to impossible, particularly the way I think that Ruiz and Stupa are playing. Their level hasn't dropped. They're very, very constant. They're very consistent. No, the only time that dropped was at the end of the of the first set with Alex. That was, I don't know, a little bit nervous, so he didn't really perform as he was doing during the match. So th those three points made the difference of the first set, uh, oh, sorry, of the first set, where finally got for to to Dineno and, and Teo, but. It was out. Yeah, so, last 15, we carry on in the same way. Well, I mean, a, 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 a break here, and it really is yes. all over. And they would be just almost impossible. That well, one's out. Stupash. A little bit ambitious. Runs his hand <laughs> through his hair there in frustration. Deneno affords himself a little smile, and it's all level at 15 each. Deneno on the serve. Good return from Ruiz, but a, a poor volley there on approach to the net. Great forehand was uh, with a little bit of top spin, putting the ball down to Juan Teo's feet, then running forward, trying, to, but didn't work. Wow, what a half volley with the backhand from Estupa. Yeah. Lovely shot but from Dineno. But now it's 15. Oh, they vamos, might vamos. get a game here. Do you think Dineno is going to give up? Never. Ever, ever, ever. Ever? Ever. <laughs> not Dineno. I don't know who else, <laughs> but not Dineno, I promise you. So it's never then. Well, good decision to play the lob there. Oh, well. No! No! Oh. <laughs> no! What is that? What was well, that? Well, that was yeah. pure box office, wasn't it? That was brilliant. Here you have. Oh, the power of Ruiz's smash okay. backfiring on him with that brilliant uh, reaction there from, well, first Teo and then Dineno. Uh, Stupa just had to put it away at the end. Still under a bit of and pressure now? here. Uh, yes, and now? And now, oh. ah, la, 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 la. And now we do have another break golden point, point, golden point. Franco call it. Super took, says, hey, serve to me. I'm here, I'm ready. Well, if this goes the way of Ruiz and Stupa, then the set has gone. They'll be serving at five games to love. Yeah, listen, and it's a big punch on the face. Look at that. Look at that. Oof. Oh, there we go. Oh, five there it is. Well, how did that happen? They won the first set and they trail now. Five games to love in the second. To this set. Well, even they, in their wildest dreams, I don't think Stupa and Ruiz would have, set, would have possibly imagined they'd have this score line in the second set. They've won the second set, and there's something catastrophic happens, which I can't see. And then we're going to go, almost certainly, to a uh, super tie-break. These are some of the powerful off-court winners from uh, the Rafa Nadal Academy team. Three over the back wall, two over the side wall, and three of those mighty bringbacks as well, clearing the net on the turn. What do you reckon, Mauri? That's a pretty good return, isn't it? And uh, it's uh, probably, I don't know what the breakdown is, but most of those will have come from Ruiz. Yeah, well, uh, what, what I mean is that for, for Dineno and, and um, Teo, it's, a, it's a hard punch on the faces because it's 5-0. And if they lose this game, then it's going to be 6-0. I mean, then you've got to think about it. They're at next 10 points in a super tie wreck, and it's gone. And we, we haven't even get one game in the second set. You know what I mean? It's, a, it's been a big difference in this second set.
for this pair that you watch now on the screen. Well, one game to take here on serve, and then the second set is theirs. It's that simple in theory. Three breaks of serve result in this extraordinary scoreline in the second set. It could be that we're about to see the first set in the Hexagon Cup that will be one six love. We haven't seen that yet in any of the categories, either of the women or the men. What a way to come back, I would say, from, uh, from Stupa and, and yet, Alex Ruiz. And actually, if you think about it, it's 10-7. Do you know what I mean? It's 10-7 yeah. in games. But this 5-0 seems to be like much more important than the first set, actually. And yet the strange thing about all of this, Mari, is uh. that we're almost certainly heading for a super tie break. None of this necessarily has any bearing on what might happen in the super tie break. <laughs> yes, yeah, true. We, we still don't know if we're going to go to the super tie break. I think we will. I'm guessing we will. It very looks like. Well, the comeback is on. <laughs> yes. Love 15 on the super serve. Hey! Do you think this? Oh. That, that, I think that was slightly out. Just long. Long, yes. Second serve. Stupachuk. Amazing ruler. Slow. Now from Alex. Whoa. How does he reach that ball? Competing the other way around. Chiquita to Alex Ruiz. And Stupa reaches the ball. Amazing. What a rally this is. They should change size. Yeah, exactly. That's what they're doing now. Recovering with that high lot from Alex Ruiz. Pin the drop oh, shot. Oh, what a touch. Alex, what a drop shot. Take a bow, Alex Ruiz. That was a delight. A delight. Such a hand. Beautiful. Stop the ball dead. Look at that, look at that. Boom. Here it comes, here and it comes. And, and with there a it is. Forehand, with a forehand volley, which is very difficult to do. It's much easier for a natural way of moving your wrist up. Much easier to do the back um, drop shots with the backhand. 30 each. 30 all. Five love. The lead for the uh, Rafa Nadal Academy team in the second set to take it to a super tie break in place of a third set. Oh. Oh. Pair in blue just pinned to the back wall at the moment by the might of the two players who faced them across Chiqui the net. But there's a Chiqui unfortunate Chiqui error there forced by Dineno. <laughs> And you see? And that's a break point. Yeah, he doesn't care. They're joking about the comeback, but Five maybe. Zero. Don't care. <laughs> this is annoying, isn't it? <laughs> this is just irritating for the Rafa Nadal Academy team. They just want to get over the line in the second set and get into the, the meat of the super tiebreak. Don't need this distraction. Another Chiquita again. And now it's a golden point, and now it's a set point, and now it's a point. Well, it's what a point! It's a golden point, it's a set point, but it's also a break point. It's three different things in one. <laughs> so it's a, it's a platinum point. <laughs> yeah? There's a lot going on. Platinum, how does it in English? Platinum. Platinum. Platinum is a goal uh, point. So if they win this, it's the set, and we go to a super tie break. Looking that way, he's in control of this point at the moment. Looking to power his way over the line. Yeah. Wow. Five, one. Teo is there. The break is complete. No whitewash after all in the second set. And now they will take the ball and now they will save. Now, is this just prolonging the agony in the second set? Who knows? Or is this a comeback? Who knows? They've been broken three times. They've just broken back once. But still, point by point, game by game. Oh. 
Fantastic first serve from Juan Tello. Down the very, very corner. Oh, it's very rare you see a service winner like that in paddle, isn't it? Yeah. But, you know, they know each other very well. He knows where to serve. You know, he's serving now to uh, Stupatsuk in line with his body. But to Alex Ruiz was straight to his backhand. Dineno reaching, getting the ball. Whoa. Oh, Ruiz, brilliant on the backhand, brilliant on the backhand again. Stupa with the smash. What a point. Stupa what somehow point. recovering. Dineno trying to what? bury the opponent and getting the winner. Martin Dineno, Ezeiza, Argentina, the radio is here to demonstrate how paddle should be played. Look at that. Look at the touch. The touch with the backhand slow enough not to reach the back wall. Not giving any chance to Alex Ruiz to reach it. What were they doing for the first five games of this set? I don't know. They were just walking up. <laughs> oh, no, brilliant, no. brilliant, brilliant Papelito from Stuka. Be How did he get there? Papelito will, oh, but Alex will not. <laughs> Well, did you see how fast Stupa is? Well, this could be a service game to love. And then they'll have another opportunity that they will have to take to break the, the Rafa Nadal Academy that, serve again. There are, the some things, there are some things, Ned, that you never know if it's, it is better for team advantage or if both have been better, they lose the well, set and then they win eight points in a row as they are doing now. Ha! Who knows? We're going to know it later after this change ends. <laughs> Curious of things have happened yes. in paddle, but not many. <laughs> All right, let's um, have another look at some of the 3D graphics that we can offer you up here at the Hexagon Cup. Show me what we have now. Well, this is smash speed, I think, for all four players. Dineno, wow. Stupa, Teo and Ruiz. And one player, head and shoulders, with the hardest smash in this encounter. Top right-hand corner, team advantages, Juan Teo. And that is a record in terms of, I think, the speeds that we've seen at, from any player throughout yeah, the Hexagon yeah. Cup so far. Yeah. And it's um, significantly faster than anything we've seen. That's really rapid, isn't it? 164 kilometers an hour. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I think, you know, the, the amount of power, if you play in parallel and very fast, that makes complete sense. And, and that's what actually Teo does, and it's very effective. But, you know, as well as if you play like uh, Stupa's smashes or Alex Reese's smashes, even though they're slightly slower, I would say 30 kilometers slower, but still could be as effective as uh, Teo's smashes because it could just change the direction or the decision at the right moment. Well, what's going to happen next? Well, uh, well just let's say... I want <laughs> Well, they look relaxed enough, and maybe they themselves don't really believe they can get this done, or they're wondering how to approach it, but uh, they were five love down in the second set. Suddenly, they find themselves winning two on the bounce, breaking the serve of the Rafa Nadal Academy, holding their own throw with a degree of ease, and now, uh, holding their serve, I should say, and now they have the possibility, the obligation, in fact, to break the Rafa Nadal Academy serve again. It's Alex Ruiz who's going to be serving at them. The coach uh, just said, hey, guys, oh, uh, the coach Seven Neroni, the coach of advantage, they said to, to Dineno and, and Teo, hey, guys, imagine that you win this set. You can mess around to your partners the whole year long. Hey, from 5-0, we won't we beat you yeah. in the Hexagon Cup. I'll be rubbing salt into the wounds for the entire year. Very nearly clearing the top of the back wall there. Another point goes their way. Love 15. What is going on? Yes. <laughs> what is going on? 
Well, put it another way, they won five games in a row, and there's no reason why Team Advantage can't win five games in a row. Exactly, you said that, and it's complete right. That's paddle. But I really saw the, the set going to Alex and Stupa. But, but this could happen, you know? Well, they're just being annoying, aren't they? Do you know what usually happens? <laughs> no, the, the point is that when you have no pressure, when you have nothing to lose, yeah. then you just... What happened? I, I didn't see what happened. Some controversy as to whether that ball was out or not. <laughs> they're just not 100% uh, sure. Are we going to have a look? So, this could be a proper challenge here. Do you want Queréis pedir o es buena de ellos, sí? Yeah, then we call it. Yeah. It's a challenge. Challenge. So we get an official challenge. Yes, yeah. Stupatsuk challenges that ball. It was called out by Dineno, I think, and Stupa's pretty convinced it was in. So teammates normally. Yes. Disputing. One of the best pairs in the world. I wouldn't once. call it a critical point, but in the grand scheme of things, the super pibes. <laughs> the super pibes, as they're known. Yes, in Argentina, the super mate. That's how they're well known worldwide in the world of paddle. If you are into the professional, if you follow the professional, it's is the birthday of Teo. Oh, ah, now it is, isn't it? <laughs> it's his 29th yeah. birthday. Very well done. Happy it birthday, is, Gato. 29th birthday. Well, they are, they finally figure that out. <laughs> they took this time by me, the umpire is in the challenge, to the whole crowd. All right, let's have a look now. In or out? Birthday. Is it Stupa or Doneno? Who's going to get this right? That looks <laughs> in. If anything, that's it. That's. No, I think that the foot just obscures it on that angle. I, it, does it look in? Yeah, yeah, it was in. Uh, it was in. So the point goes to Stupa. Oh, no, it doesn't. Goes to Dineno. So exactly, because Dineno hit it back. Yep. Stupa thought he won the point, but uh, Dineno hit it back. Oh. Stupa's back, Stupa's back. 5-3, my friend. 5-3, that was another break. Well, that is now and a closable gap. And now you tell me how this is going to end. Two sets, three sets. <laughs> now no one knows. And that's the beauty of panel. That's three games in a row. Hold this serve, and it's four in a row. Wow. Well, this is now again, as we said before, you know, now they've lost three games in a row. Well, we're going to lose. Alex Ruiz says, I don't care. Yep. I go for it. And that's usually when, when you play, when you don't play under pressure, usually you don't make mistakes. And now it's last 30. They cannot lose this game after winning three games in a row. They might. <laughs> yes, last 30. <laughs> they might. It's one, almost as if Ruiz point. and Stupa have now relaxed a little bit and stopped being annoyed by what's going on when they were already, their minds were in that super tie break, thinking that they could just close it out. But yeah. Look at oh, that! Look at that! Po and smiling faces from the advantage team. <laughs> Bad mistake from Stupa to trying to smash that ball. Still behind in this game though, 15-30. So still the advantage against team advantage on their serve. Stupa raises a, a tall one. Ruiz does well to dig that one out. Uh, is that on? Oh, it's in. Wow. He's going to go again for a winner. Oh, yes, but now it didn't work. 30 all. Hey, listen, if they win this, they have also to break the next serve. I think Stupa serves the next game, huh? 
which is not an easy task. <laughs> Atrás Stupa, Atrás Stupa. Was, uh, Stupa is behind, Stupa is behind. What a tricky shot from Stupa. And now, what do you think, Teo? Teo goes. Oh no! Oh no, 15 40. Alex Riz can't believe it. Teo neither. So. Set points now, two of them coming the way of the Rafa Nadal Academy team <laughs> to take it into that super tie break that seemed an inevitability. I want a super tie break. And I want it now. <laughs> yeah. Like Freddie Mercury said, I want it now. No, they're not going to give it to me now. Nope. Yet. Let's yes. wait a while. One point. more Let's set see. point remains. <laughs> Golden point. <laughs> Stupa leading the pair, doesn't even ask to his partner, uh, do you want to go for a return? No, give it to me. Here you go. So second, second serve. serve. <laughs> Pressure for Dineno to stay in the set. Stupa with the opportunity now. Brilliant shot from Dineno, nicely returned from Ruiz. They move to the net. You give me three sets, you give me the super tie wreck. And somehow they have hung on, and the comeback continues. Five games to four. How are they still in it? No one knows. No es eso. Te digo una cosa. Le llegas a ganar. Se lo recordás todo el todo el año. Cada entrenamiento le decís cero cinco. Well, even every training session, you're gonna go back and tell your partner what it just done during the Hexagon Cup. If you win this game. As the coach says, every single training session that they train every single day of the year, in every trip, in every flight, in every tournament, you will remind to your current partner, to your regular partner, of how they threw away a 5-0 lead in the second. With three breaks down. Well, and I say that they have to win now. That's what the coach said. They have to win. We're not. We, we can't do much. <laughs> so very animated on their bench, less animated on the Rafa Nadal Academy bench. Okay, just uh, the coach said, just try hey. to believe more on the shot that you have in front. Not the shot when the ball is coming off the back goals or the rolls. No, we don't trust that much of those shots. But when the ball is in front of us, we're going to believe more on us and we're going to try to go for winners. Team supported there. Alex Ruiz and uh, Stupa are just waiting now to get things underway. There's a little problem in the crowd that is uh, drawing the attention away uh, from the action at the moment, as you can tell. We're not going to show you what's uh, going on, but there's a, a, a minor looking disturbance at the moment that is being dealt with. And it's uh, just holding proceedings up at the moment and distracting from what has yeah, been an extraordinary bad. match. An extraordinary match in extraordinary circumstances. As we wait to continue. And there is just... A, there's an altercation. Well, it's, think, uh, yeah, at the moment, not yeah, particularly just, uh, serious. We'll yeah, stay away security. from it. Uh, but that there. explains, I think, why we are waiting. And the, the lights have come up so that the uh, security can get involved, calm down the tempers that are frayed up for whatever reason. And, um, well, as if this extraordinary night of drama, this bizarre match, needed another extraordinary twist. We've just been offered a completely irrelevant distraction by the crowd. Well, wine is already taking off out of the stadium. I think it's calming down and I think it's being dealt with. And hopefully we can resume the action fairly soon.
It happened just behind the bench, actually, of the team advantage players. Uh, but the lights are dimmed. The uh, protagonists involved have been removed by security. Nothing too untoward happened. And I think we can uh, concentrate on the paddle. What happened this good for for Dineno and Teo to put the, the, the game a little bit down? Who knows? Down? Not really? Who knows? Who knows? Who the only knows thing that we that know is that these two people are out of the stadium. That makes me very, very, very happy. Thank you very much. Please don't come back anymore here. We're going to be very happy to carry on enjoying this fantastic Hexen Cup 2024 in Madrid Arena. Right. Let's uh, remind you of what happened before that disturbance just distracted our attention as uh, Alex Ruiz tries to compose his thoughts <laughs> yes. with a task in hand. Rafa Nadal Academy have seen their 5-0 lead in set two shrink to 5-4. However, they do serve in the next game, so they will have that advantage. Problem is, they have been broken twice in quick succession uh, by their opponents, Martin Dineno and uh, El, El Gato. Yeah, they've still got a break in hand. Yes. So they will be serving to take it to the super tie break. And uh, there's still a chance that we will get this match finished before light comes up tomorrow morning. Stupa took the chance to go out to the toilet. Well, me and the, these people were just messing around. Uh, so now he's back. Right. And so. Well, as if the match itself wasn't bizarre enough. Stupa, I think, as you alluded to, I think he has the balls. I think he's going to be serving. Yes. And he has the responsibility of closing this out and getting it done. And with all the, the crowd of the stadium was uh, shouting, Fuera, Fuera. That's a Spanish way to say, go out of the stadium to those who are disturbing. Well, Stupa and Ruiz, half an hour ago, were expecting to be in a super tiebreak. And now they're in a fight for the right to be in that super tie break. <laughs> oh, what a decision from Dineno. I think Dineno and, and Teo will just risk a little bit because... Exactly. Because if they don't, Alex Ruiz and Stupa will because it's the only and the last chance they have. Fifteen love then. Oh, is that thirty? Go, go. Oh, somehow he gets it back. Oh. Yeah. Por cuatro. Por cuatro. Thirty love with the backhand volley from Alex Reese. All the Rafa Nadal Academy team cheering from outside. The whole team is involved now well, in by this my, match. By my count, that's the fifth time that uh, the Rafa Nadal Academy team have placed the ball out of sight and over the back wall. Vicious spin wow. on both those approach shots there. Very well done from Juan Teo, risking a little bit there. And that shot down the middle of the back wall. 30-15. 30-15. What happens now if they get 30-0? Who's going to be under pressure? I don't know. Four of them. But at the moment, advantage team Dineno and Juan Teo has to... Ah, oh, um, oh, just <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna happen, hey, is it? Yeah, it can't happen. This next point is huge in the context of the I game. I told you, the one person in the world who will never ever give up is gonna be Dineno, Mr. Juan Dineno. Martin Dineno, no, no. oh, sorry, into the I'm net. I'm so sorry. You called him by his wrong name and yes. he put the ball in the net. I'm so sorry about that. This is now two. Chances two to set win points. The set. They've had set points already, which and they've squandered. And to go to super tiebreak. Mm. The yes. super tiebreak that should have started at least half an hour ago, but didn't. <laughs> oh, oh, that was out. Oh, was it out? No, 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 it was that in. Was in. <laughs> in. Wow. Alex Reese, 6 5.
And now it's the first set from 6-4. So. Ay, mi madre. Ay, mi madre. <laughs> well, we got there in the end. The expected outcome delivered in the most unexpected of manners as uh, Team Rafa Nadal Academy leveled things up with a set of peach, this, uh, a set of piece, I should say. This is the uh, set summary. Total points won, 29 each. Percentage points won, 50% each. I mean, there's nothing Twice separating that, oh. those stats, really. 6075. Break points, that's the significant statistic. Hey, what's Break the second points set? won. And it was set. Alex Ruiz and Franco uh, Stupachuk who won three out of six, as opposed to Martin Dineno's two from five. Almost one hour set. That's not you shot at all. Let's look back on set, the set. high drama of set two. Well, two minutes past 11 o'clock here in Madrid, and we still don't know who's going to win this match, but we will do fairly soon because they're about to come back onto the court and uh, duel it out in a super tie break to decide the outcome of this uh, extraordinary points. encounter. <laughs> if we're lucky, 10 points. Game on. Set one going to advantage by seven games to five. Set two going the way of Rafa Nadal's academy by six games to four in the end after a four consecutive games went the way of Dineno and Teo. And that means we're into a super tie break. The first to 10 by two clear points. And everything that has gone before just becomes irrelevant now. It's down to this Temple. shootout between yes. these uh, these two pairings. Wow. He's going to go for a smash? Not really. Well, this 1-0 to Martin Dineno and Juan Tello. So the first blow struck by Dineno and Teo. And now there are two serves from the Rafa Nadal Academy team. And the first mini break as uh, Stupa puts the ball into the net. They're back again. They didn't want to lose 6-0, I think, in the second set. That's why they made four games and that they thought, OK, that's enough. Now we go to Super Tyreek. Well, my mind once again goes back to the wow. match what a we saw earlier on today. In fact, the previous match when we saw their female uh, companions, their teammates, take it to a super tie break in the end and close close it out to get the uh, the victory. Two one. They got one mini break, which is already taken back yeah. from Franco Stupa two. Again, is the first shot that he puts down his partner down the line. To each. To his regular partner, that's what he meant. Stupa looks absolutely wired. <laughs> totally engaged in this now. Yes, yes. 
Ruiz reaching for that, getting it. Stupa covering so much of the court again. His movement impeccable. What a chiquita. What a chiquita. Martin Dineno. What a way of fighting. But we're back on serve. Thanks God Martin wasn't in the crowd there, otherwise, man, he would win anyways, because he never gives up, as I told you before. This is 2-3. Uh, they're just pushing Alex Riz a little bit more. He's doing a great job. He's there. doing a fantastic job, isn't he? Yes, yes, yes. And that Hold is on. an Hold error on. from Dineno. Holding on, 3 0, change sides. Remember that if it's 9 0, we got to 2 clear. So who knows that we're going to finish this 48 46. If it's 99 yeah, all, it has to go <laughs> 2 clear. I'm not one for making predictions. I'm not going to ask you, Mary. I think it's too close to call. But if you were on this coaching staff, if you were a coach, which indeed you are, who would you be more confident coaching now? Which team? Uh, well, it's, that's a hard question. You can say I don't well, know. Because both of them... If you want. Both of them are, you know, uh, a very similar, let's say, players. But the truth is that Dineno and Juan Tello had perhaps... Uh, a way of just holding on a little bit more, and Stupa and Riz will have to risk in order to win points. Like this shot, for example. That was, yeah. brilliant. That was brilliant. That's why they're celebrating. So, if Alex Riz plays in that way, um, they will be a leading team, Stupa and Alex Riz. And, yeah, and Alex Riz. But they will have to perform very good in order to win this game. So, if I were the coach, I would go with Dineno and Pantello. But also because I'm Argentinian. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, you see? For oh. Into his teammate there, and that's the reason for that. Rueful smile, but uh, <laughs> levels it up at four apiece. And we're still back on serve. You can see the funny side of it. Just a slight lessening in the tension there. But uh, Dineno to serve again. To take it to 5-4 to keep it on serve. Opportunity to get another mini break here for Ruiz. Teo with that 160 kilometer hour smash, not able to deploy it there. Oh, Dineno letting it pass through his legs and looking at Super wow, saying, Is wow, that all wow, you've wow, got? Wow, wow. What a tactical position. That lob, I think, almost touched the roof, which is 12 meters. So it might be 10 meters that lob. That Alex Rich just played the bandeja with. Brilliant, the angle wow, there. Man, what a point! I would say this is the best rally we've seen in this match. Oh, Ruiz gets it back somehow from that corner. Teo doesn't Teo want to smash. Patient, he's patient, Teo, in this point. Very patient. Now, though. Stupa digs it out. Longest rally of the game. He goes, no, he got it. you got to be kidding me. What a point. Still not over. No, this is not true. It is. Well, when you're ready, guys, a winner I, would be nice. I, I promise you, we count the amount of shots these four players have played in this 4-4. Four, four. Well, this is the longest point of the Yeah, by far. Game. And I would say the best one. This is very tactical. Dineno a little no, bit out of no, position, no, somehow no, gets no. it back and again. No, this Lost is one. impossible, guys. Ruiz you, I, and Dineno again, Stupa at the net. Teo moving up to the net. When is their patience going to snap? Do you know? Oh, both players, no they're pulled out of position. Again. The court is open. What and Teo doesn't quite get that. What a this point that was. Excellent. Champagne play from both teams there. That what was worth the entrance what price the alone. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic point. And what frankly, is a point that nobody deserved to lose. All four players played a part in that. And it brings the crowd to their feet, and rightly so. That was tremendous. Thousands of people 
standing up here at the stadium, Klavnik Hansen, congratulating the four players because they have done such an amazing point. Both benches, both sets of players behind the different teams applauding that winner there. Mm -hmm. One break up to this pair, the yellow one, or green, whatever you see. That's in. Oh, they're not going to do it again, are they? Into the next one. Right Six four. Bit of daylight. A bit of daylight opening up now for the Rafa Nadal Academy duo, the pairing who are edging closer to victory here. A victory which, if it comes their way, means that all three teams in this group are still vying for a place in the semi finals. There's only so much you can do, is there? And uh, Ruiz looked a little laboured with that smash. The only thing I, I, I'm thinking about is that uh, Lucha Capra and Chingoto might be thinking like, oh my goodness, what a match we have to play tomorrow. Lucha Capra and Chingoto against Stupatsuk and Alex Ruiz. He'll be in bed, fast asleep. Nino can't walk anymore. Is it? Wow. Teo seems almost reluctant hey, to no, the no, the big smash. Because it's like they're playing, they're playing the match uh, against the, the regular partner, you know? Oh! What some shot. He's going to be out. No, he's in! Have a look at that shot! <laughs> well done, Martin Dineno. Great decision. Oh, my word. 6-0. Oh, do you want anything else? 7-0, oh. 6 all change and... Oh, my goodness. The oh. match of the day. The big man far. picks himself up from the floor and he looks tired. And Dineno just punished him there. Dineno's fury unleashed in that shot, that winner. And they uh, haul it back to six each. And there's nothing separating these teams. Look at these rallies at the moment. There's not much wow. to separate them. Not on, much. Uh, either not short even, or exactly. long or medium. They are so well matched. Remember and for that the reason, shorts. we're in a super tie break. And it's six apiece. Remember that the short uh, rallies are less than 10 seconds. Medium rallies are between 10 and 20 seconds. And the long rallies are longer than 20 seconds. 20 plus. And actually... In this game, that's why I told you since the beginning of the match Ned, that all these four players perform very similar, you know, they perform, they, they are, four of them are very good. The only one, sometimes, who struggle a little bit is Alex Ruiz, as you can tell now, this is the only one, but just a little, but that little difference could make... Well, they were 6-4 up yeah. and three errors in a row yeah. from Alex Ruiz. That's why have handed the advantage to team advantage. But no breaks yet, huh? No mini breaks, but they, they came back only. 7-6 to... Oh, no, yeah, it's... No, it's no breaks. What a rally, man. It had to be to the end of the match. These amazing rallies, they're trying to tire Alex Ruiz a little bit more and more and more. So he makes an Amphos error, but no Amphos errors. Now he doesn't want to give any chance. What a shot! And it's 8 6 to Dineno and Juan Tello. The ones that you told me, who would you coach? Well, I told you why, but you never know. 
Now perhaps the Alex Ruiz is not under pressure anymore because they are losing 6-8. Perhaps they go with an amazing winners, you know? Who knows? Well, for all that they targeted Ruiz there, it was actually Stupachuk who made the error that lost them that point. See? See? Eight seven, but one break, mini break. There, Alex Ruiz and Stupa took need. Otherwise, if it goes to the serve, match. they will lose. So Dineno serving to Stupa. Yes, yes, he says. Yes, he goes. Yes, he goes. Oh. Alex Ruiz, take it. Out it goes! No, no, what a time to pull out the big ones! There is Alex Reese! He needed that, didn't he? And they needed that. Eight each. And on we go. Hey, <laughs> I told you. Nino is too clear. So this, it could be the most important point of the day, I would say. So far, before the next one. Scraped over the line there from Luis, who's doing everything right at the moment. Comes to the net. Massive no. smash. No. And another one. What is going and on, And another guys? one. And they are testing no. it out with every shot that goes to that back corner. Always playing to Luis. Making him move. And Ruiz going for such an amazing, powerful smash. Cross court. And Dinero said, why don't you do that all the time, all the way along? 9-8, super excited times for Advantage team that if they win now, they're through to the semi-finals. At least in the Mayors team, yeah? Absolutely, I don't they, win the group. they win the group. Just, team yeah, Advantage exactly. win the group. In May. In, in, in the May group. In their group. Yeah, exactly, their group. Match point. Uh, it's huge. Match point. But, <laughs> Rafa Nadal Academy have the serve. But second, second serve. We're Match closer. Point. We're closer. Responsibility on Alex. Oh, Ruiz. it was out. It was out. He watched it down all the way. Oh, change sides Nine again. Inch. So we've got to nine. It's yeah, a race okay, to so 10, the, the, but that's umpire, not enough. It's now become a race to 11. The umpire said to the coach, you cannot talk now. Oh. During the change and during the super tie break or any tie break, coaches cannot be part of the talking. You can shake hands, for example, like that. Not bad. Vamos it should Rubio, be, eh? neither, but... Vamos Rubio, vamos Rubio, va! I heard uh, Pozzoni saying, vamos Rubio. Rubio means uh, blonde, blondie boy. Vamos, Rubio. Come on, blondie. Well, now then, now then. Cipolaco. Another Decide. match point. Another match point, but this time <laughs> it flips round. And having survived one match point, now they have an opportunity themselves to take the victory on Teo's serve. Great love from Stupa. Averla, Averla, and that is, is, I think, is, I think it was. Is out. it in? I think it was. Well, out. what a call! But, this is match point, but, and it's disputed. Yes. Oh my goodness! Now you tell me if that no. was out. Not Please. even the players know. I promise you. Of, but of course, that Dineno and Teo have to call it, have to challenge it. There is no way. Yes, just please check the the umpire said to the to the other umpire who is watching all the reviews. Well, let's have a look. This is critical. This could decide the oh outcome of the goodness. match. Hey, I would tell you something. That I'm not sure you're going to like it. I hope that it was out. No, well, I don't know. That the match carried out. Out. So out. That means that means they that won they the match. They won. Oh, match. Unbelievable. Alex, can't believe it. Alex, Alex Ruiz. Stupid. Correctly left that ball. He got that absolutely yes, right. Yes, they did. And Stupa and Ruiz. And he 
is Teo Mancineno. Involved, so involved in one of the matches of Penny. They have delivered drama to the end. And that's it. The match is won. The music starts. Both these teams in their group have won one match. Yes. Both live to fight another day in the Hexagon Cup. These two will be in action against Team 11-11. They could still go out of the competition tomorrow. They could meet one another again in the semi-finals, or who knows, even the final. That would be fascinating itself, because if it's anything like that, we would see another treat. That match had absolutely everything. Wow. But the Rafa Nadal Academy come out with us. They win the super tie break, 11 points to nine. <laughs> Too much to talk about, Barry. Too much to talk about. Have you ever seen a match like that? That uh, would be but well I did, I did, I did, I did, I But, uh, you know, in this set of, not in this Hexagon Cup yet. I think that they've got amazing And I think that's uh, as well as you said, you know, if they reach to the semi-finals or finals, and they go to three sets, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen, because that was a super tie-break, and Alex Ruiz and Stupa made it happen. There's Maria Isabel Nadal, Rafa Nadal's uh, sister, with the blonde hair in the middle of that uh, ring of teammates and coaching staff who are celebrating victory for the Rafa Nadal Academy team. I promise you that uh, Alex Reese and Stupa would go to the hotel thinking how we did that match happen and winning. There was everything. Oh, look at that, total points won, 72 yes, that's versus it. 72, that tells the whole story. Percentage points won, 50%. Uh, the statistics tell the entire story. I said to them as well, just please don't go over two hours, please, <laughs> yes? And they, yeah, they did it. Well, we've already had two matches that have just edged over two hours today. Yes. I think the opening match uh, today went two hours and 40 seconds. This one lasted two hours and 38 seconds and ended with a contested call and a review i mean that in itself is just yes. bizarre that, isn't yeah it? it's bizarre imagine if it was in the other way around we would be now still commenting the match yeah yes <laughs> well Thank eventually you know. someone had to win it someone had to learn, lose uh, the margins were ridiculous but we can now hear from the uh, i'm sure massively relieved winning pair from the rafa nadal academy they're talking to andrea Menudo disfrute de partido para cerrar la jornada, chicos, pero vosotros habéis tenido que sufrir y mucho con bolas de, de set, de partido, de un lado, del otro. ¿Cómo lo habéis vivido? ¿Con tu compañero en contra? Eh, dificilísimo, muy difícil, la verdad, eh, jugar contra tu compañero, con un ex compañero. Tenemos una relación ahí muy linda, compartimos eh, muchas alegrías y, no, y, a, y algunas no tan buenas. Eh, entonces se complica, viste, pero, pero nada, hoy intentamos disfrutar, nos reímos los cuatro, hemos, esto, esta competencia por equipo está buena, eh, la gente ve algo diferente, distinto. Eh, es una pena que haya terminado así el partido, pero bueno, ¿qué vamos a hacer? Nosotros pedimos todas las bolas, creo que la última fue la única que se nos dio, pero, pero bueno, eh, nada, disfrutar, a seguir y muchísimas gracias a toda la gente. Eh, lamentamos el hecho que, que pasó recién, eh, quedamos un poco ahí como choqueados. Esperemos que no vuelva, que no vuelva a pasar y que, que, que se controle un poco más. Pero por mi parte, felicitar al capitán que se bancó el partido y a todo el equipo de Rafa Nadal Academy, que son unos fenómenos y estamos encantados. Bueno, Alex, y otra victoria para el equipo, está a tope. Sí, la verdad que la Rafa Nadal está impresionante, ¿no? Yo creo que al final... Lo que transmitimos tanto en el banquillo como en, como en el juego es eso, ¿no? Valores de equipo, ¿no? De, de sacrificio, de esfuerzo, de compañerismo. Yo creo que eso al final es muy importante para hacer unión, ¿no? Yo creo que se está viendo en todos nosotros. Y bueno, dame un segundito para agradecer al público, que es una maravilla estar aquí en el Madrid Arena con toda esta pedazo de gente. A pesar de, de lo que ha pasado, ha sido el buen rollo, así que yo creo que eso es muy importante, que el, el pasado se quede atrás. Y felicitar por Laquito, que la verdad, hacía mucho tiempo que no estaba con él en la pista, lo he sufrido mucho <ríe> como rival, pero la verdad que es una gozada y bueno, enfrente teníamos a dos amigos, como ha dicho el polaco, eh, compañeros, el gatito, 
siento mucho por la bola, la última bola, pero bueno, por fin una para mí, que siempre, siempre la fallo yo, así que bueno, muy contento con esta victoria, creo que ha sido un gran espectáculo a pesar de, de, bueno, de la derrota de, de Gato y Martín y nuestra victoria, pero creo que al final le, quien ha ganado ha sido el público, ¿no? el, el espectáculo y eso es lo importante. Claro que sí, nos quedamos con el espectáculo increíble que hemos vivido wow. aquí con el público, con los jugadores en esta segunda jornada en la Hexagon Cup. Mauri, it is your job to summarize that in a few seconds. What well, was that, said? That was a little bit hard to, <laughs> to describe all what, the, what they have just said, but you know, mainly uh, Alex Ries was, you know, was uh, very thanks to Rafa Nadal Academy and all team and the Hexagon Cup organization for this setup. And also that he was like sorry to the opponents after the challenge in the last point and winning uh, with the last point uh, in that way. But, uh, and then uh, the Polaco, Mr. Stupatu, uh, said that it was very hard to play against uh, Dineno and uh, his uh, current regular partner during this match. But they're happy to win. Mati Dineno coming over and offering his congratulations. Hard for you to summarize, hard for any of us to summarize, uh, unless we do it visually. Let's look back at what we just witnessed. All of which, frankly, ridiculous drama leaves this group, Group B in the men's uh, category, really interestingly poised. Dineno and Juanteo, the only team pairing to have played twice, but they've only won one match. Uh, Ruiz and Stupa have played 1-1-1, one, 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 and uh, they will face off against Chingoto and Capra tomorrow. But if they lose that, and if Chingoto and Capra win, then it all goes to count back and it will be very tight to see which of those three teams is eliminated from action in the semi-final. Let's have a look at the fixtures that we're going to be treated to again tomorrow. First of all, Group B in the women's, it's RL9 against Team Bello, with everything at stake still in that group. Group B in the men's, Rafa Nadal Academy against 11-11, that's the match we were just talking about again, with so much at stake. Group A women's, it's Hexagon, who is still in the mix, against Rafa Nadal Academy. Uh, for the right to progress in that group. And finally, Group A in the men's, Team Bella against Hexagon Team, 
and also with everything to play for. All those groups, all those matches, still with everything at stake. We don't know the semi-final lineups for the weekend yet. By this time tomorrow, we will know. But uh, quite how tomorrow's action is going to live up to the ridiculous antics that we've seen here. The good, the bad, the ugly, but mostly the brilliance at the Hexagon Cup on day two.